Alrighty. About time to get going. Music. Perfect. Jesus Christ, Walrus. Jesus, man. Thank you for that 30 gifted subs. God damn. That is a lot. Much appreciated. Good start to the stream, and I haven't even started ranting about the lore yet, so. God damn, dude. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Whew. Well, that's well past a sub goal now. I should probably set another one. I haven't done that. Much appreciated, man. On that lovely note, what is up, everyone? I hope you all are having a great weekend. You've had a good week, and you all have nice, fun Christmas planned for the holidays, which are upcoming here. Should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. I should stream next weekend, by the way. I may not. Depends. I'm going on a bit of a holiday, actually. Going, uh, going to just the East Coast. Gonna see some historical stuff of my aunt. Really looking forward to that. But I should be able to stream next weekend. We'll see. Unless I come back exhausted. Gonna see some Civil War battle sites. Gonna see some early colonial history stuff. So... Should be, should be a lot of fun. I hope you guys have fun plans, even if that's just hang out with a family or playing Paradox games on Christmas. I've done that quite a few times. I think, I'm sure a lot of you have as well. So, yeah, thank you all. Again, much appreciated, man. Boy, do we have a game for you today and some lore. I will, I will try to keep the lore dump below 30 minutes today. But to start off with, to make this a little bit easier going forward, um, one thing I've been wanting to do for a while for the Grand Campaigns, given how long they are, and how much happens and how um, I've been starting to do obviously more things for you guys to get involved. I know it's a lot of fun. I'd, I'd seen some more of that on other channels, YouTube channels and Twitch, and I want to do more of it. And y'all have really been doing a lot for lore. I appreciate everyone who put in a custom leader, which we have in the game. I did those edits and things like that. So given all that, we have made a wiki. I kind of put out a to see if people were interested in helping me do it. Um, doing it by myself would be a little rough, but a lot of folks we're willing to do it. Um, there's a link right now. It's pinned. If you're watching this in the VOD in the future, it's going to be in the description. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a, a place to catalog all the information, all the lore, all the roleplay. Because even I, I've been playing this, you know, I've been here for every minute of the grand campaign, obviously. I, I forget a bunch of lore stuff, which can be important for obviously roleplaying and for understanding what's going on and, and things like that. So the site just covers basically all the interesting characters, civilizations, old kings and stuff like that. Shout out to Trucker Neo in particular. You've done so much on that. I appreciate that, man. So thank you for everyone who's been helping on the wiki. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. It'll make Stellaris way better. And obviously we'll be uh, doing that for all the next grand campaign, which is the Britain start, by the way, just to be very clear on that. I was also looking at the form I put out a while back, which I didn't advertise that much, uh, for custom, basically, families in the next Grand Campaign start. Now, there's 22 already. I, I went in there expecting, like, one or two, and there were 22, so all of them were really good, too. Anyway, back on topic. For Stellaris today, let's kind of go over where we are at, how we got to where we are, and where we're going. So, we are 34 years into the game right now. It's the United Nations of Earth. We currently have uh, President Athena Montalupo, who ran several times before finally winning, uh, winning after Yusuf Bilal, obviously went down, I think, four years into his presidency due to just extreme corruption. Uh, he got the trait for corrupt, and our current governor of Earth at the time, Barbara Campbell, had the, uh, what was it, embezzler trait, I think, or something like that. So roleplay-wise, essentially there was a giant a corruption scheme within the UNE. The witness high as the president, resulting in them being arrested, uh, going before the Supreme Court of the UNE, and being indicted for 30 year prison sentences. So, both Yusuf Bilal, Barbara Campbell, and I'm sure another bunch of other unnamed aides and people involved in the corporate sector and things like that are currently in UNE prisons back on Earth due to this. So, we've come off of that. That was, I think, around four or five years ago, resulting in a pretty tumultuous time for humanity as they've only just gone into the galactic era. But we've done a lot in 34 years. We now have three worlds. We have, of course, Earth, the homeland of our species. We have Terra Nova, our first colony, which despite undertaking a very tragic attack by those crystalline creatures, which killed over 400,000 people on Terra Nova of the original colonists, has begun to grow back again and is now in the millions. It, it's a very large populated world at this point. 
we've got, you know, tens of billions of people back on Earth. And there are opportunities there. But a lot of people would be looking for, for other places to go. One of the big things roleplay-wise is obviously Terra Nova and our other colony worlds would be doing similar things kind of to how the US dealt with all that land that was really good for farming, for materials, in general when it went west, right, in the early days of America. A lot of colon uh, people automatically wanted to go out and settle in the west, in the prairie lands, on the western coast, in all that region, but the government wanted more to do so, uh, given, again, it was a great place to get tax revenue, and it would reinforce the ownership of those borders, right? More people and places means other countries, or in this case, other species. I would have a harder time trying to claim those lands. And the way they oftentimes did that was basically giving parcel packages. So they'd give an allotment of free acreage to anyone who would go west and would colonize and would, would build a family and things like that. We'd be doing similar things for humanity right now. Terra Nova, for example, in the roleplay right now, has a deal, which is that if you are a married couple, you are given an allotment of 100 acres free of charge by the UNE, which is yours, full property rights, full mineral rights, all you need to do is be married. So, population growth on new worlds and an opportunity for anyone seeking to go out there and get a better life. Obviously, our third world, which is in the process of being colonized by the brave 200,000 men and women who are currently colonizing it, of New Vegas, is going to be our third world and would have a similar situation. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this colony, role wise, uh, lore wise, is going to be established primarily by the remnants of a name many of you may find familiar, which is the Sovereign Archduchy of America, which of course is the America of this timeline, one who was one of the victors in the Third World War, who walked out of that with a tyrannical authoritarian monarchy under the Fecalmont Emperors. Again, America in this timeline and in this grand campaign was originally a French colony. The French got the entire 13 colonies, the East Coast, and the Americans got their independence in the 18th century when France was kind of falling from power after several wars with Bavaria and with the Castellans, which they lost. And given that, there was a revolution. But instead of a republic being established in America, it was also a monarchy under the Fikomon emperors, which it remains all the way to this day. So at present, the Fikomons are still emperors of America. It's just they have done reforms very slowly, and they have joined the UNE with a lot of concessions. Notably, UNE City, which is the capital of the United Nations of Earth in this timeline, where most of administrative business is done, is next to the American capital. The American capital in this timeline is Augustus, uh, Augusta, Maine, and UNE City is right next to it. So one of the big concessions for the unification of Earth and for the founding of a, of a centralized UNE was that the Americans would get the capital. Kind of you know, a bit of a parallel there to, to how DC became the American capital. Point being, America is very wealthy, they're very influential, and the Fikamon emperors, much like the Torres family, more so even, are more powerful in their own country and kind of have around the equivalent wealth. So, the first governor of New Vegas, given a large amount of the funding and the expedited process for the founding of this colony, has resulted in our first governor being Fritz von of Fritz Wolf Fikamon, who is, of course, the current heir to the emperor of the Sovereign Archduchy and will be the governor of New Vegas. Basically, the Sovereign Archduchy gave funding, gave extra colonists, and in exchange for that are getting preferred mining rights on New Vegas, and they get to pick the governor. He also has a very notable aide with a name you also might find familiar. They have wiki pages if you want to read about them. People made backstories for them, they're really in detail. Uh, Carl Billig. Does anyone, does anyone remember that name, Billig? Does that, does that ring a bell for anyone? anyone remembers that. Point being, uh, Carl Billig is currently his aide. He, they were both on the colony ship going to New Vegas, and they're going to be establishing that colony for us. He's another up and coming. If you don't remember, that's the Hessian royal family. That should ring a bell. Think of it as sub -orient. Much appreciated. Yes, that is the Hessian royal family, who uh, remained a slave state until, I think, 1920 in this timeline. They're, they're better now, but he's very conservative. So anyway, um, we've got a couple of our new leaders as well, all with interesting backstories. If you'd like to read them, they're on the wiki. Notably, uh, Jean Silva, who is up and coming commander. We've got Evelyn Celine D. Bonaparte. That's a name you'll know. Um, we've got a couple new scientists as well. We've got Laszlo Takasis. I'm going to butcher that, man. That's Hungarian. Uh, Robert Renford Jr. Robert Renford Sr. has been retired due to the fact that I don't have enough leader slots. We've got, let's see, a couple others. Teresa Torres. 
That's, that's the other big one I need to go over before we really get going here. So she is the daughter of Solomon Taurus. Solomon Taurus III, he is still alive. He is the governor of Terra Nova. He is the ex-president who kind of lost power, lost the election due to his failure to stop the crystalline catastrophe, aka that terror attack by those crystal aliens that killed hundreds of thousands of people on Terra Nova. And he's the governor there, kind of in exile, but also trying to rebuild and build up the colony in his own mind to, to kind of try and uh, change his mistakes. I mean, he couldn't have stopped it, but a character like him, I think, would feel a lot of regret. So that's where he is. Anyway, Teresa Torres is his daughter. She is an up and coming scientist. She is going to be, I haven't done that yet, I don't think, appointed to the NMS Archimedes, I already have, which is Athena Montelupo's old ship. She's a, uh, she's beginning a lot of opportunities at a young age due to her uh, family. So we have our next Torres character kind of in the timeline. I wanna keep the Torres family going obviously in this. So basically at any point, there will be at least one Taurus character in Stellaris unless something radical happens, right? Uh, just to keep the theme going, given they are the family we have been following for 1,100 and something years at this point. So that's about it. I think we've hit all the major points. We have met no aliens so far. We have spent, uh, met two pre-sentient species. We have the, uh, the tree hive mind on TA-106, and then we've got the lithoids on WEC, which are the yes none, I believe. So that's where we're at. We also are currently terraforming WEC 3, Boreal Planet. We are making into a continent world. When that is done, we are colonizing it. We have found a never colonizable world on Femorn 3, which we will be colonizing as soon as we can with some very interesting features. And then we have another planet we could potentially terraform on QW711, bringing us to our last planet, which you already have known if you watched the first session and our first poll of the day. You gotta, I think I'm in the right place. I may not be, hold on. I know where it is. There it is. Which I didn't save properly. It has a name already. Hades. So first poll of the day. I'm gonna go ahead and read this lore bit too. I sometimes feel bad about lore dumping at the start of these sessions, but I think it's important to provide context and it gets me also in the right space to kind of play this game, right? So we will get to the action soon, I promise. I do want to read this though, because it's pretty interesting. This was another custom X story by Andromeda. If you remember the dying Empire of the Dying Sun, you'll remember that name. Very good. Lore writer. Do blurb on this. He wrote out a whole thing. Link as well if you'd like to read the whole portion of it. How many members do you think House Taurus has right now? Extended family, hundreds. Like main ones who would be like, you know, Taurus and like be really involved with family matters. I'd say around two dozen, something like that. Okay. All right, here we go. In 2230, this is Marcus Costa. He's one of our commanders and was the, and I think is currently the commander of the garrison of Terra Nova. I'm not going to go into that history, though. Mark is driven by his vision to create a bastion of strength and resilience for the United Nations Space Command. He proposed a daring and audacious plan. He advocated for the establishment of a new colony, Esner Staldra II, an unforgiving world codenamed Hades, the hell world for its challenging and harsh conditions. Unlike conventional colonies focused on civilian habitation, Marcus envisioned Hazy, excuse me, Hades as a military stronghold. A sanctuary where the elite forces of the UNSC could thrive, train, and forge an unbreakable bond amidst the rigors of a hostile environment. It was to be a world solely inhabited by military personnel dedicated to honing their skills, tactics, and camaraderie. Now in 2234, at the age of 43, Marcus awaits the outcome of his proposal. So, the proposal essentially by one of the leading commanders of the military and of the United Nations Space Command um, is from Marcus Costa. And he is proposing that we basically colonize Hades. Um, which is known for two things in particular. One, at night, a, a giant purple fog comes out of the ground, which seems to move in very weird manners. Kind of sketchy, but not the worst. The much more dangerous part of this planet is, uh, I'll read it out to you, a world overrun by packs of giant arachnids. It seems like madness to even think of setting foot on this world. So there's these giant 20-foot spiders everywhere. Just think of any sci-fi horror and you got about what they are. Assume for a moment the world very much like your own, except for the fact that the spiders can grow to 12 feet in length, breed prodigiously, and are experts at hiding and often attacking in swarms. So think like Harry Potter, you know, in the in the Forbidden Forest. That's what we got going on on this planet, but they're everywhere. Oh, 
First poll of the day. This proposal has gone to United Nations Space Command. They would have obviously seen the merits of it and would understand the purpose and probably mostly agree with it for the most part. But as we all know, colonizing new planets goes under the purview of United uh, Nations Congress. So you all will get to vote on it for the first poll of the day. Everyone watching, you are now members of the UNE Parliament and you are voting on whether or not we will colonize Hades as a military world to train the military forces of the future. three options make sure you read all three of those before you decide i'll make that a longer five minute poll too so no rush on it if you need to consult the consult anything you like the elder gods yourself anything like that the second poll of the day we're going to do in a little bit is going to be also pretty fun uh something i found while i was doing say but it's i didn't realize we even had and it's pretty big pretty big deal so we'll do that next scientists would love it absolutely there's uh, also a lot of tunnels and caves on the planet which the spiders hide in yes yeah we'd have to clear the tunnels or, since it's a military colony designed to train the soldiers of the future, we probably wouldn't. We'd probably do some pest control to get their numbers down in certain areas that the military would be having bases in. Uh, and then we'd probably keep most of them on the planet because, again, we'd be using it to train our soldiers. It, it literally, by the way, gives a bonus, just to clarify on that too before we move on. Uh, let me go ahead and, and show you because it is pretty interesting. Really nice feature. Yeah, so as you can see, giant arachnids, it gives army starting experience. So any armies and soldiers we train on Hades, we'll start with experience, which makes sense. They've been trained fighting giant spiders. So, you know, better than training dummies. To be fair, it allows a lot of infamy by this point. I would imagine so. They will carefully consider the pros and cons of the proposal. Giant spiders. I mean, you know, they, maybe, maybe someone's into that. You never know. Okay, we have some idle leaders. I'm going to go ahead and get started with actually playing the game now. I'm sure I'll do some more lore dumping as we go, but for now, well, let's get to working. We've got a lot of new officials, which we can't really use until uh, we get those new planets, so we're kind of waiting on that. For scientists, we have an extra couple now. So for the Drake, we will appoint... Uh, I'm just going to call him Laszlo. I can say that. And we are going to need, I think, two more... Ships. How many scientists do we have unassigned? We have one ship coming back. By the way, Joaquin Martinez, I, I did get rid of him due to the fact that we needed leader slots for the custom characters. We're we'll wise for going that Joaquin Martinez basically died on the trip back. So uh, they jumped into a system of a hostile fleet. They made an emergency warp jump. That ship is on its way back. But in the lore, he basically, he died. So the crew will get back, but he won't. Bring up some slots. We have uh, one... Only one more, so we're fine. We just have to wait till the Grisham comes back and we can appoint our third and final scientist. The home fleet, we have Evelyn Celine Bonaparte. And then for our worlds as commanders, let's appoint them. Mayor Link is Earth's commander. For Terra Nova, it should be. I didn't name him correctly, that's the problem. Costas. And then we'll put one of them as a commander on uh, New Vegas when we get that colonized as well. Okay, I think we're just about good. Let's go ahead and launch our council agenda and choose our new head of research. We have um, Evolving Society, which will give extra monthly unity, something we really need with all these leaders. For our next agenda, let's see if there's anything we actually want to take here. Hmm. We'll do infinite opportunities, I think. For our new head of research, I'm going to go with Ismail Robani. He is our most experienced scientist at this point, actually. Hedi Yami would probably be better for it. He's xenophile, which fits the government currently more with Montelupo, and she is a champion of the people actually giving bonuses. So we'll go with Hedi Yami. That does make the most sense here. Looks good. All right, let's get started. Only 15 minutes of ranting about the Lord today. That's not bad. Estimate control, you mean flamethrowers? That'd probably be the smart way to get rid of those fucking arachnids. 
At the end of the day, if our forces can fight giant spiders, it will prepare them for what may be out there. True. And we don't know what is out there at this point. We have met no other alien civilizations yet, at least major interplanetary ones. There's a significant scar on the surface of this world in a pattern that cannot be natural. From orbit, the massive rifts look almost like writing. We will send Rubani to investigate that after he was uh, told he did not get his desired position as head of research. Something I'm sure he's very unhappy about, but that's kind of how it goes. We're going to go ahead and take the Fumorn system as well so we can build a colony on Fumorn after we figure out what is going on with the cities that our scanners have spotted on the planet. I need to actually bring a scientist back for that, but we don't have a lot of out here in the expanse and we want to move a little bit quickly. So we'll wait on that. Someone using a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago was able to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Arisa 4. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Bro just did like his whole life story in graffiti on a planet. I mean, at least it's not like a dick, so that's it's a little bit more interesting. Yes, okay, we are going to colonize Hades and we're not going to terraform it first. A unique situation has occurred on WEC 3, that is the planet we are currently terraforming. Just as the terraforming efforts are winding down, our terraforming scientists have discovered that it is possible to tidily lock the planet. This occurring naturally can be quite detrimental to a colony, however, doing it during the terraforming process could allow us to exploit the endless solar hours the dayside will receive and generate an obscene amount of energy. We could still have to make a concentrated effort to set up the rest of our industry and house on the twilight and night side. Intentionally tightly locked reduces our overall district amount, reduces our agricultural districts, changes it to a dry, tightly locked world. It will give us more generator districts, reduction of amenities, and a 20% energy output bonus. That's not really worth it, is it? But you can unlock the planet's full potential. We'll do it. Nothing tried, nothing gained. And with that, what three, ladies and gentlemen, 25 size. It has metallic rings surrounding it, like the rings of Saturn, full of metals, so very useful. It has clear skies, allowing us to see the whole galaxy and use our telescopes very easily, generating a ridiculous amount of physics research. Uh, and hyper complex bio. Whoa, it has even more features than we thought, Jesus. Extremely complex fauna and flora have evolved upon the world. Their surface is teeming with all sorts of life forms waiting to be studied. And biology offers extensive research opportunities. World terraforming. Twilight world. Start reduction in amenities, but more districts. And intentionally tightly locked. Wow. That's that's a pretty cool world. Holy crap. Uh, which we apparently cannot habitate. Did we just fuck ourselves by taking that decision? I think we did. We're gonna have to terraform it again. I stand by that decision. So lore-wise, we're gonna basically go with the fact that the, the benefits of it seemed extreme, and they were. Like, it does allow us to get a lot more energy off of the planet. But given we've never terraformed before, the models did not realize that tightly locking this world would harm its atmosphere enough that it essentially would not have the intended effect, and it would go back to not having uh, a really habitable surface for us. So as a result, we fucked ourselves incredibly hard. The science seemed good. The decision-making seemed good, but in the end, we basically put ourselves back 10 years on terraforming WEC 3. And we're going to need to raise more energy in order to do this again. Also, we do have one other planet we can terraform, which is QW711. I'll let you guys decide that on a poll, but before I do, we have to go to our next poll. Find where it is. The Greystone Mountain. 
Since the birth of the universe, the Greystone Mountain has been committed to fighting against Entropy. Uh, Entropius, which is Entropy. In order to discover the world covered by the Entropy Mist, the Greystone Mountain Sensor Matrix was designed. This kind of mighty sensor matrix can accurately capture the dark energy signals overflowing in the galaxy, or it is located in a cosmic storm or a system that has been sealed for various reasons. With this relic, you can use the advanced locator to locate a target in any corner of the universe, even if it is in a system in the unknown worlds behind darkness. In addition, after activating the relic, your sensors can detect all hidden systems as long as they are in your system range. So it lets us see any systems that we can't see right now and could potentially lead us to systems inhabited by godlike beings and entropy, which is an evil force that has destroyed galaxies in the past and of which this godlike alien species was unable to stop. Just to really underline that, they, they, they pretty much failed to stop entropy. We're playing with forces tens of thousands of years beyond our current technology and level. But we did recover a sensor matrix. So the question would be, we turn it on. Would our scientists want to turn it on? Would they advise Athena Montalupo to turn this on? This is a very scientific government. It's all about reason, rationality, exploration, discovery, and curiosity. But we know what this is. These are semi-good elder gods fighting definitely evil, pure entropy, darkness beings that destroy galaxies for fun. Do we turn it on? Maybe we'll find some incredibly amazing systems, ruins of ancient species of technology that could put us into another age, or we awaken something that we shouldn't. Pool number two. Five minute pull. Give it to someone else. I don't know. If they if they get those beings out of there, I don't think any corner of the galaxy will be safe if we get screwed here. Alright, great. We got gas extraction. That's fantastic. What else do we want to grab here? Scientific government, we prioritize scientific research. The biggest here would be credit revitalization, giving Athena Montalupo's government is very humanitarian and scientific, and that will obviously give better better medical to everyone. Uh, in the UNE systems. So we'll go with Cyto Revitalization Centers. Put an outpost there. Put an outpost there when we can. So there we still have a lot of mutiny we had a lot build up when we were stuck a while back like we are starting to catch up now pretty quickly but there's enough left over let's go research we can't we found that giant pyramid remember but we actually need a skill level five scientist to even do it so we're still waiting on that which uh makes me even more interested to figure out what is going on there let's keep excavating the planet reminder this is that planet we found a system with a spaceship and a dead crew from like a thousand years ago and we discovered through the research that the original planet had been in a system but got thrown out of it and made into a rogue planet which is a planet out in the depths and darkness of space not orbiting a major solar body like a sun um and we, we managed to track down their planet we found the ruins of their civilization but we also discovered that beneath the ice layer over the planet given it's very cold out in the darkness of space there is water and so we're drilling down to find out what is down there just a reminder on that one Teresa Torres Simone's dear daughter, where shall we send her? Send her north. North. Beautiful. Looking good. We have got an upgrade for Winfried Knight, one of our more experienced scientists. We'll give her eye for talent. Lives will suggest to lock the dangerous artifact away. A lot of scientists would be. Well, unremarkable on the surface, the 4984 asteroid has a hollow core lined with industrially viable uh, crystals, like gigantic geodes hung in the stars. With special instructions by Science Officer Saldana, any future mining platform would be able to harvest these crystals. Hell yeah. Very valuable resource. We have a lot of them also on Terra Nova from those crystals as well. Double it and give it to the next person. 
Would it seem to use highly dangerous we uh, weapons cautiously? Never. Not a once. We got moats as well. Beautiful. Very good. We'll go for research complexes. That'd be top priority for Athena Montalupo. We, do, we did find that wormhole tool, which I definitely want to explore when we get the tech, but it isn't a system of a bunch of those mining drones, which, by the way, were the ones that killed Joaquin Mar Martinez as well, our ex head of research and a man who ran three times for president and never pulled over 10%. What you're telling me is that we find the aliens' waifus right now. Wouldn't that be nice? Space cat girls. One can hope. All right, Athena can get some upgrades. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We're giving her, what was it? I think research, a researcher. Go for archeology span skill increase. We'll go for have anomaly research speed increase. We'll go for Great research alternatives. if I do we have two extra research alternatives oh baby we are we are in a technocracy government now god damn this girl she's technically president Athena's technically president but I think she's basically micromanaging the research department at this point and giving all governmental funds to it Holy crap. All right, we'll take that. That's ridiculous. Which brings me to another thing we can do as well, which I realized we weren't doing last time. We have our edicts, one of which we definitely want to go for here because we have some points for it, I believe. Yes, we do. We have four points. Pause here so I can do this properly. One of the mechanics we have, I don't know if it's a mod or just uh, the Paragon CLC is we can do special, obviously, ruler campaigns. We obviously are going to do a scientific one given Athena is in charge. Is there a general science one, or are we going to have to specialize? Turn it, turn it on. I think that was on. That was what I meant to say. Yeah, it was. Okay, we're going to turn it on. Scientific technocracy does not give a fuck. So we'll have to choose physics or society then. We can't do engineering. What did she specialize her research in? I don't want to rush this because this is important. More physics than society. We will count for our text. We, we do physics. We'll do physics then. So what this does is we spend uh, some of our execution points to run this campaign for five years, giving us a huge boost uh, to our research output for physics by 20%. So we'll go for that. What's up, Dolphin? Not too much. Just a lot of Lord dumping. Did we send the military colony? We did not. Let's get that set up right now. So Marcus Costa's proposal to form a uh, military base on Hades, which people are going to fucking hate because it's not really habitable with all the Arachnids, is going to be set. So we'll get that going right now. Around 100,000 military personnel. All of the military or auxiliary military will be sent to Hades to establish a military colony on the planet to train the future of the UN, uh, UNE Marines and UNE Army. I'm sure the Navy might do drills in the system, but it will be primarily for our land forces going forward. She's playing way for real life. Oh, man. All right, yeah, we are a very technocratic government right now, though. I'm just kind of blown away by, by how intense that is at the moment, actually. 
I mean, we're going to be in good shape here if we keep this up. One of the asteroid's KE-595 system is emitting a stream of fine particle dust. It seems to be leaking minerals. There really must be a structure nearby. That's a lot of unity. We're going to get off that. Mineral extraction operation, I think, again, as well. Merrillink has an upgrade. We'll give him Adaptionist. Is that the only one? It was. Let's keep her going. We have good jobs. We have plenty of housing, giving a lot of people have gone to Terra Nova at this point. Housing prices back on Earth would be uh, affordable, something that our current, uh, everyone currently watching, including me, does not know anything about, but I guess it's happening here. You still have 30 skill points to use, by the way, on her. Firefox, do you, I, I couldn't figure this out last time. Do you know how to open the foci uh, menu for a leader? Because I was struggling to do that last session. When we get the prompt to open it, I know how, but I think it's just clicking one of these buttons, actually. Let's, let's try this. Oh. There's got to be a way to open it without doing that menu. All season edicts. Ruler foci menu. Thank you so much. I should have realized that's where it was. But yeah, we do have a lot of skill points. So we could go into more skills to obviously specialize into more things for research. Given she's a researcher. Execution points, we could start another a ruler campaign, which I don't think would be a big priority. We could do that for society, but we'll leave it at one for now. Charisma just makes her generate more points, uh, period, for execution points, which we put into things, like campaigns. And the rulers governing abilities and the frequency of ruler campaigns this can appear and how many categories they can hold. Okay. Got Inspire, getting more idea points. And we just got straight up idea points as well. Let's go for inspiration. Put a bunch more into that. Get her up to 80 on that. And then for Charisma, we're going to put everything else into that. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Firefox. Much appreciated. Alrighty. We have a very competent president right now. She'd, I think, be pretty popular. I mean, there'd be still a lot of distrust in the UNE period for the presidency and the UNE parliament after the uh, the Bilal affair. Given the corruption that was just so widespread in the UNE. So this era is... Obviously, a more technocratic government. It's more about science, about expansion of our knowledge, about researching all these many interesting alien uh, structures we found in our own systems and exploration in general. But it would also be about kind of re restoring confidence in the government in the UNA period. And it looks to me from what we're seeing, the way that Athena Montelupo is really doing that is basically just trying to be more transparent with what she's doing. Obviously, I think a lot of this is something that's very easy to kind of have out in the open and just focus on some of the most important things for humanity. More colony worlds to allow more opportunities for corporations, for individuals, or just expanding out into the cosmos. Um, and then also obviously just expanding scientific research at a massive level. I mean, new discoveries, especially when they're attributed so quickly to a, a leader like this, which would be happening. She's a public figure. Her daughter is a scientist and uh, entertainer, which we're gonna go with, she has a hollow net channel. So it's, it's a pretty widely observed scientific campaign from our president, from our government, showing kind of a refocus away from economics, which probably would have a lot of mistrust towards science, which is much more clear cut, right? I mean, when, when discoveries happen, they go out, they're clearly observable, they're interesting, and humanity benefits as a whole, the individual, the corporation, the leaders, right? So I, I think this would allow some degree of trust to be restored slowly to the UNE. There'd be a lot still to do, but I think it would be helping with that to a degree. Anyway, the science expedition team led by Ismail Rabbani on the Asimov has discovered something remarkable. A massive planet-wide bunker system is all that is left from an ancient precursor civilization. Our scientists surmise that they are the remnants of a galaxy-spanning conflict. Suffice to say its inhabitants are not the victors. Oh, that's interesting. Did we get a, we didn't get a research thing off of that or a, an excavation site. I wonder if that has to do with a Greystone Mountain or it's another galactic spanning conflict. Oh, wow. So just a reminder, folks, the uh, the hive mind trees that we met on TA-106 had a, a, a civil war. They are a hive mind. They're all connected. They're trees, probably part of like one big ecosystem. So they have a bit of hive mind going, but they're the type 
it has like autonomous versions, right? So there, there's individual individualism within each of the uh, the people, the Hothesians, despite being part of a hive mind. They started a world war around five years ago. So the hive mind was in a world war for ideology. It was the fascist, the syndicalist, and the democratic, basically, ideological factions within this hive mind, which started a civil war, which has been ongoing. We chose to stay out of it, though we have made direct contact with the Hothesians. So this is the end. News reached us from our observation post at TA-1062 that the Hothesian civilization's global war ended today. The planet lies in ruins as the syndicalist parties of the conflict ceremonial declared the war to be finally over. Luckily, no weapons of mass destruction were used in this conflict, and the Hothesians have begun to rebuild their infrastructure, even though protests against the new regime are becoming louder. The workers win yet again. We're not quite that egalitarian. Interesting. Yeah, very familiar. Very, There are a lot of parallels to the own world war that our civilizations had in the Grand Campaign at the end of Hoi 4, so... Food shortages! Fuck, okay, hold on. We'll sell off a bunch of minerals, and we're going to buy a bunch more food. We need to get more food jobs, though. That's a big priority. We'll do that probably. We'll expand them on Terra Nova for our next district. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and build another agricultural district on Terra Nova to deal with that. We, we have a few more unemployed people, but getting some more agricultural jobs available to deal with that offset would be a big deal, because we need to eat. The NMS Hawking has discovered an unusual small gas giant. It appears to be the violent solar winds from the main star of HE552 are the cause of the strange tiny giant. These powerful solar winds have, over the course of millions of years, stripped most of the outer and middle layer of the gas giant's gaseous atmosphere. That's interesting. It tend to be gigantic. I remember seeing something semi-recently talking about like what percent of uh, the raw mass of our solar system in real life was basically in the different planets, not counting the sun. I want to say it was like over 80% or something was in the Jovian planets, like uh, Jupiter primarily and Saturn to a lesser degree. Because like they're gaseous, obviously, but that's still mass and they're just so massive. It's just a ridiculous amount. I just I had dramatically misunderstood like the, the comparisons of just pure size and mass of the planets in the solar system. Pictures, I think, always tend to not show you just dramatically how different they are, right? Which I found really interesting. I'm sure I had the, the numbers wrong, but something like that. An initiative to eradicate all hostile entities. Mining drones, crystalline monsters, inside and bordering the UNE territories to protect civilians and open pathways previously closed to the UNE. Can uh, one of the mods make a pull for that? I don't know if there's mods here. Yes, there are. Can one of y'all open up a pull for that? I would much appreciate it. I used to name a military name point thing. You can name a ship the Crystal Cracker. Sounds good. We'll go with one of the destroyers, I think, then. Crystal Cracker. There you are. Make use of all these systems. We are beginning to take on risk very quickly. I'd imagine at this point there were a lot of really big, obviously powerful, wealthy, um, now interplanetary corporations on Earth, which are allowing us to do a lot of this very quickly. Good shortage. We're reducing the problem. Investing in farmers for a little while would not be a bad idea. And hopefully those new uh, agricultural jobs with the acreage promises on Nova will allow us to deal with some of those problems. Research complex is wonderful. We can upgrade all of our research stations. Global energy management. Long-range mineral scanners for mining station outpost bonus. We absolutely will take that. That's huge for the economy. Let's ponder the Eldridge paperweight. And I am going to turn that on in just a moment, too. For Earth, we have another building, but I'll wait on that because we don't really need to do anything with it. Alrighty. Time for the fun one, though. So, after much discussion with the Athena Montelupo government internally, primarily within the Science Directorate. Uh, Athena Montelupo spent, I'm sure, days discussing the artifact recovered from, what was the system's name? From Sokios. With Kayane Diami, 
Obviously, we have Keith Pissett Na, our Minister of Defense, other members of the government, and a lot of scientists, both who were there to research the Greystone Mountain entity structure within the planet and the artifact we have recovered. And at the end of things, although there were a lot of arguments for and against turning this thing on, which we still need a bit of unity for, actually, um, it was decided that the benefits outweighed the cost. Obviously, the dangers here are tremendous, which is that we could unleash these entities, allow the entities to find us. But we know that it was made by the Greystone Mountain Civilization, which despite obviously a very flippant attitude towards non-advanced species, did clearly attempt to protect them overall. So it's assumed that this artifact, given that, would be less dangerous. It's gonna be dangerous regardless, but if it was made by these elder godlike beings with somewhat benevolent intent, overall, it's probably going to be more safe. And the opportunities scientifically and in terms of exploration and understanding of the galaxy are too much to pass by. There is clear evidence of a massive space battle that took place in close orbit of KE-595 at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one of the planet is pockmarked with craters from stray weapon blasts. Scans by the Asimov have picked up several hooks on the ground. Mountain Graveyard Expedition. Alrighty. Damn it, I'll read it in a moment. Our fleet, the NMS Volga, fell into a natural trap on the protoplanetary disk of Narmuns. Pulled in a maze of dense clouds of interstellar gas, this fleet fell into a stream of solid residual clusters of the nearest planetesimal. The ships of the flotilla very quickly pulled by gravitational currents into the cycle of a giant blocks from protoplanetary uh, matter. Fortunately, the fleet consisted of only small ships, and the experienced Admiral was able to get them all out of the deadly trap of the protostar. It's our scientific vessel, so not too bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, fingers crossed for you to any god you believe in. I hope that this does not go horribly wrong. We're going to turn it on. Turning on the matrix will increase the strength of all of our sensors, allowing us to detect distant targets. As long as you have a field of view, even the obscure systems cannot hide from our detection. Is this a fucking, like, a sensor array? Well, we found something. I don't know what we found. There's something really important over here. So our sensor scans obviously allowed us to see the local area a little bit better and all the planets in detail and things like that. It would have given us a ton of new scientific data and sensor uh, ability, right? But it also detected in much deeper space closer to the core on a planet far but not too far away from us uh, massive amounts of dark matter readings which indicates that this planet has something very important and related to obviously the intergalactic war between the Greystone Mountain and the Entropius entities. So we obviously are going to want to try and get our science ships over there. It is a ways, but it is reachable. That's worrying. Well, nothing has immediately jumped into our home system and destroyed our planet, so I call that an absolute win, honestly. A good day for science. And we've encountered aliens. Possibly. We have made first contacts with mysterious aliens in the AO957 system. Okay, well, let's send Carlos Caseta. Where are they at? Oh, up in the north. There is a vessel, it appears. Do we have scans on it? We do. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not a mining drone. A ship type of entities we have never met before in the galaxy has been caught by the new scans allowed by the Greystone Mountain Sensor Array. And we have our first images coming in of an alien vessel of unknown design, clearly intelligent and moving in a nearby system to our northern border. Well, we are obviously immediately dispatching Carlos Caseta, an experienced man who has, despite his aging nature, made many first contacts with alien species that turned out to be nothing but crystalline entities or drones. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we have an election. You are now all voters of the United Nations of Earth, whether you reside on Earth, New Vegas, Terra Nova, or any of the outlying stations or fleets.
three five. Let me check. It's the date right now. Three six. Okay. Obviously, running yet again for the presidency, Athena Montalupo, a president who was sworn in in an emergency election after the ousting of Yusuf Bilal and his corrupt government. She has done a fairly good job in getting some measure of trust back in the government. She has pushed forward scientific research at a rate unprecedented in human history, let alone galactic history. And she has been the president who has overseen, perhaps, uh, an artifact's usage, despite its danger, which would be public, because again, she's being transparent, that has resulted in us potentially encountering our first intelligent interstellar human species. She'd be pretty popular. I'm gonna flip the coin. The Solomon Torres run. I think he might, but I'm not too sure. I'm gonna flip a coin. Heads he runs, tails he doesn't. He is not running. He is going to continue his pseudo exile on Terra Nova and continue to rebuild and uh, get one of our first colony worlds into a better state. He is still pretty young, actually. He may run in the future again, but for now, he is content with what he is. Who else would really run against him, honestly? Get be said, nah, definitely would again. The defense minister and the man who took down Yusuf Bilal's corrupt government. He'd be a really well-liked and well-trusted well man. He's charismatic. He's a very competent military man, very well-trusted, despite a lot of faith no longer being placed in the UNI Space Command. It was him who brought down a corrupt government. So he'd, he'd have a lot of popularity, especially with the more conservative uh, factions and parties. And I'm gonna throw in Ismail Rabani as well. We'll have him run. After his failure to secure the head of research position, which he felt obviously he would deserve as a more experienced scientist in the Montalupo government. He'd be pretty disenfranchised, pretty angry, and he will run as well as an alternative scientific candidate uh, to our dear Athena Montalupo here. So those are the options. Athena Montalupo, Kit Pisna, the current defense minister, and Ismail Robani. Election season, ladies and gentlemen. This is a two minute poll, so it will go pretty quick. And thank you for the subtall. Much appreciated. Much appreciated, friend. Remember, there's no term limits either, folks. So, you can have a president rule for, you know, 50 years, theoretically. This is not the United States government. There's no term limits at present. I'm making myself hydrate better. So I bought giant jugs of water. For some reason, giant jugs of water make me want to drink more and, uh, you know, I feel the need to empty them. It's just kind of, I don't know, a bit effective in me hydrating better. This is always good. Montalupe is already 70. I bet she has a ticking death percentage now. Nope, 80. 80 for liters. I will show you. Shows you, yep. yep. So uh, you get a death chance that starts to tick up after you reach age 80, and it just increases with time. So. We can already have leaders actually live in well over their hundreds and be leaders over their hundreds, but after 80 is when you start to, you know, go downhill. And we get researchers and things like that later on that obviously will increase that, but for now 80s. So yeah, I think it's got some time. She'd be, she'd be up there, she'd be older, but this is, you know, science has developed a lot, including genetic engineering and obviously dealing with medical issues. So I'd, I'd probably imagine that she'd be more in the physical and mental condition of someone in their late 40s, early 50s. I would kind of in my head canon, I think, something like that. So, gee, we still view it as a very viable candidate. Same with our, with our dear Solomon Torres here, who is actually only 66. He's, he's younger than Athena, funnily enough. You never got that pull for defense. Uh, I will set that up right after Cog. Right as soon as our election one is done. At some point, we'll need another military leader, but for the present, much loop of science needs humanity. Yeah, and I think a lot of that will really just go based on our, our how our contact with the species goes. Athena got a lot. Only two for Robani and one for Pisa. Nah, 16 for Athena. So she would have been elected with around 80% of the vote, essentially. So one of probably the most definitive re-elections in, in UNE history. Given that, she's just automatically gonna win, isn't she? So. I'll do it once and then we're chilling. Cool. Well, polls look good for her. Let's see how the election goes. Life. Beneath the ice sheets covering Kenneth's surface, this is the rogue planet thrown out of orbit and found in deep space. 
The planet's subsurface ocean is teeming with aquatic life forms of all shapes and sizes. This is a real thing, by the way. It's been theorized that rogue planets, which are again planets that have been thrown out of planetary orbits of stars of any sort or other uh, bodies of high gravity, could theorize they will exist out in the darkness of space in between stars and solar systems. And it has been theorized that it is cold enough that an ice layer could develop above the whole surface but that uh, liquid water with enough warmth obviously given off by heat vents coming off of the really hot planetary core even in deep space could be enough to sustain life this is a, a real thing that's been theorized pretty interesting anyway uh, most of them congregate around the yeah, hot vents lining the ocean floor of many species swim freely from the bottom of the ocean to its surface, which is that ice layer again, uh, and back again in search of food mates or simply warmth. It's unlikely enough to find life on a rogue planet light years from the nearest star, but Lazlo has already locked his eyes on another, more ambitious prize. He has reason to suspect that the planet's original sapient inhabitants are still alive, having retreated underwater to escape the freezing surface, and is determined to find them. Well, let's hope that he does. That would be super cool. We have more intelligent life. We're starting to see a lot more of it, aren't we? Two prescindient species, one hive mind, one lithoid, potentially an aquatic species, and then whatever we have met in the Psy with the Psy aliens, or we discover their real name. How oh, Athena handles contact with this empire will define the rest of her political career. True. True, true. Uh, what was the defense poll again? Whether or not we all attack all non-intelligent entities, right? I'll go ahead and throw that up. is up. An initiative to eradicate all hostile entities, mining drones, crystalline monsters, which we already do, we're hostile to them, inside and bordering the UNE territories to protect civilians and open pathways previously closed to the UNE, which our fleet is not currently strong enough to do, but we are aware that it is improving enough we will be able to do that somewhat some, uh, soon. Well, so it is going to be on the table in the next couple decades. We will have military options, given our fleet advances. We have another agricultural district on Terra Nova, allowing for no more food jobs, which has massively balanced out our our food deficit there, but also resulted in a bit of an energy one. It's going to take a while. Not just theorized, we kind of have evidence it is possible with the under ice ocean of moons such as Europa. Yes, exactly. Which is one of the most interesting planetary bodies in the solar system besides Mars, Earth, and well, there's a lot of them, honestly. But Europa is one of the most interesting, I always thought. I took a, uh, what was that class called in college? It was one of my favorite classes. Essentially, it's like the early, like, What's the name? Planetary, planetary physics or something like that. And a lot of it was like theorizing on the future of astro, uh, uh, what's it, biology or something like that, talking about like kind of like where we might find life, how we need to throw out all of our conceptions for how it's created. And one of the sections my professor covered the most was Europa, just in terms of like what could be there and things like that and how interested it is. I forget the name of the class. It was like planetary, planetary biology or something like that. It was a really weird class I took at UCSD. It was one of my favorite classes. She was a really interesting professor, world renowned, and she fucking cared about teaching and her subject matter. It was such a good class. Like, it was one of my favorites. But anyway, yeah, it's, it, it'll be really, I'm curious to see, like, I hope in our lifetime we're going to send more kind of either direct exploration or more robotic missions to some of the, especially the moons of Jupiter. There's a lot of interesting ones. Yes, okay. So that means that the Parliament has voted after a proposal from the UNE Space Command to basically begin to start to make our borders safer. Obviously, the crystalline attack on Terra Nova and the killing of Joaquin Martinez by those mining drones on our southern border has made us realize basically how dangerous these are, specifically the non-intelligent entities, right? These mining drones, which we don't even know who made them, and they're clearly hostile, right? And they're pre preventing us from taking systems with a lot of resources, and then the crystalline entities, which directly attacked us. Int intelligent ones we meet of any sort is not included in this bill and would obviously be subject to the discretion of the UNE president. So anyway, big decision though. So when we get the fleet size to do it, we're gonna start to clear some of those entities which will be dangerous people will die but for the safety of the uni we will do it our science ship has confirmed the discovery of fossils on yu5 ts8 and not just a few but a whole vein of them 
The life forms that inhabited the planet that broke up to form you, you, why you, 5TS8, had a number of unusual features and access to their remains will no doubt expand our knowledge of biology considerably. Very, very big find there. And Athena Montelupo has won re-election in a campaign speech in UNE City. In the Sovereign Archduchy of America, Athena Montelupo, the re-elected president, who has won her first formal election, not an emergency election, promised obviously an expansion of scientific research across the board for the UNE government, as well as continued and sped up exploration of new systems, building up of new colonies on the recently discovered worlds, which I will start right now, given she just won and she'd want to fulfill that promise. We'll send humans to Form 1 Prime, which by the way, you'd like to name a planet? This would be a good time to do so. I forget if, I don't think there were any that I missed. This is a planet again that does have cities, which I will read now. Um, we'll need to go. The planet was a continental uh, world home to a sentient species. However, their industrialization efforts started a process that melted the planet's large glaciers and ultimately terraformed the planet. The species did not survive, leaving only these sunken cities as evidence of their lost civilization. The Mediterranean world, though, very habitable for us. So we'll, we'll send our colony ship. All right, what do we got, LLC? I believe there is a planned mission for automated drones to drill through the ice of Europa and Nucleus. I had heard about that. I thought it had been delayed or completely stopped, though. Mundo de Ciudad. What does that mean? Can you translate that to English for me? I love having these research alternative op options. They're so good. We'll go hyperdrive, too. That's a huge upgrade there. An expansion of our hyperdrive technologies. World of City? Little by Costello. No, that's not happening. Let me do it. Let me do a translation. Gotta, gotta be like lore makes sense. It's later. Fuck speaking point eight languages. City world. Sure. That's fine. We can do that. A moon city? I said. This is. My translator says city world. Mundo right world. Regardless, it's fine either way, so we'll go with that. Mundo the ciudad. I'm just going to call it Mundo for short, though. Instead of just trying to butcher the fucking Spanish portion every time. Did you get an envoy in first contact? Yes. Currently, we have Carlos Caseta, who is attempting to make breakthroughs on communication with a the vessel. They'd be aware of our presence now at this point in our attempts to communicate them. He would be in a ship in that system, which the game doesn't replicate, um, but he would be. And he'd be trying to make contact with those aliens. They have not attacked us. They do not appear to be hostile yet. So we're kind of we'll take this as we go. It's a big moment, though. He's leading first contact with an intelligent spacefaring species of some sort. We can't make any, obviously, assumptions about what they are, what they do, how they function. We are keenly aware of their existence. I've been completely ignoring our scientists, too, here. off these planets, continue to industrialize them. The society research. Oh, a very valuable system down there in Arista. Let's also upgrade our space station on Adhumla Station as well when we can. We need star holds. We definitely need to get better star base technologies here. That's a bit of an issue. We still haven't got the Christian back? 500 more days. We wouldn't know it's coming back, so I'm going to build another... Uh, Another science ship. It, it would be considered lost at this point, right? So I'll build another science ship or our scientist who currently doesn't have one. I'm going to turn Raul Jekyll Station. Actually, we'll do Astronauta Station. I'll turn that into an anchorage. Raul Jekyll, we will build some actual defense modules. I'll build them batteries. These are not the most efficient in terms of what they are supposed to do, but that's fine. 
we'll do a do a disruption field generator in there as well. That is our one of our major choke points, so we will fully build that up. Same with TO one, no six station as well. Actually, it is bordering the world of all those mining drones, and we don't know what's behind there. So we'll build a disruption field generator and then gun arrays on that station as well. With all the alloys we have. She's not a warlike woman, but our defense minister would obviously prioritize that. Beginning to build choke points to defend the uh, stations of Earth. Or the home systems, I should say. Well, it is actually the station that we need to... This is the one we actually need gun batteries on. It's the choke point. This one, we'll build anchorages on. And astral generators for a bit of extra energy, too. They're oriental. Translators have a reputation for being, for being goofy. Yeah, this isn't Star Trek, folks. We don't have universal translators yet. That's not a thing. We have to individually identify their language and uh, discover what it is. We have found another megastructure, by the way. That's that asteroid drilling facility with a, with a precursor. Uh, potentially structures found in the system as well. So securing that and getting a scientist on it will be a major priority for us right now. System pro. Given. A595 has a huge gravity well, relatively young surface features, unusual for a frozen world of its size. We're researching. We have finally breached one of the locked doors. It looks like this is a rather large complex, part of the ruins above perhaps. This is the precursor site, by the way. Our excavation team is splitting up into groups of two in order to more efficiently explore the chambers of this complex. We, uh, who knows what they will find or what will find them. It's Adi Yami. She's our head of research, by the way. I mean, a precursor, a site of like an alien civilization of this technology would be super high priority. So she's, she's leading that one herself. Ladies and gentlemen, New Vegas, our third colony under the leadership of Fritz von Fickelmont, the Prince of the Sovereign Archduchy of America, and the first governor of New Vegas. 14 sized planet, lots and lots of mineral and uh, industrial potential on this world, very valuable, no, no food. The soil doesn't even basically allow anything to grow, period. So we'll need to import almost all of its food, creating a bit of a logistical problem, but also more chance for corporations to step in and more wealth to be developed by obviously industrializing, building up space lines and space stations to facilitate that, and obviously more shipbuilding, which is only a good thing for us, frankly. Our first building, given what we are and what we want to do, is going to be, of course, be a mineral purification plant in order to facilitate more mineral income from all those beautiful crystals and mining rare earth resources. We are going to be pulling off that planet. Another very big day for humanity, ladies and gentlemen. Very big indeed. Where is this station at? That's an important choke point, so we will build on batteries there and a disruption field generator. What? They make New Vegas into an, into an entertainment world. Maybe after we've extracted all the mining resources out of it. All right, here we go. We have got neither sight nor sound of the sight aliens for some time now. Our researchers find they have little information to go on and worry that the trail may have gone cold. Uh-oh. Keep looking. They're out there. We got, we have pictures. We know that they're out there. Keep looking. Good. Actually, no, that's a waste of a system. Have those mining station output bonuses on uh, obviously i assume we'd have learned those technologies primarily off of studying the mining droids well plus steel armor that's a big one they go to fall of rain 64. novo reno are we are we just gonna become like nevada of space very popular place i guess they are entropious oh i hope not that'd be a gg for us folks the public has been informed of a potential first contact scenario on AO957 system. 
where the presence of an unidentified spacecraft has been registered. Early data suggests that this vessel is capable of space travel and likely originates from a previously unknown alien civilization. Representatives from all branches of the government are being briefed on this developing situation as well as our ongoing efforts to translate their language. We are making progress. We've identified their vessels again. Oh, this is about to be probably one of the biggest moments for the human species in all of history, past and future. I'm really curious what they're going to be. I swear to God, it's fucking purifiers, man. Yeah, I know their ship's still there. They're surveying. That's what they're doing. They are just like us. Research complete. That revitalization chamber is beautiful. Well, let's go ahead and build a galactic administration. There would obviously be proposals given now we are an interplanetary species. The rapid population growth we've had in recent years and the fact that we are about to meet an alien species of considerable note, that we should expand, obviously, UNE City in Maine and build it into a proper administrative capital for a planet that's been united for over 100 years now and for an interplanetary species. A towering configuration of administrative bureaus and networked infrastructure allowing the construction and operation of highly demanding facilities. We'd be all for that. According to Ismail Ravani's reports, it appears that the Chthonian planet, a gas strand that lost its atmosphere to solar winds or some other form of hydrodynamic escape, leaving behind only its solid metallic core. The core migrated outward from its sun over the eons, eventually ending up in an outer region of the KE-595 system and accumulating a thin crust of ice. That's giant getting an ice crust, that's wild. What are they doing? What are they doing? Gonna stare at the ship until we get contact. Let's be honest, every single fucking human right now would be stuck on their phones. Just like watching hollow net video channels speculating on what the aliens are off of like the one picture, you know? And just generally everyone obviously keeping up with the government and what's going on. We care about very little little else right now in all the colonized worlds. Make contact with the species publicly televised. They're horrifying demon like faces. Dude, don't even say that. Come on now. Come on, don't jinx it. I'm hoping for nice space friends. You know, like Federation builders or uh, or just egalitarian uh, materialists that we can trade with. You know, those, that's the kind we got to hope for here. So we don't get absolutely railed with our 1,000 fleet in 37 years in the game, which we can't upgrade. We should go ahead and do that, actually. We'll wait until we get the Plasteel 3. Keep going. I need another scientist down here in the south too. Only having one is not very good. Um, as soon as uh, the NMS Drake is done with that rogue planet, we'll send them south. Construction complete. I mean, we should also go south, see what there is So as well. Yep, agreed. I need another science ship down there. Uh, we have a extra one about to be built, though, I think. Didn't I start building that? I did. Which is, uh... Give us an extra. It's given we have a scientist who is not currently busy. Robert Rinsford Jr. will finally be given his first command of the NMS Fahrenheit. We're gonna send him south. Yeah, we are, we're making first contact, Pink. Have you seen the images being put on telly? Average. Complete. British hollow net viewer. It's really difficult though. It's taking him a while. He's a priest. Very religious man. Let's hope that doesn't fuck up the uh, first contact. Support that comes from being an official sector makes this planet a hotbed for crime. Interior sector. Simple organisms. This world is host to an unusually high number of newly evolved organisms. Most of them seem to be in the early stages of their evolution. Low gravity, which is a good thing. 
Floral reefs, Grand Canyon, Searing Desert, Frozen Gas Lakes, Rich Mountains, Submerged Ore Veins, Black Soil. We gotta deal with crime, though. I mean, with the Americans bankrolling this, I can't say. I'm surprised that we're already seeing it, but... Let's, let's already launch an anti-crime campaign. I need to build a garrison force there as well. Um, I'm going to recruit one army there too. And let's build a space station over that world too. Construction complete. We, we'd have a lot of people coming and going and obviously we're going to need a lot of infrastructure to, to carry all the minerals we're going to start to mine there. So we need a proper space station over orbit, I think. I'll obviously build station space stations for like meta right, choke points, complete. but we're going to probably build most of them over worlds and things like that as well, because that makes sense. I don't have much use for you, actually. We'll send them actually south. We'll have two down there just in case we need another construction ship. Heading north. Very strong space stations, though, at least. That's solid. And we get star holds, they'll be even better. We have gathered enough information. This is the event we had for observing these pre, uh, pre space bearing species. The next time we have an observation event that would advance our insight, we will gain a new research option. That's from observing those pre FTL species. That's cool. Some probably a society development, I'd imagine. We have hyperdrive too, so we've made a radical jump up in our hyperspace understanding and technologies. That's a really big moment right there. And on that note, let's go for shields three. Really big tech too. Especially given we're about to contact aliens and we'd be hoping for a positive interaction, but we'd be aware that it may not be one. We do not know what we're gonna find out here. And even for a scientific leader like Athena, She's, she's no fool. she know what that is. God, we have a lot of rare crystals. Look at that. We've been pulling them in mass off of Terra Nova. The money made off that crystalline attack has been massive, but the cost was certainly not worth it. Look at the price of minerals. It's absolutely dead. Space-born life forms encountered. No. Dolphin, uh, New Vegas will not be an entertainment world. It's going to be a mining world. I may, if we have enough building slots later on for it, I'll, I'll throw in entertainment. You know, it could be like entertainment with a huge mining sector. I'm not opposed to that. It is a guy world, but it was it was uh, colonized primarily for mining rights. That was like the whole lore behind it. So that'll come first and foremost always, especially with the current governor. These appear to be the ruins of an old power facility. Throughout several of the chambers of this complex, energy arrays, uh, energy relays and power arrays were discovered. Most of them in such a bad shape that there is little to be learned from them. However, we did find an interesting terminal in one of the deeper chambers and have pulled some incredible information off of it. Arco Shield Generator? What? Oh, let's go. The Rogue Planet, ladies and gentlemen. Success! Lazo was right. Panthus sapient inhabitants. They did flee underground after the surface froze and in surprising numbers. Clearly the freeze happened slowly enough that there was time to organize a proper evacuation of a large portion of their population. They have since evolved into a fully aquatic creatures. The Depriatier. Try to say this right. Depriat Depriatier. Depriatier? Depriatier. Okay, I can say that. They carved out niche for themselves near the top of the ocean just underneath the ice sheets. However, their survival came at a cost. Metalworking is impossible underwater, meaning the Depriatier will never be able to escape to subsurface, nor advance past the Stone Age. When Kentis finally freezes solid millennia from now, it will take them with it. Laszlo Takas has floated the idea of inviting someone to join the UNE on the temporary planet of Earth. I won't even put that up to a poll. With our species and what we are, you know for a fact we're gonna we're gonna offer it to them. So, Laszlo! Well, his science vessel, which has managed to go underwater and communicate with this species, has offered their leaders uh, the chance to go to Earth. Obviously, we have plenty of waters on Earth, as well as Terra Nova and some of the other planets that we have discovered, and offer their species a way out if they would like it after discovering their language. Obviously, plenty of them would not want to leave their homeland, even given the fact that they will, one day, it will be uninhabitable. But obviously, we'd make clear to them that the door would be open at any time, 
And then obviously uh, we would maintain contact with them. We probably even will put a station on the planet. And uh, if any of them get into that situation in the future, they're always welcome and they're welcome to come join us. But it looks like a lot of them do want to join. Three pops would probably be around, I'd say maybe half a million to a million of them. So this would be a massive undertaking. It require a lot of funding. It would require obviously uh, building up habitation centers on the oceans uh, of Earth and allowing them obviously safety. We do have some predators still left on the ocean, so we need to assist them with that. It'd be a lot of money, but given our government, our egalitarian nature, and everything the UNE currently values of an egalitarian president, we will we will offer them, and we will put the funding into providing the relief effort. Hell yeah. A good end to what could have been a very sad story. When we first discovered those dead scientists floating in orbit of that sun, we thought we found nothing but yet another dead species. But in the end, after the tenacity of Lazotakis, and with the support of our science team, we found a good, a good ending to what could have been a sad one. And a new alien species, intelligent, to join the United Nations of Earth. Let's take a look at them as well. Hell yeah. They kind of, they kind of look like the uh, the Hathesians, don't they? Almost like a, uh, like a fungoid sort of uh, like underwater tree species. They look kind of cute, don't they? They look like coral tree and like bugs all rolled into one. Yeah, kind of like coral. It's really cool. Their traits. Ocean preference, obviously. They're aquatic. Twins. They're members of the species are always born as identical twins. That's cool. Hail blades. Members of the species uh, have a long stabbing blade. So uh, great whites are in for a bit of a, of a rough time here in their natural habitat, I think. Pyromaniacs. Members of the species gain a great joy from burning something. Luxury combustibles are observed to be a stable uh, part of their economy. That's funny. Deformed. Members of the species exhibit a wide range of physical deformities, often contributing to poor health. They're very sickly. In the future, if our genetic advances go that way, I think we'd certainly offer them the chance to start to, uh, to get rid of that. But that's really cool. The, f the second species of the UNE. Full rights, obviously, as citizens. Another thing I won't put to a poll, there's no way we wouldn't give them those, you know? They'd have voting rights. Maybe sovereign citizens entitled to the full protections of the laws of the United Nations of Earth. Huge moment there. So technically, although we're about to make, you know, first contact with an intelligent species, we've met the first spacefaring species. Because again, they were a spacefaring species before their planet was thrown out of orbit. They are no longer one, but they were. So this is first, technically our first intelligent inner solar species we've contacted. So it's a little bit of a mixed one. That's super cool. We invited them to Earth and celebrated with fireworks and they've uh, never seen the same uh, thing since. Yeah, they'd be pretty into that, I imagine. Fireworks, bonfires, things like that. Xenophobic faction shivering in their boots. Maybe. We don't really have xenophobes, do we? We have militarists, which are a little bit different. I mean, there would obviously be xenophobes on, on Earth. They're, you know, humans. And they'd exist. But there's no faction for them. The only group I'd say that probably wouldn't like it would be the Crimson Warrior Lodge, which in the lore, I forget the name of it, but there's a there's a political party. They wouldn't be huge fans of it, but like portions of the party would hate this. A lot more of it really wouldn't care, right? They're more they're more militarist, they're more warrior like. They're not xenophobic. Xenophobes would be in very small amounts on, on Earth. They'd be they'd be very few. They would be probably mostly in northern Germany too. Alright, we have another tradition to unlock. What are we gonna do? What do interstellar franchising? A focus on franchising allows even the most mundane planet to open thriving dynamic business, providing local jobs and increasing trade value. We are one away from completing prosperity. The second sentient species to hold full citizenship of the UNE. Hell yeah. Big moment. Well, no empires yet, Trucker Nero. I believe Carlos Caseda would tell you that that is not going to last for very long. Goldman's idol. So we've completed that archaeological site as well. I am going to send Kane Adiyami south as well. Continue to survey the systems in the southern periphery. We also picked up a new artifact, Arco Shield Generator. In exchange for 250 minor artifacts, we increased our shield hit points by 30%. This relatively small shield generator was capable of producing a small energy field to block energy attacks. It could form the basis for a large network of shield generators, potentially covering an entire world. 
So I would have. Yeah, we can now do a planetary decision to build shield arrays on our planets. The building? Maybe we can just do the research. Let's take a look. I'm curious. Fertilization plants. That's interesting. Engineering complex. I bet what it is is we can do the research now. Shield generators under. This looks maybe probably. Activate it first. I see. And then we can build them after. Well, let's uh, let's turn her on. Our current president has shown uh, a willingness to turn on pretty much any alien device she has found. So, unless, let's see, allow us to build a series of shield arrays on a single habitat. The world covering it with a powerful planetary shield using the planetary decision. Its passive effects are shield bonuses. As active effects, once we activate it, we can build shield arrays on planets. Oh, oh my, I, I, I did not understand how strong this was. Ladies and gentlemen, we found ourselves a fantastic precursor artifact. Jesus. We'll do that when we have a bit more funding and when we have a bit more danger. Right now, I don't think it'd be our biggest priority, but wow, that's that's incredible. We can do amazing things with that. For my redeem, take a vote on making 0915 the uh, next official holiday, celebrating the first arrival of an Earth on alien species. Are there any mods here? Could one of you make the poll for that? If not, I'll do it in a moment. A war has broken out on K7514 in recent years. Certain factors on the planet managed to accrue enough wealth. I think this is the Lithoids. It is. This is the yes non Lithoids. Managed to accrue enough wealth to monopolize the means of production. In turns, other revolts against a growing inequality. Now an all out class war has broken out. It is a dark time for K751, and this will have lasting consequences. So there's a very powerful global corporate elite with all the money and power, and there is a worldwide revolution. Let's get that insight technology. Whatever that may be. If we get one. Fuck yeah. Public Works Division. Our growing cities will be augmented by inspiring public works on a scale never before seen. To that end, a new government agency must be formed to oversee their construction. So we get uh, more more housing for city districts, and we will get our second residency permit. All right, folks. Full time again. Before I do the other one, um, we have our second ascension perk. I will allow a vote for this one as well. So what do you guys think here? Uh, I think obviously technological ascendancy, given our current president, makes a lot of sense, right? Logical, technical, logical, ascendancy. Given we are in a full technocratic government under Athena Montelupo, I think that makes sense. Interstellar Dominion. That just generally means that we're expanding very quickly and would focus more efforts on that. Interstellar Dominion. Any other y'all think would make sense here? I guess I'm still listening to YouTube. One Visions. Well, one, one vision I think would make sense too. Unity in our politics, but we're not that united right now. Again, we've had like a pretty big movement towards like a more militarist, violent kind of uh, path in the future. But I'm not, I'm not going to give us the option for one vision right now. I don't think that's on the table for us, frankly. 
Transcendent learning. Yeah, I think so too. Leader experience gain and then a scientist capacity increase. We're already over our limit, so yeah, I'll we'll throw that one in there. Transcendent learning. Lessons. Blade of the community. I don't think we're there yet. We haven't encountered really dangerous aliens, and we haven't encountered uh, other interstellar species to the point that we would even start to think about something like that, right? So. We'll go with those three. So, Technological Ascendancy, Interstellar Dominion, or Transcendent Learning. Drop a five minute pull on that one. A little bit longer there. There you are. And then we'll do a pull on the next traditions. The noises. A mixture of threatening booming noises and what sounds like the grinding of metal on metal continued unabated for several minutes, punctuated occasionally by a howling noise that sent a chill through everyone who heard it. Just as envoy Carlos Caseda thought the noises had died down, they started up again, louder than before. Over when she switched the receiver off, he turned to the gathering crowd of officers, some of whom were cowering behind their seats. Well, that was quite something, he said weakly. It's hard to imagine that the species making the noises we have picked up from the site aliens could be anything other than hostile. Well, we can't assume that, though. If this was a militarist government, I'd agree. We'd immediately get hostile, but we have a scientific government. It's a rational one, so I, I don't think we'd be jumping to that conclusion, frankly. It'd be scary, but again, we we know by now we can't assume anything when we're dealing with, with alien life, right? We just can't. The evil officers already fear the worst and assume we will be at war with them. A calmer head suggests we'd be better off waiting and seeing. Yeah, our government, our leadership, and our nation, the UNE, is not the type for that right now. They're just not. They cannot help how they sound. We will come to understand them later. Yep. We're just, we're going to make no assumptions and keep going. If it does turn out they're hostile, so be it. And given that, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our fleet. I think those noises would be enough. For Pisa Kina to convince Athena Montelupo to upgrade the aging fleet, though. I think I think that would happen. We'd do that for sure. And the need for more anchorages. And a naval command, probably, too. Which uh, we are going to build on Hades, which we shouldn't have sent a ship for that, didn't we? Yes, we did. It's about to arrive there. And then we've got our other colony ship currently on its way to Funon. Funorn? Funorn. What's also... Start terraforming WEC 3 again to a continental world. We have the we have the energy credits for that. Anomaly They're just grinding metal boys. It, it could be. It could just sound very scarily and be very nice. Exploration of this asteroid has resulted in us finding pieces of a large object scattered on its surface. This warrants further investigation. What is dear Teresa up to? Send her to go explore the black hole. And we will send the NMS Pacific. To take the Ashy Sector, I think. Well, no, we'll, we'll keep going north. Ah, uh, the Lithoid Civil War is over. One by one, the revolutionaries fell. As the bodies piled high, the dominant faction continued to profit from a war triggered by their own greed. The status quo has been restored. Rise of revolution have gone silent. They, get, they killed a lot of people. Wow, that's a lot of dead people. Well, we got to do another poll. What's the Ascension perk at right now? Overwhelmingly technological ascendancy, so I'm going to end it, and we're going to do another poll. An unexpected one. So obviously, over the, over the last day, the government has been briefed on the situation on Yeznon. The revolution, which, you know, obviously would be a sad affair, as this is the second intelligent species we have ever met, right? And they are, they are just killing each other in mass, primarily the ruling elite. We're not some, like, radical, communist, socialist, you know, nation that is all for this right we have private capitalism to a fair degree but the level of which it is on and their country in their you know species on their planet is enormous and and what's currently happening would be absolutely tragic it'd be all over the whole news too so it'd be a big story we'd have to respond to we have two options one you know we just we just claim non-interference which we have not set a precedent for folks they haven't so that wouldn't really go as a big big excuse um or we could start to basically funnel potentially arms and support to the resistance movement. 
But as with any revolution, we don't know what kind of government would actually get set up afterwards. It could be just as bad, if not worse. So it's a tough call. And as a result, you all get to vote, but you are not voting as citizens. You are voting as members of the UNE uh, Research Council or of the military, obviously advising President Montelupo. My Twitch is not currently working though, so we'll see if I can do that. Fuck. Which buddy, what you doing? Folks, we may not have polls here. What's up, Lollipop? How are you? Yeah, you know, all, all, my whole Twitch page is just like all loading. It's stuck loading. I don't have the option for polls right now. Can I do it on OBS? I've never tried, actually. Bear with me for a moment. very good okay i know there are a couple mods here and if you are currently listening on this on this one i do need y'all if you if you're here can one of you make a poll for whether or not we were intervene and basically help out those aliens the yes non species i am currently unable to make polls with my screen right now so if one of you guys could do that i'd appreciate it if you're if you're not listening in afk that's completely fair but i would really appreciate that but my twitch works again here try one more refresh see if that works No, I won't even load any of the page. Uh-oh. Hopefully Twitch doesn't go down here. Yeah, moderators can do it. I think that's most of them are AFK. I know, I, I, can, I can do naked streams now, right, Escova? I think. Then Twitch uh, start allowing, like, nude streams. You know, I don't, I don't plan on one, but I can do it if I want, and that's freedom. God damn it. I don't think you can, you can, you can't show genitals, though. You can just do, like, upper body nudity or something, right? Basically, just to help out all the, the Twitch whores. Which is hilarious. Money is money. They reversed it? So ridiculous, man. Like, I, I know you may want a piece of that Pornhub pie, but goddamn. Anyway. Um, no, this is the Yes Don. They are the Lithoids on AE751. Alright, I'm gonna call someone out specifically. Escova, can you make a poll for me? I know you're here and listening. You're a mod. Can you go to the, uh, the moderator screen and make a poll for me? Because I can't do it. If he is still here. Otherwise, I may I may offer a promotion to someone who's willing to actually help me do polls here. We'll do it that route. Anyone who's been here for a while, anyone willing to be a moderator and help me do polls? Because I really do need them sometimes. Like if you if you watch for a while and I know you pretty well. Oh, I'll see. Yeah, you're you're literally a moderator on my on my uh, Discord, so I'll give you a quick promotion there. And yeah, the poll the polls are the biggest thing I need mods for, so that is uh, very important. Do you not automatically do promotions now? Dude, I don't use all the Twitch features enough when I'm streaming, so like every time. You can't make a poll either. It might just be a Twitch thing then. No longer do automatic promotions. Mm -hmm. See if I can even go to my rules page to promote you. Yeah. Okay. Sound is bugging? Fucking Twitch, man. I wonder if this is related to that Discord issue a while back. Alright, you're a moderator now. Um, I think my Twitch updated, but I... S Reset my whole Twitch page? What the fuck? My manager. What's going on? Bear with me for a moment, folks. We're having some technical issues here. I'll get them dealt with. We can go back to meeting potentially terrifying space aliens and interfering in wars like we're the CIA of space. I can do polls now again. Good. What the hell's going on, though? Guys, is my stream coming through pretty well right now? Can you can you see my uh, video and hear my audio pretty well? Are there issues? It looks like Twitch might be having some problems. Yes? Okay. We're good, then. I will throw up that poll. Actually, I'll, I'll let you do it. LLC. Leonard. 
You've been promoted, so your 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 first job as a moderator is can you make a poll as to whether or not we uh we intervene in this situation currently with the yes not aliens. Give you a chance to figure out how to do them too. I think I'll take this as a chance to go take my first coffee break here. I'm running a little low. If you can figure it out. If not, I'll throw it up right now. I'll go grab some coffee. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're uh, chilling, watching the stream, I recommend y'all get some water. I'll uh, yeah, got I especially do recommend giant jugs of water because uh, after after getting on that train recently, I'm all for that. But if you if you're not drinking water today, drink some more water. It's good for you. All right, I'll throw the pull up. So I'm impatient. I will be back in just a few, and then we will decide how to deal with this, and we will be hopefully meeting the first alien species, which hopefully won't be purifiers. See you in just a moment.
Good timing. I am back. It says the music decided to die. But it's funny that aquatic species is species-wise pyromania. Well, think about it. You know, like they've been locked under that ice sheet for like so long, right? They haven't been able to develop metallurgy. I'm sure they've probably even not been able to develop fire, right? But they would possibly know through ore tradition that their species used to live above ground and they used to be able to do it, right? So I'd imagine almost like as a fascination with something of their past and something that they're so unused to, right? Like, I'm trying to think of an example for us. I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. But it must be something that's so radically uh, impossible in our own environment that is commonplace for like you know, the species that they brought into. It's just a kind of, I think, a fascination with something that this used to not be possible and now is possible for them. And uh, would just be pretty fucking cool, man. I mean, might think about like human kids right now, right? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I loved fucking fireworks and fire when I was a kid. I wasn't a little psychopath who burned ants or anything, but I, I like setting things on fire. Not in the pyromaniac kind of sense, but you know, I lit some paper on fire when I was a kid just to watch it burn, you know, not like, like uh, I want to go throw this in the forest, but just it's kind of fun to watch and fireworks. I loved 4th of July when I was in. I'm sure a lot of you did if you're American or I'm sure there's equivalent holidays for your country. It's a lot of fun. But imagine if you couldn't have done that your whole lives and now suddenly you can kind of It'd be pretty cool, right? I think it would be. I'm sure they think it is clearly. Alrighty. What was the poll by the way? I think it was a yes. I remember right at the end of it. What have we got? Intervene. Wow, overwhelmingly too. Okay. After discussions with Athena Montalupa's government, the military, and science teams have advised that the level of wealth concentration and bureaucracy and just the amount of people killed, I mean, this would have been genocide, right? Is just unacceptable. We have not set the precedent for not intervening with our species. We introduced ourselves to the Hathesian hive mind while they were still just first building cars, right? So but we aren't like the it's like Star Trek, right? You know, where we're not. We we talk to species and we intervene with them. So this is unacceptable. We're gonna start funneling them weapons. We're gonna introduce ourselves exclusively to the resistance cells and start trying to facilitate an overthrow of that government. We're gonna send Ursula Stitzka as well to help with that. We'll send in an, uh, an envoy who will be instituting a spy network and will be explicitly helping the uh, revolutionary cells there to overthrow that government we're gonna get yeah reverse sex cop <laughs> pretty much yeah we're, we're kind of like the the good good ones i mean we still don't know how this will turn out but we know the current system isn't okay and we can't sit by and watch probably millions of these creatures being killed by their governments so all right escape pod an expedition sent to explore the wreck of the surface of the asteroid brought back an interesting find it appears to be an emergency craft judging by the lack of substantive propulsion systems on board of which several pods capable of sustained cryogenic suspension were found. Most of these have been dismantled to service a single jerry-rigged pod containing one occupant. Although the system were strained to keep them alive. By our best estimations, the cryogist oh God damn it, the cryogenic system failed 500 years ago. Little can be determined about the creature's dissected remains, with stellar radiation having sterilized most of its tissues. All's not lost, however, as the pure inventive genius of the improvised system has aided our knowledge of long-term system maintainability and cryogenics. Oh, God damn it. We, we, we couldn't save them, ladies and gentlemen. That's a real shame. Oh well. We have received our first clandestine report from Spymaster Ursula Siska since the known civilization. All right, so we have a spy there. We've made contact with the resistance cells. They now know that we exist and we're providing them whatever aid we can. On KE-751, descending voices have been silenced by the powerful elite. However, if we, oh boy, this is full intervention. If we intervene now, we could certainly turn the tide. Our presence on the planet could bolster what is left of the resistance. Absolutely, we'll do it. So we're, we're officially revealing ourselves to the species now. And not on the side of the ruling, ruling government. You're in the steam age, by the way. Is it like, uh, Vic, they're playing Vic 3 right now. A little, a little behind. Splintered feudal realms. They are ecologists, fanatic militarists, and fanatic spiritualists. Kind of a dangerous species, but they're in our borders, so we have some measure of responsibility now. Blending in KE-751, uh, our forces demonstrated an immediate material and strategic advantage over the native troops. The former elite has withdrawn in their revolutionary stand poised to assume the mantle of power. 
As I said, you don't know what you create when you make a power vacuum, and what we have made is a fanatic authoritarian government. So that, that backfired. This is why interference is dangerous. Fuck. The outcome we wanted. Oh, man. So this is an important moment, though, for us. I know we're kind of going slow with the campaign, but I was thinking over the last week, by the way, just to note on this before we continue. I want this campaign to be really good. Uh, it's already been, I think, already my, my favorite Stellar start we've ever had, especially with all the lore we built with a grand campaign. I'm really not going to rush Stellaris. If, if it takes us 30 sessions to get through it, I'm fine with that. And I'm also not releasing the videos immediately. I want to take time to build them into like really good YouTube videos and stuff. So I'm not going to rush through things. It may seem slow at times, but I don't know. I've only done a couple Stellaris games kind of like this, where I really take my time, I play at low speeds, I pause, and I really think about decisions, like deeper kind of stuff. And I want to I try it out with this run, so... Just a, just a warning on that, by the way. That's not your, your speed. Be warned. But anyway, this is a big moment, right? Because so far, we have been very interventionist with alien species when we've met. We've met two pre-FTL ones, right? We met the Hothesians, the hive mind tree species, that we immediately contacted and got to know. They had a civil war, too. Um, and I'm sure there would be some discussion and potentially even some science literature on whether we facilitated that by appearing there, right? The second species we met, the Yesnons, the Lithoids, they're not a hive mind, they were a feudal realm species. Um, we made contact and helped and got involved. What happened? They already had a civil war, but we, we made the whole species change radically, not towards what we would view as good. We're fanatic egalitarians. They're fanatic authoritarians. This, this would be probably the biggest foreign policy disaster outside of Earth in human history. Or this would probably hurt the Montelupo government. A lot of people would see it as good as we like had good intentions and tried, which we should have. And this is an unfortunate consequence, but others would also be like, we caused this, which we did. So this would probably make us reevaluate how we deal with pre-FTLs in the future, by the way, folks. So if, you, if you're in any of those votes, just kind of keep it in mind. I mean, this would kind of be, I think, a reflected period, not just for officials. We've been obviously our, our foreign relations core, which we have now, our government, but as our species as a whole, right? And a lot of people would be thinking about the effect we, we will have on species that are not advanced, like we are and what other ones may be that we meet. So yeah, they'd, they'd be cynicalist vanguards. This would be like a Stalin government right now, folks, is what we created. <laughs> Stalin took power with our support. Lissoid space Stalin, who really likes the environment, apparently. So that was, that was a complete fuck up. Complete fuck up on our part. Unfortunate. We have a vote. Begin a prime directive. No intervention in pre-FTL species, no exceptions. It's a very good idea. We are going to make the 0915, which is our contact uh, with the aliens found on that ocean planet, the rogue one. So that will be officially now another holiday for the UNE. And we're going to do a poll now on if we are going to go into a non-intervention strategy for FTL, FTL species in the future. Cats out of the bag with the Hothesians and the Yeznons, but we're going to undoubtedly find more at this rate. So, yeah, we definitely we definitely need to know our plan for that. No resilience for Hyunok Na. It is. It's a big radical change in policy, but after this, it makes sense that someone in the parliament would be proposing it. Whether or not it gains traction and succeeds or not, who knows, but it signals the, the change in conversation that would be happening, right? Which would. Oh, undoubtedly. Go there. You should know we're already doing that, aren't we? We'll take that system and get those volatile moats. Moving south. Arrow world. Interesting. The Grisham finally appeared, by the way, back over New Vegas. It was the ship that was thought lost. Joaquin Martinez, one of our most famous scientists and our ex uh, head researcher for the UNE for probably close to three decades, uh, his body was recovered and brought back after the ship sustained damage with those mining droids. Uh, he did die including a lot of the command deck, but the ship did make it back. Meaning that we will be able to have uh, another science vessel if we would like it. I think we'll probably just mothball it and use it when we have more scientists. Also, our second ascension perk is going to be, after overwhelming support, logical ascendancy.
I know this this was a big fuck up, folks. Like I can't, you know, it's it's easy to take like you know this out of context, but this would be such a big fuck up. I'm sure there would be a lot of mutual guilt for a lot of humans right now, especially our current government, right? I mean, because we caused some pretty radical societal change on that species, and not the good kind. Research How about subtle continue. intervention like spies and propaganda? We don't know the effect, though. I mean, this showed us that we can try and make things go the way we want, and it won't, right? Our, our attempt here was to make for a more egalitarian society by getting rid of these really horrible genocidal leaders. And as a result, we made the species more authoritarian united behind a, a horrible leader, right? So... It sounds good in theory, but I think we've shown pretty clearly things do not just go how we want them to. It's more complicated than that, and we don't understand that fully yet, do we? All right. Olson himself as well. Upgrade the research complexes on Earth as well as the cyto uh, revitalization chambers when we can. And I'm going to upgrade our uh, into a planetary administration now that we have 10, uh, 10 people or 10 pops, I should say, on Terra Nova. Very big moment for that planet. It has changed dramatically under the, the administration of Governor Torres and done much better. His drinking sucks, but it's working out. Dozens of objects clearly artificial in origin circle this asteroid, nor can be seen resting on its surface having been captured by the re gravity. Where's the vote going? I'm curious. No. Oh, okay. We're gonna keep our strategy. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice, you can't get fooled again. I mean honestly. System pro complete. System pro. Mm. The artificial objects found on the surface uh, and the, in the orbit of Doob 33 are data storage devices apparently placed there thousands of years ago. They contain what appears to be complete works of an alien poet who felt that his writings was not appreciated by the people of his time. He placed them here in the hopes that future generations would rediscover them and perhaps find them more pal palatable. Judging from Cecilia Brito's profane, profanity st strewn reaction after sampling a few of the poems, the galaxy is not yet ready. We just wrote a vogue on poetry, I think, here. She can become a substance abuser. If she studies them, she's gonna start abusing alcohol and or hard drugs. This is literally vogue and poetry. That's what this is. That's fucking hilarious. And her lifespan goes down by 10 years. Some things are better left undiscovered. We're gonna we're gonna leave that for, for species in the future that can properly enjoy. Uh, the uh, the immense artistic beauty that is lost on us clearly. Or just uh, we don't have the artistic taste for it apparently. It's, it's not that high brow. Okay, Johnny Lou Station, which is over New Vegas. I'm going to have us build. We'll build anchorages there to expand the fleet. We'll build a transit hub there as well. For quick movement of settlers onto our mining planet there. By the way, folks, we have set foot on Hades. The military uh, vessel has landed there. As the in the the word I'm looking for is in the process of converting it into a military outpost. Obviously, having to fight off spiders the whole time. We're gonna, we have a, an army that we built up over on Terra Nova for when the crystalline catastrophe happened. We'll move them all to Hades as well. Astral Plains is way too overpriced, yeah. What's up, Chris? Yeah, uh, I've, I've looked at it a little bit. For $20, it's a fucking scam. If you can get it for under 10 in the future, I'd go for it. I didn't buy it, I don't plan to. It's an interesting story pack. I've read what it does and stuff like that. It is pretty cool. Not for $20, not a chance in hell. So we are not gonna change our, um, our, Prime Directive, so we're not going to stop basically getting involved with pre-FTL, so the motion has been rejected in the UNE Parliament. It'd be seen as a fuck up, but like, you know, our intentions were good, and they'll be, be better in the future. We have managed to decipher enough of the language used by the civilization we now know to be the hierarchy of Twaxstar. That's a name. 
to open communications with them and to make sense of their earlier broadcasts. It seems like the Chwaxidari are a warlike society who greeted us with their most fearsome war cry, apparently to test our mettle. Unfortunately, our caution translated in language meant that their challenge went unanswered, leading them to conclude that we are a civilization of cowards. It will take quite some time for us to live down this first impression. An alien empire is hailing us. Okay. This is interesting. Hold on, we need a good song for this. We know, we know, we know a warlike song. Hold on, I, I made a Stellaris War music playlist. I'm gonna blast that shit while we read read about them here. Gotta get the ambiance right for these guys. They're like the bulky, but not. Where's the good one? Here we go. Let's play this. Oh yeah, it's better. First contract in the hierarchy of Schwackstar. They are a cooperative. That's good. Fanatic elitist. Not good. Militarist. Not good. Spiritualist. We actually have a lot in common with them. We're also spiritualist. We're also militarist. We're not fanatic elitist, and we would not like that. And they would not like us for that, I think. I've been greetings from Grand Marshal Plume of Honeydew. Nice. The undisputed ruler of the hierarchy of Twaxtar. Respect our borders and keep out our efforts, and perhaps our mighty fleets will refrain from visiting your worlds. Not a good first meeting of Carlos Caseda, but they didn't attack him. That's something. We're friendly, though. Love is friendship set to music. Swax Soldari. We'll make friendly first contact. All right. Where are they at? Do we see their borders? Okay. Oh, they're up in the north. Okay. We're going to get around them here, it looks like, though, which is a good thing. One moment while I figure out. We'll do advanced research complex. Oh, no. Antimatter reactors. We need a strong fleet, clearly, going forward. So I think military priorities are going to jump up here. Give them the first... Alien Empire we have met so far in space. Not hostile, but warlike, certainly. Grand Marshal Plume. They are suspicious of us. Look at their species. Cryoflora Preference, Lithovore, Symbiotic, Toxic, Photosensitive, and Sedentary. They have a Cassus Belly to take our relics. They eat rocks? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they do. God, those teeth have got to be fucking strong then. Avians, which can eat and digest rocks. And they're toxic. They have scans of their system. Just vague ones. We don't know anything about it. Let's immediately send our ambassadors there. We'll send Carlos Caseda. We'll, we'll make him a, a permanent ambassador there on their homeworld or wherever they might have us. It might be a space station. And we'll send Hockney Nez as well. He was one of our old ambassadors with the Hothesians, and uh, he'll be redeployed there as well. We need to try and become somewhat cooperative with them. If we, if we go towards militarism and have to fight a war, it would be devastating for our species and our economy and our expansion right now. So we're going to do our best to get to know them and cooperate. They're not purifiers, folks, but that is a little rough for a first find there. I thought I played war music. Here we go. That's better. Wow. We're not going to send spies yet. They're not dangerous enough for it. We, we can't make a further bad impressions. They already think we're fucking cowards. Apparently. But I also would really like to know their, their fleet power here. Do we have a choke point with them? Not really. No, we do. Yeah, Lenniel, that's a choke point. We need to get that system right fucking now. And we are moving north around them, it looks like. We're going to meet up with them here in a minute as well. I suppose we could ask for any star maps off of them. That'd be a big ask, but I'm going to see. Not a chance. 
Some type of empire that will demand our vassalization, yeah, but unless we're strong enough. How's the fleet? Not strong enough. I don't know why the anchorages aren't increasing our, our naval cap here. They should be. Naval coverage. Are anchorages bugged for us? The only work on systems with a planet doing naval jobs. Oh. Okay. They've changed since I played Stellaris, Jesus. They used to just give you flat bonuses. I was wondering why it was increasing our cap. So yeah, we really need this fortress world now, don't we? Which is a problem because this system is so strategic for us. We kind of need military, you know, gun batteries up on there. So we're going to have to build anchorages over on Andrusnal station, uh, station so we can get more naval cap from our buildings there. Build a starport over Terra Nova again, and then I'm going to build anchorages there, increase our capacity. I'm going to replace the... We would need the trade hub for our P reasons. We're going to build anchorages over New Vegas, though. That, those will increase our fleet cap. I say we make them our allies and establish a hedge of money with them. I'm not pre-planning that, and we're not the species for that period. Guys, we're not authoritarians. I know this is the human stellaris, but, like, we're not authoritarians yet. And if it changes, it changes us. But that's not really our vibe at the moment. Is that what the naval offices on planets are for? Yes, and the uh, fortresses also give you naval cap uh, increase, I believe, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, we really do need that fortress world. Turns out Hades is going to be a really, really, actually, a really positive decision for us in the long run. I'm sure a lot of people questioned it, but at the end of things, given this contact, it will prove to be very advantageous. We can't go further. Our systems between ours and theirs are actually blocked by a mineral extraction operation, which our fleets are not large enough to defeat yet, so... I have a bit of a soft border with them to do that, but that won't last for long. Our fleets and theirs will we'll move past them pretty quickly. Alrighty. Well. Things just changed a lot for us, didn't it? I think that'll give Get PS uh Kit Piss it not, or any other military uh, running for president, a lot more traction in the future, I would say. Depends how we interact with, uh, with them. Alright, we need Starholds. I'm, I'm not going to wait for that anymore. What happened to Robert? I retired Robert Sr. because we needed more research uh, um, scientist slots for leaders. So you have uh, you have his son. Junior's still around. Senior, I had to retire for the slots. So we were just bleeding unity. He just would have retired, you know. He was getting older. He's in his 70s and stuff. He'd done a lot, so. He retired and his son took over command of his ship, essentially, is what happened. No, uh, senior? Uh, no. Junior, yes. The ship is he on? I don't remember. I want to say Fahrenheit. Yeah, Fahrenheit. One. Get one of the mods you download that allow you to tame the spiders and use them as cavalry. I don't think so, but we'll stop us from trying. Spies always make things easier, just hire some more spies. Roleplay-wise, there's no way our current government will do that. Not, not until they directly start to become hostile to us. Athena Montalupo, she was the ex, like, ambassador for, for humanity, right? That was her role before becoming president. She was the one that built us a pretty good working relationship with the Hothesians, so there's no way her as president and her government will do anything other than try and get to know them better. There's, there's no way. Not a chance. Oh. Scientist Saldana on board the science vessel Lagrange has made a remarkable discovery on Distal 1A. Uh, well, fascinating to look at. These islands are so unusual they defy conventional logic. It appears some mineral or substance on this world is causing large rocks to float through the air, forming floating islands that hover dozens, sometimes hundreds of feet off the ground. Holy crap. Let's go down there and look. Special project floating island science expedition. Absolutely. Immediately we're going to do that. Oh wow, okay. Um, 
He is the explorer type, isn't he? Eager, entrepreneur, precursor historian. He actually might be a scholar, though. Maybe a scholar. Or precursor obsession, definitely. Destroy Izashi. Dangerous Wildlife Expanded, I believe it was called. There was a front page mod that made hostile fauna more interesting. I don't have that one on. That does sound really good, though. Spider Riders. Spider Cavalry. Driders, basically. System Pro complete. We've been declared a rival by the hierarchy of Schwackstar. How a bunga it is. We're going to keep our diplomats there. Relations are breaking down with them, but this doesn't mean it's over. I want to take a moment here to think how we'd even fucking deal with this. We wouldn't like their government. We wouldn't. We wouldn't like their attitude, but there are commonalities with them, and we know that war benefits no one, certainly not us in this case. We're not pacifists, we are willing to fight wars, but as egalitarians, we're, 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 we have our government, we have our history, we're not going to look to do it for no reason. Like, we got, we got big Teddy Roosevelt energy. Talk politely and carry a big fat fucking club. To redeploy our last ambassador. We'll send all three. We're going to make one last petition with the Grand Marshal's government and try and get on better terms before this this begins to just go out of control and we have to begin militarizing like we did in the World Wars. Our species, it's been hundreds of years, but we'd, we'd still remember those wars. They'd be in every history class. No one here would be looking for this again. Fucking hell. Okay. I think we have a very good admiral at least. I know they're damaging relations on purpose. Yeah, they are. Would the military be pushing for mil more military buildup? Yeah, but we don't have the we don't have the fleet size for it. We don't have the capacity. That's why we're building these anchorages, though. Which we will need to build a building for actually on New Vegas as soon as we can. Which we wouldn't be willing to replace quite yet. Our first building on Hades is going to be a fortress. We need a fortress on Terra Nova too. Probably the naval command post I'm thinking on Terra Nova. We'll build the naval command post on Earth, and we'll build a naval office on Terra Nova. Yeah, we are going to start need a building, building up here. Thugs Officer Saldana has made some troubling finds on Distal 1A. The planet's megaflora is not only widespread and gargantuan in proportion, but also predatory. Various species of carnivorous plants rest patiently on its surface, releasing aromatic lures into the air and waiting for their prey to come near. Sensitive tendrils on the terminus of the planet at least register the approach of animals, resulting in the plant snapping shut. So basically a planet full of giant uh, Venus flytraps, but more aggressive. That's terrifying. So Donna warns that any future colonists will have to steer clear of these predatory plants as they appear more than capable of trapping a lone adult human. So they're giant. Unfortunate. A lot of very hostile worlds we're finding here, honestly. Construction complete. What would the lower class look like if they're extreme elitist laborers in the military? As grunts, something like that, I would imagine. We got like a, like avian covenant basically is what we got here.
Imagine trying to tell other alien species about the Greystone Mountain. <laughs> they wouldn't believe us. There's no way they'd believe us. They'd be like, that's a fun story. Anyway, there's no way. It's, it's just too crazy. We'd have to probably take them to that planet world, and even there, they might not believe it, you know? Oh, this looks pretty bad. They're pretty big, too. Military techs are taking priority from here on out. Completely. We gotta rush science. We're gonna use science to get out of this. We're gonna need a military president if we go to war too. She she can't lead us in a war. Not what she's made for here. I'm sad to say. Our Dipriati here residents are having a difficult time. That's the, the aquatics. Settling into their new homes on Earth, unfortunately they have had a difficult time integrating into UNE society. I mean, they are living in the ocean and can't go above it. Their neighbors view them with suspicion and mistrust, believing they do not share UNE values. Xenophobic traditions on Earth! Come on, folks, we're better than this. Not surprising, but god damn it. They're just nice ocean people. God damn it. Fucking humans, man. Checks out. Yeah, we're gonna need to really militarize uh, Lineal here. I might even militarize Thalor. Yeah, so we have two stations I gotta go through. They're, they're pretty dangerous here. I don't necessarily expect bad relations with the Napoki. They're elitist but supremacist. I just doubt that they will exist, uh, will ever exist on equal terms. Let's see. Endless stretching planes and soul crystals have been spotted on Esquik Va. The science ship Archimedes, that's Teresa Torres, is in the Esquik system and speculates the world must have. Uh, once been an ocean planet, a planet covered almost entirely in salt water. What happened to all this water is a mystery, however. There's no natural phenomenon that can explain the disappearance of that much water. Something or someone must have removed it. Mildly terrifying. Construction complete. You look at our ships. We're going to want torpedo boats on a lot of them. When we get more uh, more naval capacity, I'm going to build us a bunch more torpedo boats. Those are really important in early game wars. Look, we're going to need some of that. Apparently we can go on a great crusade, though. Our religion will sanctify it. I guess we will call a Christian crusade and we'll call like a Muslim jihad at the same time is what this is. Because <laughs> we're spiritualists. I mean, humanity is pretty religious, right? Obviously. Base straw. He uses the thirsty guy. Is the, is the big ol' alien, real thirsty. Oh yeah, the Hessians for sure. Yeah, apparently the I would imagine the 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 Baltic Sea, the aliens that are living in the Baltic Sea are having problem with their Hessian coastal neighbors. Throwing throwing bombs in the ocean and shit. 
Who's the... We have a commander station? We don't. Must have armies. I made this because we have a lot of crime on New Vegas. We're going to send a commander there. Well, send Gene Silva. Maintain the garrison there. Exactly. Call every type of holy war. All of them. All at once. Every single one. I feel like we could get him behind a... Oh, no. Please tell me it's not a crash. No, we're good. Uh, I think it'd be pretty easy to convince folks of that, though. Let's be honest. I'm getting a lot of lag right now. Pause it for a second here. Oh, good. Anchorages. Naval logistics offices. We gotta expand that fleet. We're up to 39 now so we can build some more. I'm gonna build torpedo boats. What's our composition of our fleet right now, actually? Twenty-six Sun Tzu class. Those are all torpedo boats, I believe, aren't they? Yes, they are. We need Jaegers. Let's make a new fleet. Secondary fleet. Get construction on that. Leave the game in case of crash. The economy's not looking great either, but a lot of it's just gonna have to go into the military for a little while here. Until we're safer. Anomaly detected. The red dwarf is much older than any star yet surveyed. Over 12 billion years old. Whoa. Yeah, we gotta research that. Well, improving relations pretty quickly here. Maybe we can turn this around. Like I said, Athena Montalupo is not the type to, to, to go against diplomacy unless we're in an act of war. So we're going to keep doing it. If we get a, a warlike leader in the future, we might change our relationship with him. But with her, I think she's pretty clear cut on how she'll deal with it. every alien species. That'd be a great system for some training exercises when our feet gets bigger here. As we get a naval building on New Vegas, we'll be able to utilize those. Oh my god, we can rebuild it? No way. Holy fuck, we can rebuild the fucking mining facility. 50 minerals, 15 uni, 5 rare crystals. Is that happiness? Something 10% for the whole empire. For only 10 energy. Oh my god. It's an asteroid drilling facility. It's an abandoned semi-mega structure in the system. Let me find it. Where's that fucker at? There it is. Been abandoned for quite a while. Hey, there's a bit of danger turning this thing on and rebuilding it, of course. We've had nothing but a hostile dealings with those mining droids, and it could be connected to that. But the resources in this system are massive. It's just covered with rare minerals. Yeah, we gotta we gotta turn that the fuck on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're rebuilding that baby. 
We're gonna need a lot more minerals for the future. Let's sell some of them. I know they're worthless, but still. Buy some more food off the private market. Some more consumer goods off the private market. We're chilling. Yeah, risk, risk it. We've been not very risk averse, have we? So far. Primordial star. Broad is absolutely ancient. It must have been formed less than 2 million years after the Big Bang and therefore predates our galaxy itself, having presumably been captured in its gravity eons ago and eventually forming planets and moons of its own. Most incredible is the fact that being a low mass dwarf star with a convective interior, it likely has more than a trillion years left in its lifespan. Whatever fate has in store for the UNE, the star will outlive us all. Wow, that's a lot of physics research too. Big find! We should make a planetary station on the moon with a construction ship if we have it locked in tech. Can we do that? Let me go look. Hey, pretty cool. We'll be able to terraform Mars at some point in the future, too. We can build habitats? Oh my god, we could build moon habitats. I didn't realize we could do this. We should build a moon habitat though. What is planetary stations do? Uh, can we also build orbital rings? Isn't that a thing with the DLC? I think we need the tech for it though. Nope. No, fuck. No. You, you do you. Keep keep working on what you're doing. We don't have any construction ships nearby, so we'll need to build another one. But when we get the alloys, that's actually pretty big, so. Yeah, we'll work on this. Construction. You need a tech for orbital rings, but it's so worth it. Yeah, it looks really cool as well. Sensors have picked up unusual emissions coming from deep within TA-722 uh, system. A very large abandoned station surrounded in dangerous debris seems to be orbiting a seemingly uninteresting planet. Perhaps something might be salvaged from this. Space Where's the Sojourner at? Oh, way out there. A deep pressurized station. Beautiful system. It's a huge space station. Jesus. Interesting. Something's something. We're gonna find something interesting in that station. We're headed that way too. Research complete. All right. Although we need to build that uh, habitat on the moon. Before we do that, we need to militarize our border with the uh, hierarchy. Another alien contact. The gamma aliens. Where are they at? In the south. Person Carlos Caseda. He's he's an expert of first contacts at this point. We got Starholds too, and let's get cruisers. That's huge. Oh man, the cruiser drop is probably one of the biggest for like military power. So that could not have come at a better moment and at a better time for us. Big, 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 big. Caught a bit of a break there. Did we fucking colonize this planet? Exploration of TA-722 uh, system is going slower than anticipated due to the discovery of a spectacular polar storm. TA-722-4. Uh, oh, I can't say that number. The storm is perfectly shaped like a hexagon. A very unique pressure and wind process has shaped this nearly endlessly lasting storm into a perfect geometric shape. It's pretty cool. I moved the moon. Sounds fun as fuck. Yeah, we can get carriers too. God damn it, I exited out of that menu. That was important. Um, We did. Okay, yeah, the, the NMS Philippines is headed there. We're fine. 
Just thought that we weren't colonizing it. We made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Ethereum Mon system. For now, we have codenamed them Gamma Aliens until we can find out what exactly they are. Though it is a species, it is an empire, looks like. Ship design looks quite familiar. You can likely put more stations on Europa and other moons in the solar system. I, true, let's just completely build up a solar system, honestly. That sounds really fun. We'd definitely be down for it. We're going to upgrade uh, and on Homeless Station, but before that we need to upgrade the Lennial Station all the way. So we can have a hard border there with a Twax Star. They don't hate us. They just don't like us very much. We're trying to repair that. We need another commander. Hades just got founded, by the way, I believe. Let's see. We're going to promote Gene Silva, and then we're going to send Costas, obviously, to Hades. Was it Hades? We're going to give Celine Montalupo. Uh, a bit of, bit of, bit of corruption here, for being honest, but, you know, she's capable enough. We're gonna give Celine Montalupo the governorship of Hades. Give her a bit of an actual trial by fire here. Trial by hail. Something like that. Alright, probably fortress. A stronghold. That's what we want. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after the, uh, the colony ship full of military personnel landed on Hades, they spent over a year fighting off fucking arachnids and have built themselves a rudimentary military complex next to a large river. It looks like we settled down by a little bit of waves from all the caves and the extreme amount of arachnids, but it's going to be a bit of a rough start here. First thing we're going to build is a stronghold, basically a fortress building around our main complex so that we can stay away from the dangerous inhabitants of the planet. And I'm also going to send our our main army forces there as well. We have seven armies that we made on Terra Nova during the Crystalline Catastrophe. And we're going to embark them. And we're going to send them to Hades, which is going to be the new hub for the uh, the Marines and Army of the UNE. Land them on Hades. Oh, yeah. Who wants to live forever? The food energy situation is uh, bad. Need to work on that. I know. We're chilling for now, though. What's good role play without a little bit of mismanagement of resources? Come on, now. Good on jobs. We're good on housing. I'm going to actually upgrade the naval command post now, I think. More naval jobs. Only New Vegas is growing too. We're up to two pops there. There's a lot of those mining droids over there. Those are habitable planets. Those are terraformable planets. Oh, well, they're right on our border now, too. Look at that. But we need to take this system, and we need to take that star. Because if we get past it, we can take those really nice worlds over there. We don't want the, the hierarchy to take those. The public has been informed about a potential first contact scenario with the Ethereumon system, where the presence of an unidentified spacecraft was registered. Early data suggests that this vessel is capable of hyperspace travel Originates from an alien civilization. Where are you new? Carlos, I believe. You, you've, you've steered us good so far, mostly. We need this system, but our fleet's not strong enough to take it. We need more alloys. We need more everything. We might want to think about a militarist. Um, 
What are they called? Tradition after this, to be fair, folks, here. It's uh, looking like we may have a very hostile galaxy in our hands. System Pro complete. System Pro complete. We'll use the Adriatic to build a habitat on the moon. As we get the alloys. So we probably want to get this. If we can get these choke points to go out to other parts of the galaxy, that'll be huge. So I'm gonna send them that way. Lost this leveled up. He's a mil he's a marine commander, so I'll give him carefulness. We'll launch our next agenda, which is uh, what's the name of it? Infinite opportunities. So it'll increase uh, happiness across the empire. This would make sense. We're using all of our technology to create new jobs, uh, massive amounts of wealth and expansion. All this obviously set to the back, uh, the backing of our very militaristic contact. But still, it is a time of great opportunity currently in the United uh, Nations of our systems. Mm, what would we go for next? Probably chart the unknown again, I'd say. Yeah. Science government. Exploration focus, even with the situation, for sure. We'll do that. I really recommend getting the energy to uh, plant and building from tech to sort out your energy issue. Sure, if it, if it makes sense, I'll do that. Carlos Armstrong of Cuba to be your next admiral. Sounds good. Remind me when we get one, though, because I'm not going to replace any of them. They're all... All the current admirals actually have backstories written by people, so I'm not going to replace any. Aryan society encountered. Go back to regular music for a bit here too. Game played that by the way. We detected the presence of a pre-FTL, another one species on uh, TA-7221. That's that station with that destroyed uh, space station, depressurized space station. They currently seem to be experiencing the equivalent of the Renaissance. Having recently left the medieval age behind them, scientific knowledge is spreading rapidly and the armies of their petty kingdoms are equipped with crude gunpowder-based projectiles. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? Let's take a look. I love pre-FTL species. They're always interesting. Palaces. Dwellings. Very hierarchical. Usual formations. Very tough planet. Geometric oddities. Lots of ore, fungal forests. Nobility. Uh, authoritarian, xenophobic industrialists. Guys, why aren't all these species like Star Trek? Why are, why are they so angry and mean? We've got xenophobic, authoritarian, feudal renaissance. This is, this is like HRE Europe right now. It's killing each other for fun. All, all agricultural. Surfs everywhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Let's uh, let's keep our eye on them. They got a ways to go before they got space weapons, but I don't think we'd like them if they got them. Fuck. This will take a decade or two. Hopefully, we're gonna meet some really friendly aliens in the south that we can cooperate a bit more with here. The game selects the galaxy with opposites stuff as you. Does it actually? I did not know that. Is that a real thing? Like with generation? Wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. Unfortunate. It's not very live, laugh, love of paradox, I have to say. Disappointing. Two hundred more alloys is what we need.
We're gonna sell some artifacts. I'm gonna celebrate diversity too. We've gotten a bit of xenophobic militarist attraction recently. Let's, let's try and change that with, you know, like a world fair for all the discovered alien artifacts. We'll do that. I have some more food with that money. Mildly impoverished government right now. We should take their planet and exile them. That'd be really rude and not at all the, the uni vibe. But I agree with you in theory. Oh lord, they moving. They did it because people kept complaining that the game was too easy and not enough conflict was happening. I personally would prefer just purely randomized. All the like the fucking warlike paradox players, man. I mean, that's fine, but sometimes people just want to vibe. Whoa, we got the research insults and linguistics. Oh man, these texts are cool. Gene crops would be pretty important right now. Grand research, oh God, so many good options. Gene tailoring, naval capacity. Oh, don't do this to me, Stellaris. Don't do this to me. These are some hard decisions. Fuck. We're gonna hold off on these because we will always have them ready to go. So they're not, they won't just disappear with the, with the fucking dice rolls. Gene crops. I'm thinking research initiative, given who's in charge. I'm not always gonna choose the like the most needed meta research. I'm gonna choose them off of who's in charge of research and our president. And they will not always make the right choice, I think. Seems logical to me. Yeah. She wouldn't do the others. The military would be telling her she's making a mistake, and she probably is, but she wouldn't do it. We also got a new civic point, by the way, so we can embrace a new civic if we get some more unity, I think we need. Yeah. Okay. We can do it right now if we want to. Oh, man. This is a tough one. We need food? Yeah, we do, but it's not a crisis. We've got private private groups to do that. Y'all are sounding like a bunch of fucking people living in Lenin, Russia right now. All right, folks. Um, this is something you want to pay attention to. We're about to have a massive vote right now. So, we can reform our government to include another civic. We could wait on it. But given already what's happened, I think there's some that would make a lot of sense. I'm just going to kind of go through them, and then we'll, we'll decide on a couple to vote on here. Let's find some that make some sense. I don't think, I don't think naval traditions... I could see Byzantine bureaucracy with how much the uni government has expanded. That could theoretically make sense. Mining guilds could make a lot of sense due to basically, you know, all the powerful corporations which have been pushing colonization really just for mining. Parliamentary system makes sense, but we've already got it. I mean, it would represent it well, I guess. Avid explorers, for sure. Yep. Peacekeepers? Being naturally open to alien cultures to civilization, nevertheless, does not like this use of military force. That makes sense. When necessary, however, they prefer to reduce any potential conflict to a minimum. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I'll throw that in there. Let me get a poll up here. Peacekeepers. I'm going to throw in there Avid Explorers because we have so fucking many of them. And that one makes a lot of sense. Shinkult. The Omnissiah knows all. Free market. We're capitalists. That makes sense. Our mining guilds, I think I already said. I'll have that. We need one more. Starfleet Academy. No, but we already have one. Hmm. Let's 
see it. Starfleet Academy, I'll do for the final one. Those are all really good and interesting. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a five minute pull and uh, take a chance to uh, get some more uh, coffee as well. So I'll be right back. We're looking. Peacekeepers and Starfleet Academy following by just a little bit. That goes almost done. Peacekeepers. 
I mean, we already have been pretty interventionist, right? With everything we've done, especially the pre-FTL species. So that does check out. We're gonna be playing American World Police in space here, folks. That's what this is looking like. We need to make a knockoff uh, U and E fuck yeah song here. I think that's the plan. Being naturally open to alien cultures, a civilization nevertheless does not neglect its use of military force when necessary. However, they prefer to reduce any potential conflict to a minimum. We can do defense of the weak. Defensive and guarantee independence packs does not cost influence to maintain. That's fucking wild. Imperialist faction provide additional influence for these packs. Federation naval contribution increase. Monthly influence during defensive wars, but more expensive claims. Sounds to me. Cool. All right. We're peacekeepers. That was a very close vote, though. Almost Starfleet Academies. Oh. All right. Open there. Fleet needs to be bigger. Special project complete. Oh no, that just that just broke our our government, I believe there, folks. The Minister of Defense. Uh, do we, no, we just reshuffle our government. We'll put it back to how it was. We'll do uh, Minister of State, obviously, Head of Research, and then uh, I can do a different one now if we want. Probably be Ambassador, given everything though. It just reset things. We'll put we'll put our whole government back. Potato Yami, didn't I? Solomon Taurus, and then... Oh, no, I think we gave it to him. Yeah, no. We're good. Change of position a little bit. All right, we've fully, fully surveyed that system of that uh, very scary FTL species in that space station. Definitely high on, high on our list to go to here. Is this a dead end? I can't tell. Let's go. Something's going down out there. A lot of cop cars. We'll send him north as well. We have finally actually run out of unity here, folks. So we gotta keep a bit of an eye on that. Oh, sorry, influence. We're gaining it pretty fast, though, at five. That's a lot. But we've been using a lot of it. We can almost build the... Put that on the moon as well. A large, mostly sealed cavern system has been found on GN9084. A small drone of ours had penetrated the surface of this world to do a mineral and soil study stumbled upon this cave system by accident. To all our surprise, it is filled with life. A sprawling, self-sustained ecosystem has managed to survive here. This world must be have supported a much wider a variety of life at some point in its life cycle. Okay, cool. Anyway, moon base. Do we have enough or do we need a bit more? Should be able to. Get into this. Can only house habitat specific buildings. But it's not large enough to build habitation habitats. To build on a planet with mineral energy or research deposits. Special districts will be available. Us this we can get some upgrades. Who's not the president? Hmm. Doesn't have any resource deposits. So it just, it only, I think, would have people there, right? Not an asteroid, though, is it? Wouldn't we want to build a planetary station? But I mean, the moon's not a planet either. We'll build an asteroid habitat and just see what it does. Might as well. It's not too expensive. I've never seen this before. I think it's one of the big mods, so we'll kind of... We'll do it and go from there. The Gamma aliens appear eager to establish communications with us. Oh, thank goodness. 
Having sent a large audio and visual transmission, they appear to offer the key to translating their language. What's System bro. Our experts are confident we will be able to use this to learn to communicate with them soon. Of course, we will have to trust them and their offered translation are not misleading, and that we will be able to reliably interpret information presented from a surely vastly different experiential context. Go. All right. They seem to be for, they're receptive. They're avians. They're receptive. Let's go. I'm excited. These guys seem nice. We've met two aliens. Neither of them are the player made ones. <laughs> there's a lot of alien. There's a lot of avians in this galaxy for some reason. I know why. Fucking bird people everywhere. Oh yeah. Hyper relays. That's a game changer, folks. With the mods on, our, our fleets move a lot slower. Yeah, we're gonna go for hyper relays. That's huge. Early, too. 43 years in. Must be built on an asteroid. So it has to. Okay, it does have to be a planetary station. I see. So we need a bit more. That's fine. All right, space spirits. It looks like it. They seem friendly. A good sign. All the birds. Birds are simply the best body plan for intelligent life. I mean, flying is pretty good, clearly, right? Small brains tend tend to be the case, though. Space trains. Yeah, hyper relays are fun. Oh no, what are we out of? Consumer goods. Fine, we'll buy. We'll, we'll make emergency production more playstations. We're funding our economy right now with rare crystals. Listen, the private market is intelligent. If there's not enough PlayStations, clearly people aren't paying enough for them. So that's 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 on the private market. Super good shortage as fuck. Going south. We'll keep going east. Vote to actually fix our deficit problems. That's not going to be a vote. I'm not going to accept that one, Rolvis. Can someone refund his points? If you want an economic leader, you got to vote for an economic leader. I'm not going to prioritize it as Athena Montalupo. I'm not saying she's incompetent and just doesn't care about the economy, but it's not going to be her focus. You, you don't get that. We don't get a scientific leader and get to build a robust economy. It's not going to happen. So if you want to, if you want to, if you want me to focus on the economy, you got to elect uh, someone else who will do that. That's not her focus, and that's not what I will focus on with her in charge. Nice try, though. Let me know if uh, you get your points refunded. If not, I'll go do it. Anomaly detected. First survey scans show abnormal readings from the outer atmosphere of JE6482. The science team is eager to do a second and more thorough scan of the source of their readings. Absolutely. Last one. Almost have enough. Not quite. Let's go ahead and also upgrade our capital to an Empire Capital Complex, I think it's called. System Capital Complex. They used to give influence. I don't think they do anymore. That's mainly jobs. She's a politician, though, and people want it. Sure, but, like, she's not running the economy into the ground. It's just not prioritized. That's how I see this right now. Look at the minerals we're making that we have used to expand things in our systems. We're making good alloys. You know, our energy and consumer good deficits are there, but they're not, like, apocalyptic. They're just not. Economies don't tend to be perfect. We don't have, like, a pure private market system in Stellaris, so I'm not going to go balance things and get us in big surpluses with her. Just not what I'm going to do. Yeah, like science is the priority right now. It's just across the board what we've been spending our resources on and all of our, you know, uh, what's the word, executive priorities and powers. Here we go, folks. Great goo, that's a very important one, too. God damn it. Our efforts to decipher the signals picked up by the Gamma Aliens have paid off, and we have finally made a breakthrough. 
While our mastery of their language may not be complete, we have managed to successfully open diplomatic channels of a civilization we now know to be the state of Gabazol. An alien empire is hailing us. I scared. I scared for a bit there, folks. Okay. Well, my friends, we are the state of Gabazol. A nation built on principles of peaceful coexistence. Ah, oh. I, I, I think our ambassador is probably having a tear rolling down his, on his cheek right now after dealing with the other species we met. Prime Minister Plume of Orange, the current head of our government, has expressed a sincere hope for a lasting friendship between our two peoples. Zestful orders. They seem fucking lovely. Pacifist, fanatic egalitarian, industrialist, Cooperative. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves our first space friends. Let's go. Love is friendship. Set to music. We'll go look at them in a minute. We got a, we got a big find here. Impressive structure litter a small area on the planet of Belusia Akali 1, practically begging for some archaeological work. Which we will do. Where are they? And how big are they? Okay. Aquifier preference, natural physicist, resilient genius, oh boy, efficient metabolism, rooted and hemophilia. So they're a very intelligent but very kind of weak species. Moral democracy. I, I think there'd be a lot of clapping and celebration going on in the uh, in the president's offices today for the UNE. Oh man. This is the species that Solomon Torres imagined when he first ran for president and gave speeches about the safety of space. This this was the people he was imagining. They didn't come around in his presidency, but we found them in the end. Oh, embassy immediately, immediately. We're going to reroute Carlos Caseta to be a permanent ambassador there. We probably should keep all of our two ambassadors up north, though. Are we actually making any progress? No, literally not. It's not going up anymore. It's not getting worse, so we'll keep our two diplomats there, and we'll send Carlos to speak with Prime Minister Plume. Great name. Show our appreciation. We're gonna we're gonna transfer some uh, some minerals to them. Expand their systems. They're they're great people. We'll give them a nice little little opening gift here. We got plenty of them. No, no, nothing on the table. Actually, if they give communications, that'd be cool. We'll give a gift and sensor links. That's a good deal. That's a great deal. Lost prototype ship discovered. Laszlo is ecstatic. After more thorough scans, the anomaly turns out to be a spaceship. Intriguingly, it's one of ours. Our crew recognizes that one of our prototype FTL capable ships thought to be lost on a flight test. Lore wise, we're going to go with this being one of Japan ships before they, they left with the Kibo. Its orbit is unstable and the ship is slowly descending into the atmosphere. It seems to be undamaged, but energy readings are minimal. We received no response to our hailing. In order to be able to further investigate what has happened to the ship and its crew, its orbit must be stabilized first. And Laszlo has a plan. I could go into a museum somewhere, so fuck yeah, we'll do it. Situation log updated. I got distracted. Let's let's go build Luna Station. Oh, we have a moment here. Planetary Station. All right, we've begun construction of that for habitation of the moon. Let's stabilize it. guarantee their independence. We are peacekeepers after all. We're off of them a non-aggression pack. Man, we're just moving. Carl Carlos is having the time of his life right now. He's been well received. 
by the avian species in the capital is getting to experience their amazing culture and cities and they're just very friendly people and they know that we're very friendly people too so far and just agreement after agreement is getting signed here after communications keep going back and forth between uh earth and earth and the system so hell yeah our observation post on k 7514 has detected an illegal settlement on the planet's surface it appears to be some kind of outpost set up by human smugglers and other criminal elements of the UNE. We're gonna have to go raid them. Looks like our commanders are gonna finally get some experience here. Log updated. Since our initial settlement of Hades, several anomalies in the planet's biosphere have been discovered. That's our uh, the, the headquarters of the UNE Marines and Army. It's that erecting planet. The ecosystem is unstable and not developed according to projected models of a world of this type. Our scientists suspect outside tampering and these suspicions have now been confirmed. A few of our colonists have stumbled upon a large underground terraforming complex that was built thousands of years ago. The equipment was apparently deactivated in the middle of the process leaving the planet's biosphere in its current unfinished state. We supply enough power we should be able to reactivate the machinery. There's no telling what the end result is. Situation That's a little update. sketchy. A wee bit sketchy. We don't know if they're terraforming it to be more like our worlds. It could be completely the opposite, you know? That's for a sensor link, too. That's always better than communications. If they will give it to us, they will. Great people. Great friendly people. Big fans. Spaceborne life forms encountered. As the science crew approaching JU-648, they came to the realization that it's uh, many times brighter than it should be. Research that. They're not that big, actually. They're really not. They've got only one planet? Really? Yeah, only one planet. Gavis. A lot of people and a lot of crime there, too. Mm, a true democracy, if I've ever seen one. It's a lot of criminal jobs. Oh, man. How big is their fleet? Not bad. It's more than ours, though. I mean, we do have four times their worlds. Not a powerful space-going species, but a very friendly one, so that's all that matters. I will not try and take too many of these systems to, to kind of give them some more. I think we'll go up to Fuwei, something like that. We don't want to encroach too much on their territory. No reason to make them weaker than they need to be. What are we fucking missing? Um, consumer goods shortage. Almost done with the shortages. Immigration treaty. I don't think we'd rush into that. We can't do any treaties with them yet. We gotta get to positive relations, which we are almost at. Not quite. Speaking of diplomacy. Nope. They're damaging relations right now. That's what they're doing, I think. Yeah, that is a dead end actually up there. That harm somehow too. Oh, that's the FTL vessel we found. Like the really old one from like early, it, it would be a Japanese design from back in the day, but it's reusable It's a science ship. That's cool. Not that we don't already have way too many scientists here. And we could pick up more. What's our unity growth right now? Blocked by my camera, by the way. Not good. All going into leaders. That's why we haven't really gotten as many traditions as we normally would have. But this is the most important era for scientists. Block it. Let's promote someone. If we can. And we can.
If you want to lead, lead a rename, this is the time for it, by the way, folks. We got a new scientist. We're gonna we're gonna promote Adriana Longfield unless someone else wants another name. And we are going to send her. I think probably to work on some of these uh, some of these things we haven't. We yeah we still have an excavation site. We'll send her to that. Get her. Artifact collector. And intuition. Beautiful. You remind me of the Federation from Star Trek. Vambi, we've got some similarities, but there are also a lot of big differences. Like, we, we intervene very heavily in pre-FTL species and stuff like that. We're, we're a little high and mighty, but we're not that high and mighty. We, uh, we caused a, a, a species to become radically authoritarian by intervening, and then we voted to, to not stop doing that. So, we've got some big differences. I think it's safe to say. I missed this. Did Sardinia become the only power during Hoi 4? No. Uh, we won the World War III, though. Which was fought against the Japanese, the 532nd International Faction, and mega superpowered Nazi Germany. Won the war, basically. For the UN after. What's up, Limpari? Instruments have detected internal fluctuations of plasma on a massive scale. The crew is having a hard time getting detailed readings due to the gravitational interference emitted by these fluctuations. And they will have to get closer to the star to know what's happening. You know why the music keeps cutting in and out and doing this shit? It's because of YouTube's fucking attempts to stop uh, ad blockers. Because I, I have an ad blocker on. And it's well known right now. They're actively putting in place things to fuck with you when you have them on, which I understand. But if you're wondering why the music keeps cutting out, it's not my internet. It's the ad blocker I have on. Massive plasma vortices. Our science ship has observed the most violent and massive plasma vortices ever spotted in a star. The phenomenon is generating extreme waves of radiations. The Drake Shield supported their assault. Laszlo announced that the star will possibly explode in a supernova before the next millennia. The crew has collected some exciting data that will have an important impact on physics research. Deeper. Many UNE citizens are fascinated at the discovery of the state of Gavazul. That's the avians, the friendly ones we met. A new highly advanced scene of species. News outlets are abuzz with speculation about the Jaskavasi, and the population begged to be able to learn more. Inspired by this wave of enthusiasm, uh, someone, unnamed, has approached governmental officials with ambitious plans to reach out to the Gavazul authorities and propose a cultural exchange so that humans and Jaskavasi can learn to understand each other better. If the state of Gavazul agrees, several private starships will take a group of humans to the state of Gavazul, where they will spend months living among the Jaskas. Gavazi. Gavazi? Yeah. With the state of Gavazul reciprocating in kind. Should we propose such an exchange? You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. Absolutely. Friendly avians who have a similar government to ours. Well, there's, there's no downside here. Not one. Eden for a guy upon it. Gotcha. Sounds good. We were not able to stabilize the orbit of the FTL prototype before it sank into the atmosphere of the gas giant and was destroyed. Shit. That is unfortunate. What? Come on! We were getting along so well. We are not interested in a cultural exchange. Yeah, you do. You want to watch MTV? Come on now. It's fine. We did the relationship of equivalent of asking to move in with our new girlfriend after a month. It, it's probably just too much for them. So I, I get that. That's fine. We'll take it slower. Well, we'll take them out to some more dinner dates, you know. We'll go to the movies. We'll go do some hiking. We'll, we'll, we'll build this up. And then we'll ask to move in. It's got to wait a little bit. Understandable. We have much to learn from one another human. We propose the creation of a research agreement between our empires. All right. They're down for a research exchange. I'm down for that, too. Absolutely. What about our current president? I'm, I'm sure she had one of her happiest days ever here. Athena Montalupo, the technocrat herself. If Tommy K was in Stellaris and not a, all right, and, and a woman, I think that's about what we've got for our president here. The initial observations show that the shaft is almost entirely filled with a high energy radioactive sludge. It was likely a dumping site for another civilization's industrial pollution. Kane Adeyami refuses to advance further, citing her lack of faith in our <laughs> hazardous material protection technologies ability to save her and her team from this crime against nature. Oh boy. That's fine. Don't need to be killing anyone for it. 
We made... Did we meet more aliens? Did. Up in the north. The Zeta aliens. Okay. Alright, we'll send uh, Ursula Sis Siska. We'll send her. Which I think means our relationship will go down with the Twack Star. Let's see. No, it's just not improving, period. The ending of your Game of Thrones left much to be said desired. Fix it. <laughs> System pro. We, we tried HBO! The Wire was good, but Game of Thrones, no, no, no. We don't need a cultural exchange. We're good. Thank you, though. Maybe maybe when you start to produce better better TV shows. Shatarian civilization encounter. We have detected the presence of an alien civilization on KE-472. Uh, e they appear to be in the early space age, as evidenced by the many primitive satellites orbiting their homeworld. Their nation states are on the path towards joining together in a global government. Wow, they're on the footsteps. Please don't be xenophobic and militarist. It is likely only a matter of time before they venture beyond their world and join the galactic community. Where are they at? Construction complete. I'm sorry, what? The Twack Star and the Gavin Soul have a migration treaty? It's because we didn't call them out for being bitches the first time. That's what this is. We should have called them fucking bitches the first time, and we'd be good. Fucking avians, man. That's no excuse. Commercial pact. Absolutely. Let's get the trading and a defensive pact. Fuck yeah. Now, where are those pre-sentients? There they are. Odd cloud shapes hyper complex biome. Oh, I bet. I was in crisis. It's like America in modern 21st century. Theocrat. Seem very similar to us in culture. Oh, nice. Spiritualist, xenophile, competitive industrialist. That's that's a solid species. I know what the fuck's gone wrong in their planet's planning, but it seemed nice enough. Leading to another poll, ladies and gentlemen. They are they are a species we really like, and our recent voting in the in the parliamentary assembly suggests that we'd probably do this. We know their name yet. I don't think we do. We do. Shatirians. Shatirian. Remember, they're almost in space. They'll detect us pretty soon regardless, so full time. Arctic preference, adaptive natural physicist, remote telepathy, unruly and irrational. Be nice, though. They're going to probably get cut off by us, though. No, that's a dead end. Okay, wow, they're already cut off by us. We won't go, be able to go south anymore, will we? We gotta get that choke point. I don't think we get that in time. Nope. Yeah, this is this is the end of the line for us in the south, I think. We gotta hope that we get further north. Which also looks like we might be reaching our edge. This isn't bad, but like, I wish we'd gotten a bit more. That's how Stolars goes, though. If we fight these fuckers, we can take their land. Don't we have an Arctic world somewhere? Yeah, uh... I think Weck originally was before we terraformed it and fucked it up. They're telepathics. They're ugly, don't reveal. Yeah, the face reveal didn't go well, I guess. They're not that bad. They just look kind of weird. Not the most attractive. We're not getting Mass Effect fuckable aliens here, but that's okay. Need more unity. I'm just being impatient. We're getting it pretty quickly, actually. Commercial pact between the Twack Star and the Gavazul. Maybe our good relations will, will make us improve with the Twack Star. I'm getting worse. We now have a defensive pact and commercial agreements. We will begin trading actively with the Gavazul. Do we offer them a migration treaty, though? I'm gonna say no. I don't. I don't think we're ready for that as a species quite yet. We'll open our borders, but we're not gonna do a migration treaty. 
we have our first really man we moved quick on that didn't we that was like lesbian relationship level of like quick moving you know but they seem nice they seem really nice equivalent fleet to us equivalent tech and a pathetic economy so just a lot smaller really more than anything else Jessica Voss. I like them. I think they're nice. We're getting Star Trek aliens with those ugly guys. Yeah, they, they are pretty Star trek -y, aren't they? Like the nice world where they land and have some character development story, which isn't really fucked up. And goddamn food stockpiles. We do need to look at the economy a bit more in the future. But again, not the biggest priority. All right, Lionel Station needs to be militarized. We'll build uh, torpedo batteries and uh, disruption chambers. Risa Torres can get a new upgrade. Well, we all know where she's going in the end, so we'll go with Champion of the People too. She's very, very well liked. Need more people. Simple as that. Are there any worlds we can colonize right now? I don't believe so. Look, there's worlds we can terraform, but we don't have the economy to get the energy surplus for it. I'd say. Only the one we're currently colonizing, and WEC three we're terraforming again, which gets done uh, in. Around five years. After we screwed it up the first time with that event. I hope we can keep with those modifiers at the least. Yeah, Vizola has opened their borders to us as well. And we have Hyper Relays. Hyper Relays form a chain of structures built outside the gravity well of systems, allowing fast travel from relay to relay rather than requiring transit to establish space lanes. Uh, hyper lanes. The problem with uh, these that suck is in wars, uh, your enemy can use them, so that's the one downside, but they are so convenient for everything else. They're planning a research initiative, for sure. We're about to get two really good science uh, researches, and we're also about to get cruisers, so our civilization is about to bump up a level here, I think. I love trains, too. What's up, Linus? How are you? We're gonna contact them. Alrighty. Let's go say hello. Amazing! Visitors from the stars. Well, this is certainly unexpected. You've caught us at a bit of a disadvantage. Like, even their, their flag's just a spaceship. Greetings, friends. Secretary Tief Den Fum. Fragmented nation states. They're trying to unify, but they haven't yet, which was us really not too long ago, actually. They're not too far behind us at all. Fuck, we need more ambassadors than we currently have. I'm gonna withdraw Carlos Caseda. We have, we have a very good working relationship already with the Gavazul. I'm gonna redirect him to, to, to make first contact, second contact, I guess, and start working with the Shatirian government here. Government. Governments. They don't like us too much. Are there any decisions on Hades to deal with those spiders? No, I don't think so. I'll, I'll check, though. Oh, what? Oh, there's something else, though. Artificial feeding campaign. Feed the native arachnid inhabitants with pheromone-based food in order to placate them. So they'll be friendly. All we need is 10,000 food. We can domesticate the arachnids. Who wouldn't want a 15-foot tall arachnid in their backyard? They're like dogs, you know? Messier and larger and 
their, their bites are kind of poisonous, but it's fine. We were literally about to get spider dogs. That's fucking cool. I'd have a 15 foot tall spider dog, maybe. Actually, I don't know. I fucking hate spiders. Not happening for a while with our food crisis, though, is it? A really valuable world, though, not gonna lie. I would hope not. That's bestiality. They're not intelligent arachnids. They're just arachnids. But then we can't train and shoot them anymore, can we? I mean, we established this place to, to train against them. You know, we could we go lower wise that we domesticated a bunch of them, but a bunch more are feral and, and horrible, you know, like wolves. And those are the ones we go fight and shoot, not the nice ones. Just get mature on top and bang army. Not so much sure they're being domesticated or we're just granting them tribute. Yeah, that could be. Well, I mean, that's what we did with wolves back in the day, right? You know, kind of. I don't know. A little bit more mixed. Tough to say. I think it'll be probably like a cat situation, right? Very similar to cats in that they will tolerate us because we give them things, but they will always see themselves as better and are probably still a little dangerous. I mean, if cats were bigger, like the size of lions, could you have one as a pet? Yeah, people do. Can they still fuck you up? Absolutely. Hmm. Maybe we, we can like breed them to be really small. We can have like Chihuahua arachnids, which are like the size of a dog, you know? That's more reasonable. They want a migration treaty. That's a parliament decision. I'm gonna make a poll. And skip this song. Kind of boring. I am paused, right? I am not. Normally this would be a presidential decision, but since this is like the, the precedent for like migration treaties with non-human worlds or nations, obviously parliament vote. Well, there was three minute long poll for that one. And I'm gonna go to the bathroom really quickly, so I will be right back.
Come back. We date them for the Cold War. We, well, potentially. They're friends with our enemies, so not enemies. They're friends with the species that are causing the Cold War, though. So, if anything, I mean, further relations with them could potentially be really good for our diplomacy, right? They could be speaking highly of us to those fucking warlike birds, and maybe we can get on somewhat of at least a neutral relationship with them. Okay, so we will accept this then. Also, I've been streaming for apparently four hours already. Well, almost. So. We will accept. After a vote in Parliament, you and E, Parliamentary Assembly, uh, the vote was pretty overwhelmingly too, um, just decided, I mean, I think they'd be really well liked by humans, right? Again, you gotta remember, this stuff doesn't exi exist in a vacuum, right? The holonet's a thing. It's like, you know, the internet's everywhere. We know a lot about them already, because we'd, we'd have contact. I would assume they would have something similar, or at least all, you know, the pictures from the diplomatic conferences, interviews with them. I mean, there'd be a ton of journalists on their homeworld right now. We'd have gotten to know them as a species pretty well. And since they're similar enough to us, we'd like them quite a lot. And would, besides the xenophobes in, uh, in Hess, we'll recommend they don't move there, you know, when they're, when they're migrating. At, at, at the office, you know, where, where we oversee that. The, the Ellis Island of Earth. We'll be like, you know, our planet's great. Just don't, don't go to northern Germany. You'll be fine. On vacation or, or for living, you'll be good. But I think our species would like them a lot. They've got a lot of similar values. Our natural standing is now to involve and to protect other species to a degree. And uh, they also have shown their potential to be friendly with everyone. The only other potentially hostile alien species we have met, they have made friends with. So we'd respect them. I think we'd like them a lot. It's great to me while our current president is advancing us into new ages of technology, she's also forgetting about the needs of our people. Back here. Uh, more districts and area developments need to happen on our new worlds if we wish them to flourish. On that note, how can we truly sustain our military growth if she does not feed our people and gives us cheaper gas? We have food, just not in huge amounts. Food prices would be up, but not like ridiculous. To be fair, a theory could be due to their pacifism, their diplo with the angry birds could be more defensive in nature. German spoken. Yeah, we've met coral aliens, we've met lithoids, we've met hive minds, and then we've met a lot of aliens so far. We can already form a federation with us! If we walked in the offices of Prime Minister Plume right now and offered to form a federation, he'd say yes, but we don't have excellent relations. He's open to the idea. Jesus, man, they are so friendly. I love Solaris games. I don't like the easy one where you're just surrounded by like pacifists and nice people, but I like it when you meet like that early partner in Stellaris, you know, like that civilization of nice people you can work with. Even if you both get like killed by purifiers later in the game, it still is kind of nice to have that first, you know, really friendly space buddies. Unless you're playing the human Terran Empire. Then, I mean, free slaves, right? So, works. Fuck yeah. All right, who got an upgrade? Fritz Wolf Fickelmutt. His tenure as governor of New Vegas has been going very well. And he's, of course, going to be a politician. That man has got his eyes on a particular seat in a particular city near his, uh, near where he grew up. Only one pop on Hades. I don't think we'll get more. I wonder if they're just going to immediately migrate away, too. Might do. Exactly, they can grow with you. What's up, Fuzz? How you doing? Are you looking forward to still being stuck one slot behind me in Football Manager tomorrow? Well, yeah, jobs on Earth, so I'm not going to build anything more. We've already got the naval building, so if we build things on Soul Station, we can actually upgrade them now, too. The first station we're going to upgrade is obviously Lenial Station. Followed by... Probably TA-106, I think we'd want to upgrade next. When we can. Not too shabby. Doing pretty good as well, man. Doing pretty good. Long week, but enjoying Stellaris. Enjoying the weekend. We're chilling. I wish our population was growing quicker, but we didn't get onto worlds very quickly. And after the... Crystalline catastrophe, it's been pretty slow. Readings from KE 4773A show an intricate system of underground tunnels spanning across the entire planet. What could the purpose of the complex be? Well, let's find out. Hmm. 
We can do, I think, another leader policy, too. Summon Villainy on New Vegas. Who wouldn't have thought of that? Time continues to be a problem on New Vegas. An extensive criminal underworld has now taken root on the moon. Some areas have descended into lawlessness and have been taken over completely by criminal organizations. Wow, okay, that's a problem. Fritz, buddy, you gotta get your act together here. Anomaly detected. We can do an anti-piracy attempt here. These are interesting, actually. Oh, there we go. Research focus across the board. We'll do that immediately. Just ups our research for all of our scientists. The public has been informed of a potential first contact scenario in the orb system. It's been the presence of an unidentified spacecraft. That's the one up here still. Oh yeah, that's another empire, folks. I don't think we're gonna get lucky again with another peaceful civilization, so let's see how this goes. Your high time will come to an end on December 2nd when we have Manchester Derby and I beat your ass 6L. I mean, I, I I hope for your sake you do, man, but I gotta say, I, I don't know. This is, this, is a, this is a man city that I've been pretty unimpressed with so far. I think you're gonna, you, you're gonna get Rashforded. Rashforded? Something like that. Looking forward to that game though. Send the Marines, possibly. Well, we know where one of their systems is. Matishi. I think, in the looks of it. Hmm. We'll see. Jesus Christ. We, we keep finding a ma- Oh, hyper relays. No, we don't want that. That's a good system to take there, honestly. We've got all these systems already. I'm going to do a wee bit of metagaming here to see if we can, uh... Do I really want to cut them off? Let's keep going north first. I'd rather us take that territory. I don't want to be a complete dick and just make it so they're stuck completely small like that, so... Try not to. If we start to get a bunch of rare crystals, we can build hyper relays too. Like the whole empire. Is it upkeep? Does anyone know, do Hyper Relays take uh, crystals for upkeep, or is it just initially? Yeah, hell yeah, answer. Yeah, I'm in a man, uh, football manager game with some of the folks over on uh, what was server. It's been good. We've done like three or four sessions so far. I am third as Man United. I made Rashford actually somehow like sh score goals consistently. Of knockoff Holland. What mods are you using? Linus, I'll give you the full list. One second. Got it somewhere. I updated it too because I didn't have all the mods in there. Someone told me. The mod pack is... Just energy. Thank you, Walrus. No, this is single player. It is from the Grand Campaign. I think you've seen parts of that, Linus. I think you caught one or two sessions. It's the Grand Campaign of House Taurus that I played through. This, this game started in 1066, folks. We've gone through a lot. The, the campaign started August of 2022, so it's been going for a while. Did I buy anyone? No. They At the start, they turned on the system where, like, basically you go with the historical transfers, and then you don't get a transfer budget until winter. But, uh, I got some winter, some winter people I want to pick up. In particular, Sun, but Tottenham is owned by a, is played by a player, so I, I don't know if... I can get a reasonable deal with him. I keep offering Chris reasonable prices for Sandro Tonali as well, given he's on uh, leave for the gambling problem, but he keeps denying me. Perfectly reasonable prices, definitely not uh, trying to trying to fuck him or anything. I don't know, man. Newcastle supporters can't be reasoned with. Analysis of the tunnel system found on KE4773A has revealed that it was used by a planetary logistics network covering in transportation and sorting machines capable of distributing goods to every corner of the world in record time. 
the Amazon planet. It seems that minerals retrieved from the tunnels excavated were used as raw material in the production of goods to distribute. There are still many valuables to extract. No trace that the tunnels builders remain. From our investigation, they appear to have come from a civilization that valued equality highly, been on guaranteeing that every material need of their population was met. On the one hand, study of this impressive excavation could yield interesting construction, distribution, and production techniques. On the other, if we were to establish a mining operation, half our work would be already done. Yeah, true. Inspiring idea. Put it to use. We get unity, and we can research global production something. Let me go look for it. Did I actually hyperinflate his value? Yeah, because transfer offers do that, don't they? Fuck. I was only offering 25 million for Tenali, so I don't know why I did that. A society, is it? Yeah, global production strategy. Ministry of production, forge subsidies, industrial subsidies. Good tech. Definitely want to pick that up in the future. All right, folks, next traditions. What are we thinking here? I'm gonna scroll down and show you them all. I've got a lot of mods on, so we've got a lot of extra traditions. I'm gonna just look at some of them and then we'll put up a poll. You guys get to decide as well for this one. I think the fourth tradition I'm gonna choose myself, but I'll make this one a poll too. Attitude, our empire can truly uh, prosper under the guidance of strong leaders. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Adaptability to adapt is to survive and surpass diplomacy. The surest way to destroy your enemies is to make them your friends. Domination. If we do not impose our will on others, we're not taking that one, obviously. Expansion. We must expand our civilization to new systems and planets or risk eventual extinction. Harmony. Few things can match the strength of a content populace working towards a common goal. Mercantile. The flourishing of our entrepreneurs paves the path to UNE prosperity. On dimensionality, we should never let things as limits stand in the way of our constructions. Nothing shall impede our rise to marvelous structures. Statecraft, a powerful council allows our empire to be more responsive. I'm throwing that in there. I think that makes a lot of sense already. Addition. Three. What else are unyielding, supremacy, community, that's galactic. Community, which we won't do because we're not there yet. Invention, I'm gonna throw that in as well since we're very scientific focused. Invention. Yielding if we go defensive. We haven't really decided our policy. Like we're gonna be more like diplomacy. Fair. Expansion, I'll throw that in too. One more. Anyone else say anything? I meant to ask you, since we're taking a break for Christmas and New Year's weekends, are you down to extend a session on Sunday a bit? Try to get to uh, January window. No, I'm, I'm streaming tomorrow after, as soon as we're done, actually. You guys are welcome to, but I, I won't be in it, because I'm streaming some Millennium Dawn tomorrow. I'm fine with you guys continuing, but I, I will not be in the game. I'm throwing on yielding. No. Yeah, and yielding doesn't make sense. We're just not that militarized yet, though, I don't think. Well, strong leaders, not authoritarian, as in just having capable people. That's a good one. I'm going to throw an aptitude as well. All right, folks. Well, we'll be up for five minutes. This is a longer one. You can roleplay this and decide as whatever you are roleplaying as, your character if you've had one in the game or anyone else, or you can just choose whatever the fuck you want, your choice. Third tradition. We gotta hit that, that smuggler base. Where is it again? A751. Oh, oh. We've got human smugglers next to the Yeznons that we turned into radical authoritarians. Oh no. All right, well, let's the closest base. That's one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. Oh wait, they're in here now, aren't they?
Fuck it, we're resuming the process. Consequences be damned. We're gonna we're gonna let the terraforming equipment continue. Dangerous, but again, we've been very risky so far. I'm gonna dispatch. We're gonna we're gonna go raid that base. We'll send the entire UNE Marine Corps to go hit that smuggler base over the Yeznon planet. Good trading. They've been shooting spiders for a while. We'll give them some people to shoot. Can't even make robots yet, so that's kind of useless. Politics tradition? Did I include that? I'm not too sure. You're okay with us continuing? Yeah, no, go for it. I, d I just would ask that you wouldn't go forever, like, you know, for five or six hours after. Because that would kind of suck. But if it's for a while longer, just to push that w uh, window, go for it. Absolutely. Making contact with fellow spacefaring species. We should focus on diplomacy if we only prevent war against military dictatorship in the North. In an age of alien contact, we need diplomacy more than ever. I think there'd be a lot of popularity for that. If we had only met the xenophobes and, or not the xenophobes, but the hostile avians, I think this would be a very different conversation. But we've met friendly, good aliens that we can work with, so we, we definitely view diplomacy as a valid option again, properly. Mm, I'm gonna go for integrated cybernetics. The habitability increase is really nice. Especially given we've got some questionable colonies here. Keep going north so we don't get too cut off here, hopefully. Rub eyes, hell yeah. The NMS Fahrenheit's crew is reporting that they have found something spectacular on a Theramon 5. On the surface lies traces of an explorative expedition of another civilization. Left behind are some well-preserved documents and artifacts. The proposed action of Chief Scientist Robert Renford Jr. is to send the text findings to our homeworld for translation. Absolutely. Situation so, log updated. Sounds Systems interesting to me. Hopefully we get Interstellar Sun Tzu here. Upgrade the site of revitalization centers on Earth. There's really just, I guess, all the hospitals and things like that. So much fucking crime. To rapidly evolve the many simple organisms in the world. That's not gonna go well. Yeah, carnivorous flies. Oh man. More aliens. Oh shit, we'll send, um... I want to send Caseta, but we can't. So we'll send uh, Nez instead. That means we won't have a diplomat currently in Twaxstar. It's just not going down. I guess we just can't improve our relations with them anymore. It just be until the January trends for window tops. Yep, sounds good to me. Absolutely. Yeah, Fuzz, you're welcome to shoot an invite for the server if you'd like as well. No issue at all there. The pool looking like diplomacy. By a lot. Wow. Initial readings of the Zeta alien signals left Envoy Ursula Siska bewildered. They seemed to be mainly white noise, devoid of anything that could be recognized as language. For a time, there were even doubts as to whether we were dealing with the utterings of an intelligent species despite the visual evidence of their use of technology. It was only when our researchers experimented with tuning our instruments to detect sounds well outside the normal range frequencies of our ears that patterns indicative of language were detected. Unfortunately, this poses considerable challenges to our quest to be able to understand them, since we will not be able to hear them all without assistance. Yeah, throw mo well, we'll throw money at the problem. Athena Montalupo's uh, general mindset on aliens is such that we would definitely requisition for that. Diplomacy will be our next traditions. Are you? Let's see. There you are. 
The surest way to destroy your enemies is to make them your friends. So by uh, automatically taking it, we can uh, build relations agenda. We can do diplomatic grants for our edicts and all diplomatic influence costs are reduced by 50%, which is incredible. Beautiful. We'll be able to form federations really early too. Oh yeah. All right, we're going, we're going uh, very diplomatic then. Let's check this out. That's what we wanted to do from day one since Solomon Torres promised a peaceful future of space exploration and prosperity. And we have found it in the Gavizel. The public has been informed of a potential first contact on Batnal. It's the same one. We can start to build hyper relays too. Did we build the moon base yet? I swore I started it. Oh, okay. 85%. Taking a while. To be fair, building habitable, like, super domed cities on the moon would take a while and cost a lot. The aborted terraforming process on Hades has finally been completed. After seeding the atmosphere with billions of terraforming nanites, the alien bioengineering machinery has significantly altered conditions on the planet's surface. The ecosystem and climate have both stabilized and new alien biota adapted to the climate has been introduced. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Please not a hell world. System probe complete. Tropical world. That's nice. We can work with a tropical world. Wow, okay, awesome. So the terraforming was completed. It's, it's not a perfect habitat for humans, but we can obviously do very well in tropical. It's way better than like the barren Arctic Arachnid field hellscape that it was. Now that being said, I feel like a tropical world will make the Arachnids breed even more, which is not optimal, but that's fine. We're, we're not there to have a good time. We're there to make soldiers. Hell yeah. And so, yeah, the spiders did survive. They adapted. Yeah, they're, they're working, uh, there's a, a shout out to Prometheus server that Fuzz runs with, uh, I think it's Murph is his name. I've actually never talked to. Um, it's a roleplay server. They are currently doing a football manager game. I'm playing in that. That's on Sundays at, uh, let's see, 10.45 a.m. EST, which uh, is why I don't stream in the mornings on Sunday. I play in those. I don't really want to stream, just kind of want to chill. And then they're starting a CK3, a Game of Thrones campaign in early 2024. So check out that server if you like roleplay. And, uh, yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. What's up, Daniel? Hope you are doing well. Welcome to the Grand Campaign. Find us Robert Renford Jr. on board the science vessel NMS Fahrenheit has made a fascinating discovery on a Thermon 4. The ship scanners are detecting massive quantities of various alloys and chemicals spread across the surface of this world. Wrecks of ships can be seen from a morbid on a truly huge in scale. A titanic battle must have once raged overhead and the world was littered with the rusted skeletons of craft that once ruled the skies. We gotta, we gotta take a look at that, I think. I'm, I'm hearing technologies. That's what I'm hearing there. Technologies. Jesus. Thank you for the gifted subs, Fuzz. Much appreciated, man. Thank you for the, the 10 gifted subs there. Very appreciated. If you think this will get you out of me absolutely clapping Manchester uh, City during the derby, you, 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 gotta, you gotta have another thing coming. I know you're Man City. You guys like to throw that money around, but I'm still gonna kick your ass. I just be warned. That being said, appreciate the subs, man. Very appreciate it. All right, we've got the planetary station. Let's let's see what it's like. Oh, we've built it, and then we have to colonize it after. We can't make districts, so we we could turn it like into probably like a research hub or something, right? If it has growth, we can just build a bunch of like giant research complexes. Or we can industrialize it by building like alloy manufacturing that's interesting actually yeah me too that's the game i'm looking forward to most actually that'll, that'll decide if we get top four i think is there not many hoi four games anymore uh not i'm not in babylon roleplay anymore linus by the way i don't want to talk about that for the hundredth time but uh i may i i'm not i don't run games anymore for multiplayer so if you want them check out prometheus it's a pretty good server Ah, okay, so let's colonize it then immediately, obviously. We will send humans to colonize the moon. Got a low habitability, but it's not the worst. You know we gotta. 
I'm naming this one, folks. I apologize. Luna Base. It just sounds so fucking good in every sci-fi thing you see it in. Oh, I know who we just met. Oh, let's go. As we begin to pick up more and more visual images of the aliens known as the Aeons, it was inevitable that they would eventually be leaked to the wider public. All right, hold on. We need a good song for this. We, we need a badass fucking song for this. We're about to meet some fucking absolute badasses. You know what song I'm going to play for this, actually? Because they do deserve it. This is one of my civilizations I made for the, for the mega campaign. They're fucking cool. I like the song. And uh, this is, I think, one of the few species it'll work for. You guys play still ours. You know this song. All right, get ready for these dudes. Their appearance has proven delightful to the UNE public, who are now impatient to make closer acquaintance with the aliens. So we shall. God damn it, we haven't made contact yet. Let me get my YouTube music working here. There we go. Yeah, it's such a good song. I don't know why Paradox didn't double down to make like a full aquatic album. I'd listen to that on Spotify every week, honestly. Oh yeah. They've got a little bit of lore. I have a headcanon for them. I didn't do a full ride out. They're close to us, so I'm gonna sit down this week and actually write out their lore properly. I didn't expect to get them close to us like this. I know what they're supposed to be though, so I'll flesh that out this week on the wiki. No, they're not Space Vikings. There's something way cooler. Yeah, for Solaris is, it's, I'd argue actually more complicated probably even than Hoi 4. It's just really complicated on the macro scale. You gotta understand the macro elements really well and there's a lot of them. You don't have to like min-max your divisions to, to fight battles. Actually, you kind of do, but not as bad as Hoi 4. But the macro stuff is a lot more. It's a lot to learn, but it's worth it. It's a great game. Prince Wolfikumont and the fucking Americans are just out there with a criminal New Vegas planet. We need more housing. Okay, we'll build a, another city district there too. The game's basically a naval game. Makes sense. Yeah, what's up, Chip? How you doing? Uh, militarily, yeah, it's all Navy. Which, I mean, I'm completely fine with. Boy, for his best military components is Navy. No one will have to change my mind. People who disagree just haven't learned it. Or they, like, you know, jerk off into socks looking at tiger tanks from World War II or something, you know? There's a significant scarring on the surface of this world in a pattern that is not natural. I think we found more space graffiti. Research. Housing's looking good everywhere else, though. It's quite four take of all time. It's the YMC. Yeah, no, it, it is all Navy. I mean, like, your spaceships operate basically like a fleet. There are some similarities, actually, even to Hoi Four's naval system. One thing I'd love to actually see, and they'll never do in Stellaris, is I wish that the commander system for Stellaris for your fleet worked like, um, how Hoi Four's fleet admirals work. You know how you can, like, like have one admiral and then make their, uh, task forces do different things in Hoi Four once you know what you're doing? I wish they kind of did something similar like that in Stellaris, but instead you could put obviously like a, a, like like the fleet admiral and then lower admirals and kind of have them function like that. It's another level of complexity and I know they won't do it, but I think it'd make things more interesting and fun, but it won't happen. There are mods that expanded the design are great. I've got one on actually. We've got expanded ship designs. It doesn't add too much, but it does add more. Okay, we've got a lot of alloys. Let's go ahead and build up to our naval cap again. Actually, let's upgrade some of our space stations first. I'm gonna upgrade Seoul, Seoul Station. I'm gonna upgrade the Alpha Centauri Station. And we'll be good for that. Then I'll upgrade the other ones. They should make fleet uh, fleets move like land you just do on sea tiles. I don't know about that. I don't like the tile system. The systems are like, Tiles, they're just, you know, further away. I don't know. T tile gameplay is very much an, an Earth kind of situation, you know. I don't think that would work very well. Well, badass song that played before we even properly met them, but I just want you to play that in your mind when we're talking to the leader. Because they're pretty fucking cool. We met another... Actually, I won't talk. 
We haven't met them yet. Let's see what their ships look like. Yeah, boy. It must be up here then. So are they on top of the hierarchy? They hate us even more now. Our relations with them just went down by another hundred folks. In case you missed that. Construction. We may actually have to fight a war with them. Raid on smugglers. In a lightning raid, our ground defenses stormed the smuggler outpost of KE-7514. After a brief firefight, the surviving criminals were arrested and transported into orbit. The empty building was then vaporized by demolition charges. Cultural contamination is believed to have been min minimal. They were, again, doing black market smuggling out of that fanatic authoritarian world we fucked up when we interfered in their politics. And our forces also confiscated a large amount of illegal contraband. The profit from the seizure has been added to our treasury. Wow, they were wealthy. That's a lot. That's like, that's like a big chunk of our GDP right there. That was a very lucrative black market trading ring. Gotta be careful with these pirates. All right. A, a very good raid from Marcus Costas. We'll send him and his Marines back to Hades. They had a nice little break from their hell world. We're going right back on it. Good to you. Thank you, Trucconeer. The more we learn about the A and aliens, the more puzzled our researchers are. Although they are evidently intelligent beings, their transmissions are nothing like we have seen before. Instead of some sort of audio or script-based signal, what we are receiving is a brilliant light show, produced by their bodies or digitally. It stretches well beyond the light spectrum. Human are able to view unaided, it is evident that coming to understand them will be a major challenge. We're basically trying to understand dolphins right now. Not easy. We will survey the last system there and then head up. Oh man, what is that system? Environmental hazards. That's a nebula, I see. Man, real space makes the game so beautiful, doesn't it? I can't believe I used to play Stellaris without graphical mods. Biggest regret. Still fucking cool, dude. That's the other thing about Stellaris. This game's getting kind of old now. Not real old, but old. And its graphics are still so pretty. Even without mods, but especially with mods. Crazy. Dolphins have bioluminescence confirmed. We will keep surveying north. No, we met the two different groups. That's a. Uh, someone may have recognized that if they were watching. I was due to keep games alive for a long time. You'd think people would add more mod support to their games. Yeah, I mean, Paradox does a fair bit for that because, you know, they do go out of their way to make modding tools and to make games very, uh, their games very, what's the word, modular and template-based such that modding's pretty easy. But I, I wish they would do more for modders. And I know that's complaining about a company that, like, does more than most development groups and companies do, but given how much of their success has been based on modding, I think they do need to do more. It would really help them, too, but here they have reasons for not doing more. Let's build hyper relays. No, because we need our influence to keep expanding our spar systems. I think the hyperspace relay network is something we're going to build after we max out our borders. It'd be a huge investment politically, right? When already we're utilizing every ounce of our bureaucracy to sustain the systems and the worlds we have now and we want more, right? So that's a project for later then. We'll table that. At least Athena Montalupo will. Maybe another president will see it different. So 
This is when choosing star systems starts to kind of get important. I kind of feel like we need to hold on to our influence just so we can move quickly here. This is the portion of Stellaris. If you're playing, even if you roleplay, I recommend you do a little bit of metaing here because it's kind of how the game works. And to be fair, your species would have almost certainly a whole department built around studying what would it be astrogeopolitics, astropolitics, astropolitics probably in terms of like, you know, expansion. So you got to get the choke points. And this is where I will do a little bit of non role play thinking. So yeah, we'll, we'll hold on to our influence and try and take these systems. I don't know where the species is. We might just be completely cut off here, but if we're not, I want to move north rather than south here. Because I'd rather give our good friends down there more, more uh, planets. They're not really expanding like at all, are they? Hmm. It's an AI bug or something. You land like one last election, but I feel this next election will be more of a fight for Athena. Oh, 100%, yeah. Oh, yeah. our physics research again I'm just gonna have her thing really just be focusing on everything on research to also use your execution points on another ruler focus. I like this. It kind of it allows you to role play like what leaders would really be focusing on. Because the governments do one thing, executive positions do another. If only they added a full parliament system to Stellaris. You know what I would unironically pay like still like stupid paradox money for? If paradox made a proper parliament system for uh Stellaris. Uh, that doesn't just need to be for democratic governments. So you can have like a, like a leadership council system or anything for autocrats or whatever, but like a proper deeper governmental system, let alone maybe even like Victoria three, but then won't do that. So man, I'd, I'd pay a good bit of money for that. What would you do here? Double down on physics. Our traits again. Politician. Researcher. Egalitarian. She'd want to do stuff more for the people. I mean, she's, she'd be very research focused, but she'd also want to do more humanitarian things. I'll pick the next one based more on that, I think. Maybe to full deal you with know, the food crisis or the other sorts of things. Where is it? Same menu. Maybe welfare allocation. Just be straight up energy initiatives that help budget a lot. Twitch integration parliament? Now that would be fucking cool. The British dude who made all those medieval history style videos on YouTube is the CEO of the game company that made Sniper Elite. Which one? There's a lot of good medieval history videos on YouTube, IMC. No politics expansion. Mm, I think a welfare allocation here. Amenities increase and then population happiness. Just giving them general, probably mild basic income, maybe? She seems like the type. She's an egalitarian. You gotta follow Daniel. 
I, I, I can see UBI being one of her policies or something. Short term UBI. We'll go with that. That's what that was. We've got the economy for it, mostly. You're kind of useless now, though. I'm going to hold on to them, though, to use our influence to potentially just build more of those habitation complexes on the other, like, planets, like... That's a new one. Um, some of the moons of Jupiter. Can we do that? I think we can, actually. Yeah, we can. Hello. Yep. Yeah, we could build those habitats on all the different ones here. Subglacial ocean on Ganymede. The planet has a subglacial ocean that could be accessed, giving more food, society, and engineering research. I haven't actually looked around the solar system very much here. Bio geysers, Europa. The other planets. Beautiful storms on Uranus. Saturn. Titan has hot geysers and cryo geysers. That's an eight size as well. That'd be a really good one uh, to, to build a habitat on. Titan, I think, will be top on our list then. The Luna Station. Venus, we can actually terraform in the future. We just don't have the tech for climate restoration yet, so we'll leave that one alone. Yeah, true. Uh, which one was it again, Orion? Ganymede, we could potentially send those ocean dwellers there. We could potentially just have them colonize it themselves. Interesting. But they need us, right? They need to be humans there to do manufacturing and things on the surface. What's up, Lollipop? How you doing? Did my planet finish by chance? Which one was your planet? Was that Walt, the terraforming one? Because if so, I apologize. I may have fucked it up a little bit and we're still doing it. Jason Kingley is the CEO of Rebellion Games. Modern History TV, I don't know that one actually. Let me look. Probably seen their videos before. What's the oh, I've seen their thumbnails before. I don't think I've clicked on any of them. He seems like a badass. Oh yeah. I'll shoot them a sub and check out their videos later. That's interesting. CEO of a full game company and just doing that casually. Wild. Alright, and then Neptune. Everlasting tornadoes and predictable jet streams which can be utilized for energy. That, that week is a gas giant, so we can't do anything there. I'm missing a planet though, Mercury. Cool. So we're gonna go for Titan first. After we build a habitat on Titan, we're going to build one on Ganymede, I think, and then probably Europe after that. Probably we could do it on Sirius too, right? The real build to Loda. Yeah. No Ganymede station. Or sorry, Sirius station. Establishing Alright. Yeah, I'm not taking a proper look around the solar system. I have a mod on that makes it a little bit different and more interesting. So. Keeping all holding on to the influence. One with industry and shipbuilding focus or mining. Scientist Laszlo on board the science vessel Drake has made an interesting discovery on Kuwarden 2A. Several patches of mucus can be found on this world, much like swamps. He's recovered in a faint mist of vapor. Our scientists refused to wade through these thick, sticky, slimy areas, but some of our officers reported seeing strange eggs sticking out of the muck. Our scientists noted in the ship's log that they would not be returning to investigate. Honestly, I get it, man. I, I get it. Another hell world, honestly, is what that is. Isn't there a movie about this made in the 21st century? We'll leave that one alone. This world has shown signs of previous colonization in the last few centuries. We've got to check that out, though. Abandoned settlements. I'm gonna go max speed for a bit here too. Research complete. All right, let's actually build anti-crime buildings on New Vegas. Apparently, we need to, because there are scum and villainy everywhere. I think stronghold is what we'll do here.
Oh, we got to build these on our home planet too. Is it strongholds that go after criminals? No, it's precinct houses. Yeah, okay. Money is law and order. We'll, we'll build some precinct houses there. I know, right? A planet named New Vegas, riddled with crime. Wild. You should make a sector for New Vegas. Sounds good. You know more about this than I do. Trust on that. Your sector. Sounds good. And on that note, we have some mega buildings to make here on the capital. Central Research Bureau. A grand palace of science where the brightest minds of our empire gather together to unveil the mysteries of the universe. And we have crystals, so we can actually maintain its upkeep. I think. Yeah, we can. Empire bonus to uh, research speed. Another bonus to research alternatives. Jesus. Good. Hell yeah. That'll be one of the biggest spending and biggest research expansions of Athena Montalupa. I'm sure she'll be campaigning on that going into election season as well. So we know what she'll be talking about all the time. How far are we from elections actually? Let me look. We gotta be getting close now. Mm, artificial moral codes, that reduces crime. Doesn't take too long. We need space combat. Plan to do another Mass Effect playthrough this December. Hell yeah, Cog. Have a good time. I keep telling myself I need to sit down and get all the mods loaded on the three games and play through them, but I haven't. Mass Effect like games, playing through those when I was younger, were some of my absolute favorite gaming memories when I was young. I remember I played Mass Effect 2 for the first time and I'd never heard of it. I bought it on Steam when I was a kid. And, oh man, that game blew my mind. Played it, played it obsessively until I was done. All right, here we go. Although it proved a considerable challenge, we have managed to decode the form of communication used by the Zeta aliens sufficiently to establish preliminary contact. It seems they call themselves the Architrix High Sovereignty. We gotta read some more in a minute here too. Inevitably, communication can only happen with the help of communication systems specifically tuned to their language, their Lithords. This would appear to be problematic for hopes of fluent conversation with them, but our researchers see it differently. Buoyed by their success and still benefiting from extra funding we provided them, they've drawn up a proposal to consolidate our learnings from this experience. It is something that will be of generally applicable use. They believe that by fine-tuning software used here, they will be able to build what they call a universal translator, which if provided with enough information, will be able to instantaneously suggest translations or phases uttered in any given language. It's a special project. Oh, hell yeah. This is a player-made civilization, so I'll read a bit of their lore here too, if they're friendly. They are industrialists, egalitarian, militarist, and fanatic materialist. The Architrix High Sovereignty. Greetings. I have been chosen by the Rockheart Obstain Grignock to represent the Architrix High Sovereignty in our diplomatic dealings with your people. We strive to unlock the full potential of technology, and you would do well not to interfere with our pursuit of knowledge. We will salute them. Are they friendly? Oh. Wary. Right, lore time. Let me go find their lore page. Bear with me here. First player made sub of the game. Mass Effect 2 is my favorite of the trilogy. Same. I really liked 3 even when it came out. I know a lot of people didn't. Uh, for some good reasons. But I loved it. I enjoyed it massively. All right, folks, here we go. Is the screen up? Can you see them? It is. The Architrix are a race of silicate-based lithoids in the world of Haven, evolved to be a dominant life form on their world. They developed a society centered on individual strength, warrior spear, and aesthetic beauty. Each Architrix is a member of an extended web of clan and family ties, each which answers further up the chain to tribal, regional, and national ar uh, Arctriarchs. Arctriarchs? As the various nations of Havan civilized, they began to use proxies 
or nearly all forms of conflict, offsetting the dangerous warfare posed to the long-lived and low-fertility species. When the species found its way off planet and discovered the dangers of the galaxy, these myriad proxy species were bred together to create the Ma-Tal Servitor Race. Weak and subservient, the Architrix now use their servitor race to manage most of the medial labor of the Empire and as a tide of disposable foot soldiers. Architrix ships are often crewed by only one or two Architrix, while the majority of the crew is made of Maltal serfs. So, hierarchical as fuck. Similarly, the elite regiments of Architrix shock troops are always supported by waves of Motal grunts. Someone liked Halo a bit here. Architrix see the galaxy as a giant test of prowess from which the Architrix will rise supreme among the stars. So they're very militarist. The Architrix are hulking edifices of quartz and diamond glittering in the refracting light of the galaxy stars. Individual shapes and sculpt their forms to reflect their preferences so they can change their own appearance and to attract mates with similar aesthetic sensibilities. That's cool, kind of like pe peacocks, I guess. Common features include wing-like protuberances, anti-gravity crowns and halos of gemstones and bodies plated in precious metals. Moltals are a small mammalian species. Chimeras created with a multitude of heaven's native fauna. No two Moltals look alike, but none of them are much to look at and all appear to be somewhat similar to Terran rodents. That's the subservience race. So that's the backstory made by a player. Let me see if I have the name of them. I only got the name of a few of the player made species for who made them. Made by some unknown uh, person who likes to make a campaigns. The slavers. Uh, no, I think it's more like, well, it's kind of is. It'd be, what would you even consider it? We can't see their ethics yet, so we can't really look at this properly, but um, let me see how they described it again. Serfdom, not slavery. These myriad proxy species were bred together on their planet to create the multiple servitor race. Yeah, so kind of like slaves, slave serfs, weak and subservient. The Architrix now use their servitor race to manage most of their menial labor. Yeah, basically. Serfs, slaves, same thing, really. That's unfortunate. We wouldn't like them very much. Honestly. I, it doesn't look like we're outright hostile to them, but we wouldn't like their politics very much. We'll send an ambassador regardless, though, to get to know them a bit better. They are rumored to be in possession of an ancient relic. Orange, orange, literally, yeah. Yeah, caste system slash slavery slash serfdom. Call it what you like. We as a, a very egalitarian species would not like that system at all. We would not be fans of that as soon as we learned about it. Arriving on the surface of Asteria, the team found that there were no signs of life activity. Only the huge pure white buildings covered with gravel and stains and the gold relief inlaid on it showed the prosperity here. What happened and what horrible disasters destroyed this magnificent city-state? Silent silence gave the expedition members an ominous hunch under the leadership of the captain, everyone still gathered the courage to go deeper in the ruins. That is the um, excavation we still haven't done that is on, I believe, Prokeon. Isn't it? Yeah, Prokeon. So very close to Seoul, actually. There we go. Our efforts have paid off, and we are now able to understand the light signals given off by the alien aliens and communicate with them, at least on a rudimentary level. It appears that the Cabrithians, as they call themselves, never developed a spoken language and instead used their light displays, though they used to use a written language. It is considered far less elegant and efficient than their visual language. Their brains seem perfectly adapted to rapidly derive meanings from even complex displays, as they have favor recordings on the latter in most cases. During our studies, we discovered, to our surprise, that their patterns of light bear an astonishing similarity to the swirls of interstellar space and make hyperlane travel possible. Our researchers are confused as to what this connection may be and propose further study of the topic. An alien empire is Here we go, us. folks. Those who remember the dark. I bring greetings from Carrier of Burdens, Affinity of Purity, the undisputed ruler of those who remember the dark. We wish to learn more about your species. Which martial techniques do your warriors employ in your fascinating biology? They are a cooperative, pluralist, xenophile, and fanatic militarist. You'll greet them as equals and friends. I'm not going to give out their lore yet. They wouldn't tell us about it. I'll do a proper write out on the wiki for them this week. But I don't want to reveal their lore and they wouldn't tell us about themselves very much because they deal with another civilization we haven't met yet that uh, I want to kind of naturally develop. 
the short of it is, though, that they're incredibly old species. Um, what would they have actually revealed to us? Let me think about that. Probably nothing, to be fair. We view them as an aquatic race with very advanced technologies and a very developed militarist culture. So they're almost like a completely militarized society, but they're very cooperative, they're very friendly, and they like working with other species. Very similar to our peacekeeping attitude, but they would be very clear that they're less interested in interacting with like the petty squabbles of little species, civilizations, and more focused on uh, bigger things. Kind of gray snow vibes off them with what that would be but they wouldn't communicate with us very much. Anyway. Oh, they love fighting. Absolutely. Will we tell them about the Greystone Mountain thing? Absolutely not. There's no way. They wouldn't share information. We wouldn't share information. They'd be very friendly. They just, you know, wouldn't want a lot of contact with us. Simple as that. But they're nice. Anyway. We'll go more into them when we meet another species. Cool. So we are starting to meet quite a lot of species now. Let's see if we can get communications with them, though, at the least. Very. Fuck, we need more diplomats. A small colony was founded on Guartan 2A by an alien civilization some 17,000 years ago, but it appears to have been abandoned shortly afterwards. No, Nothing remains of the colonists have been found, and the colony does not seem to have extended beyond the main settlement. Also, Nez. Of wary, we, we won't get that with them. Yeah, they close their borders. So they are to the north. Past those mining droids. Fuck, we probably won't get that mega structure then. It's a shame. Yeah, food prices are getting kind of high. Uh, what we could do is actually this. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Research complete. Build another agrarian district on Terra Nova. I'll build two more actually. We gotta shift a bunch of those Terra Novan jobs over to agriculture. That's the easiest way to do this. All right, have an ability boost from integrated cybernetics. So just direct cybernetics, but probably in the brain and body are becoming more widespread, popular and available. Not everyone would be utilizing them, but they, they would be just becoming much more commonplace. Probably I think a lot of our species would probably start to have mild cybernetic implants, kind of like phones. That'd be my guess, something along those lines. Alloy mega forges, absolutely. Huge for getting alloys. Medical implants too. Welcome back to the ring. Have we met the realm of Mari Sh uh, Shul yet? No, we have not. Didn't say it in the information. The Preserver Republic is led by the Grand Judge as executive and the judicial branches are connected. Preserver Republic. Do you mean, which Preserver Republic uh, do you mean person? Battlestar Galactica symbol. Oh, yeah, from them. I can see that show isn't popular anymore. Dude, I like, I've been substituting, right? Uh, I substitute teach now, it's my job. It's pretty nice, I actually like it quite a lot. Um, I was talking with some kids yesterday, funnily enough. Uh, they'd been talking about Doctor Who and like the new episodes, which I've seen, and I was talking to them about that. They are pretty nerdy. And uh, I, I brought up Battlestar Galacta with them. They'd never heard of it. And I was like, whoa, man, I know I'm getting old now. Fuck, Jesus Christ. And they're like, yeah, we've seen the new, uh, the new Doctor Who uh, episodes. They're really good. And then they basically see nothing else besides like one of tenants. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Interesting. I'm starting to feel that like generational difference now with the really young kids. Just, you know, very different, which happens. Because these days haven't seen uh, Stargate or Farscape either. Uh, okay, I'll say those are before my time as well. I saw a bit of Farscape. Um, Babylon 5 was one of my favorite sci-fi shows. That was old when I was a kid. That was, I think, the 90s. But that's another really good one. Such a fantastic show. That'll age well. That'll still be, I think, really enjoyable in a hundred years. And Anorak read my mind there. As a representative, I wish to take advantage of all these new alien species. For our advantage, we should try and pry, possibly, I said banging, not quite, barging for the other species map so we can get a better vision of what is around us in the galaxy. We're purporting to share star maps. You want to try and do sharing maps, let's see. They're pretty hostile, so I doubt it, but we'll give it a shot. 
What's up, friendo? Oh. Oh my. Alrighty, they'll actually do it. System probe complete. A sun ship has found a mysterious object lodged in an asteroid. From preliminary readings, it seems to be a shipping container. I'll look for that. I haven't met anyone else. Uh, you can have your points refunded, Andromeda. Can one of my mods refund him? I don't mind. Our government would do that. I just forgot, so no worries on that. Delta Naval Officer Uncovered. Dominic Morrow. Naval officer in charge of the Lanil Starbase has impressed visiting uni officers with his leadership abilities. Yeah, we'll hire him. I'll put some of a limit, but given we might be a little ways away from a, a cold or hot war, good talent is in need. Someone used Redeem uh, changing leader's names for an admiral or commander. Who was that and what was it? Because I remember that. Let me know what that was and I'll change their name. Oh boy. All right, folks. Take a quick minute. If you need to get some water, if you need to get something to eat, if you need to go to the bathroom, do it. We got we got a like a fuck ton of lore we got to read now about the galaxy, and it's really important. So here we go. This is one of the most important species we're going to meet. And I got to read you guys like 10 pages of lore after this because it's important. So take a, take a quick moment here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom before I do this. This will be the next like two hours of this stream. I'll be reading the lore. It's really good, though. It's very well written. So be back in just a moment.
Abby before we contact them. Yuni would have received typing communication from those who remember the recent very friendly but very warlike aquatic species that we met with basically a huge amount of data and with that a message we asked for communications with them and they're going to give us their star charts and with that the ability to communicate with another species and before I, we go talk with them we're going to read the lore that we will have gotten from those who remember you can probably guess where this is going based on the tone in a time immemorial the gods created all things in the universe the heart of their creation was the milky way galaxy a blank canvas whose shadow eclipsed its present form there were seven gods within the maleacal try the name their name for the gods all equal in rank and power starting from the eldest to the youngest Sirius Tol, the leader, Vatomosol, Bazimet Mokul, I'm going to butcher these names, Makisha Vul, Bidgawa Hazul, Amelia Yul, and Marshall. All seven were one in purpose and one in vision, or at least it was supposed to be. The seven created a paradise planet, often called a Gaia world, named Uliki, meaning garden. The first civilization of the universe was placed in this garden, one who were known as the progenitors. These blessed people were chosen by the gods, and as such were blessed to harness part of the godly power known as the Meridian. The powers of the Meridian derived entirely from the gods themselves. It was a power like life itself, capable of creating, protecting, and restoring life. The progenitor society grew and prospered. However, not everyone was content with the status quo. You see, the gods had a strict code of complete non-interference and the affairs of their creations. The six elders of the seven were unanimous in this decision, save for the youngest sibling, Marshall. Arguably the most fair and charismatic of them all, was not content with just watching their children live their lives. He believed it was the Marshall's divine right as sovereigns of the universe to rule over the lesser beings of the physical realm. The six shunned his idea, claiming it was not their place to meddle in the affairs of their children. Marshall knew he couldn't win against his siblings, as they were all equal in power, but this didn't stop the fire from growing in his quickly darkening heart. Not being content to sit idly by, Marshall enacted a grand plan to show his superiority over his siblings. The gods and progenitors were spiritually and psionically connected, given that the progenitors could harness limited amounts of meridial power. Knowing this, Marshall decided to secretly interfere with the children. One night, in the sleeping chambers of one of the high priests of the Church of the Meridian, Marshall appeared as a priest as a hellish angel, being just as fair and beautiful as he was grim and terrible. He spoke unto the priest, claiming he was the true lord of the universe, and that Maliakul had lost their way and were unfit to be worshipped and praised. At first hesitant, the priest was soon infatuated with the sheer aura of Shul's greatness. Malshur was a master of persuasion and had learned the art of deception well, easily converting the high priest. As his first order, he demanded the priest create a new one, a flock that could be molded into whatever he deemed necessary. And so he did. The priest, corrupted by the whispers of shadow, went forth and forsook his faith, declaring in secret that he received revelation from a new messiah. Reaching the Maliacol had hidden the truth of their savior. He convinced many to praise the Messiah and forego the old ways. There were many who began to follow. The followers praised the light in the day and worshiped the darkness in the night. It was their way and in order to preserve their secrecy until the time was right. Soon sacrifices were introduced at first offerings, but later flesh and blood. As these rituals were conducted and the followers of darkness grew, Marshall began to increase in power, subtly, so as not to alert his siblings. This cycle continued for much time until finally, the final prize was ready to be paid. Sorry, price was ready to be paid. In a grand ceremony and ritual, the cult of Marshall revealed itself to the light of day. Upon the completion of the ritual, those who survived were transformed into creatures unrecognized to the brethren of the light. With well, the declaration of a new order, and demand that the fools of the light join our parish, the curtains lifted, a 
and Marshall confronted his siblings, casting off his cloak of peace and prosperity. He revealed himself as he now truly was, a being of raw power, cloaked in shadow and death, harnessing and being embodied the dark side of the Meridian. This isn't the Force, I promise. Knowing the destruction he would cause, his siblings resisted, as did the followers of the Light resist their now fallen brethren. The fallen will differentiate the dark ones from the light ones who are the progenitors. A great and terrible war ensued in both the heavens and the mortal plane. In the beginning of the war, the great schism, the forces of evil handily won battle after battle as their power grew and as more and more progenitors were slain. Marshall increased in strength on top of his already immense eclipse of his siblings. Knowing their forces were outmatched and fearing a total defeat in the war, Seriath Tull, in drastic case, blessed the creation of a new species, naturally inclined to the light. In doing this, he could still justly claim he did not directly interfere in the affairs of children. The new ones were not biological in nature, but rather made entirely of stone and rock. The sentinel guardians were completely one in mind. So much so, they were considered to be a hive mind entity. Each drone was derived of autonomous thought, giving the Overmind complete control of their species consciousness. Thankfully for the forces of light, the Overmind was completely devoted to the eradication of the darkness. Having a new ally, the progenitors began to halt the advance of the fallen forces. With his army stalling, Marshall's strength began to falter. Knowing the tides were turning against him, Shul's commander commanded his chief lieutenant, a most devout servant, to commence one final assault on the capital of the progenitors. Their servant was the one who visited Marshall so long ago as that angel from the hellish void. No one knew his name before his fall to the light, but he would be now known as Rakata Un Ashgaza, the Witch King. He ordered the final assault to commence and the battle ensued. Again, the fallen appeared to be winning the attack at first, their numbers seemingly innumerable. Marshall, using the sudden burst in strength, pressed his own attack on his siblings. No entity! Not even a god can kill another god, but the slow flow of a river can carve mountains. Hoping to grind his enemies less than dust of the Luki, he launched a charge after charge. On the planet below, however, once again the resilience of the Sentinel Guardians proved to be almost perfect warriors. Using the very powers of the Meridian that held them together, the Guardians along with their progenitor allies began to push back their enemies, their first time ever in the war. The Fallen's final attack failed, and from thenceforth, they saw defeat after defeat. Marshall's strength was fleeing, and his power began to grow smaller and smaller, allowing his siblings to back him further and further into their trap. The Malia Kul had discovered something truly unimaginable. A realm of chaos and perfect order. It was a place as bright as the center of stars and dark as the pits of the void. The absolute impossibility of such a place made it perfect vault to lock anything or anyone away. But this dimension, being a glacier of ice and an amber flame, would be powerful enough to bind Marl Shul in chains, imprisoning him for all eternity and beyond. With Shul stamps faltering and the armies of the fallen on the brink of collapse, Sereth Tull uttered the curse of enchainment. Suddenly unable to move and fleeing his very life essence drained, the more he tried to resist, Shul and all of his most devoted followers were taken hold and consumed by what was almost thought to be Claws of Hell, being engulfed in the amethyst flames of the Shroud. With their god and witch king locked away in eternal purgatory, the armies of darkness shattered and fled to chaos. Most began to commit ritualistic suicide, deeming themselves unworthy of their failing lord. However, some chose a different path and clung to the hope that maybe one day in the far future, their messiah would return. Knowing they were to be hunted to the man, the last of the fallen constructed a hastily built stellar starship, capable of fleeing the system, unable to set a direct coast, uh, course. The ship was launched just as the progenitor and guardian hunters began to descend upon them in their last final bastion. Once out of Aluki's orbit, the ship engaged its crude hyperdrive and fled to the stars, carrying the finer fallen with them all vowing upon their lives and the lives of their descendants to bring fire and brimstone to those who denied them salvation. Pebbles, boulders, and mountains will quake for the very hearts of men's self shake. Upon seeing the blood of stars so split, knowing their lives to be cold in my wake. Marshall's final warning to his siblings before imprisonment. 
Yes, yeah, so I'm using 160 mods. The Fallen are said to be several meters tall, covered in dark gray skin with black veins that are constantly clothed in their shadowy ritualistic robes. The Fallen are blind to all visible light and see through the powers of the Meridian Flesh Shroud. Their eyes are black as coal and they have full arms. Their mouths are filled with razor sharp teeth. So, given the very convenient location of these empires, I think I'm going to adapt the lore to go with the, which is what I actually find them to be, those who re remember the dark are the original species, what were they called? The progenitors, that's the, those who remember. And since they're so close, the Archistrix could well be the Lithoids as well. So this kind of actually works out quite nicely. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, our next species. You hacked into us, and now you call us friend. The realm of Marshall will remain vigilant towards your kind. Fanatic authoritarian, Fanatic spiritualist and militarist. Wow, they're really close to us. They're up in the north. We pursue true unity and equality. Do not stand in our way. So, anyway. War dump done. That's the Marl Shul. They're super psionic. Bioluminescent Preference, Necrophage, other Necords, Third Eye, Psionic Network, they're very powerful Psionic users, Healing Factor, Sadis, Witnessed, and Lust for Power. Anyway, yeah, it's a lot to take in. I'll give you a minute to, uh, to, to, to enjoy the Marl Shul, which I did not fucking think would be so close to us. They're very close to us. That worked out perfectly with Empire Generation. So yeah, those who remember the dark are the progenitors in that story. The really nice, uh, Abrithians, dolphins, essentially. And then the Arctic Tricks would be the ex hive mind, I guess, no longer a hive mind, lithoids created by another one of the gods to fight them as well. So in the, the way I'm going in the lore in the timeline is basically that uh, gods do exist. They'd probably, just to connect all the lore together, they'd probably be the Greystone Mountain, those gods, by the way. Um, and the Entropius beings would be something entirely separate. So worship and spiritualism in this timeline and in this universe isn't always for nothing. There are gods out there, 100%. And one of them has been locked away in the shroud. So, yeah, a bit of context for you there. I can't believe like the spawn chances though. That's this works out so perfectly, and also really sucks for us. So. Got some more lore. Go back to chill music. Crusade time. Lore-wise, we couldn't fight them. I'm, I'm gonna play around a little bit. Like, with civilizations with lore like that, uh, I didn't make them a stagnant ascendancy because that would break the game to just conquer everyone, but lore-wise, they'd have really advanced tech and their psionic powers would be huge, so we would not fuck with them if we if we uh, can avoid it. We would potentially want to go after them later, but that's that's in the future. God damn it, you two! Just, just, just play the goddamn music, I swear to God. Bear with me. My YouTube is currently revolting. Lovecraftian mythos stuff. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. Uh, someone wanted a ship named the Gilgamesh and redeemed points for that, right? I don't see points being rede redeemed, though. Someone said something about the Gilgamesh. I know I saw that. Lovecraftian 40k war in heaven. Yep. Very, very good lore. Wait till we get to the Empire of the Dying Sun. Just 16 pages of lore, which I'll read most of. So, that'll be half a stream. Come on, YouTube. Chug some water really quickly after that. I'm a wee bit parched. Go 
Ugovich. Hooray, one of our ships. Sounds good, Orion. I'll rename the Wellington for you. Actually, we, I'll, I'm going to name our first cruiser the Gilgamesh. I like the name too, so. I don't. Do we have them yet? I think we're almost there. No, we do. Hold the phone. Fleet management time, ladies and gentlemen. We have cruisers. Carrier time. Are going to make carriers? I researched uh, fighters. Yet. We're going to make these artillery, uh, cruisers, hangar. we got a lot of really big weapons on them and then just scout wings. If we get better strike craft in the future, which we will, then we can turn it into a full-blown carrier, but not yet. Man, the ship type for that looks so cool. I'm going to name it a Gilgamesh class, actually. Cruiser of the game. Yeah. Well, let's go. Are we gonna theorize and lore explain the Twix Star Avians who are located along with that bunch? Uh, Ace, we could if we'd like. Uh, I just imagine that's one of the uh, just Solaris generated. They're not a player made one. I didn't make them either. Or I think it's more just like they're a species that cropped up on a planet around there, just kind of, you know, in the neighborhood, but uninvolved. It could have been the servant of a race that got loose. That's true, actually. But the thing is, the neck they're a Neckhorn civilization, so they will have a subservient species on their planet. Planets. But that's kind of interesting, though, actually. Well, explain why they're warlike and elitist and spiritualist. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. Yeah, we'll go with that being one of their subservient species that got free and, and formed their own civilization. It, it works for their ethics and with their species actually quite a lot. Hmm. Sure, that makes sense. I'll have to do a, a wiki write up about that. It's a good idea. Hell yeah. Perhaps they were created from a common ancestor of the Boki. Or the Boki are a distant cousin that found a wormhole back in the day and went off to another part of the galaxy, unless they're really close. Depends where they get located in the end. It's kind of fun and tie some lore together like that. Let's... Yeah, I'm going to build a hall of judgment there to make uh, our security anti-crime forces and police do an even better job on New Vegas. Prince von Vickelmont's not a corrupt guy, folks. I mean, he may be uh, the son of an authoritarian emperor of the sovereign American Archduchy, but he's not corrupt, so he'd be really wanting to deal with this, actually. This would be, if anything, harming his political future, which he absolutely wants, so we're going to go with full judgment houses and really go after those criminals on New Vegas. I think it's the name that did that to us, let's be honest. Luna base is almost done, too. The science team has collected the mysterious container they have found on an asteroid. It seems to be a specialized shipping container for delicate data. It constrains a great number of printed and digital texts that appear to be some sort of alien poetry. They have proven to be hard to translate, given their purposely abstract semantic. The amount and variety of texts suggest they were destined for some organized poetry contests hundreds of years ago. Our scientists believe that fully translating the text may help our envoys with future contexts. Complex alien grammar. Absolutely. Situation log updated. How long would that take to do? Half a year. Oh, just the scientists can do it. Absolutely. 
go after those Cabrithian patterns we found. That's only four months. We'll do the Universal Translator, six months. Then we'll, we'll translate the Explore text as well. We'll put a little bit of a hold on some of our society research here to do this. If we're trying to make a Universal Translator, all this would tie in and be very important. I mean, making a Universal Translator will also help our, our dear president and her re-election attempt here, which is four years away. Have more pop there. What's the growth like on Hades? System probe complete. Our colony ships have landed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another colony. All right, so I'm gonna use their points. Let me go look. Walrus, what what did you want the planet to be named? By the way, Fumorn Prime. What's the name on it? Anyone ever done a Necroid Hivemind Exterminator build? No. Basically being the flood. That sounds terrifying. I don't know you can even combine Necroid with Exterminator Hivemind's. Just be the actual crisis without even being the crisis. I can't, I've tried to do Exterminator runs with Foreign Stellaris. I just don't enjoy them. I really don't. At all. All right, Carl Bulek is getting his uh, first official assignment. We don't have a lot of high level experienced bureaucrats. And uh, after cutting down on crime very potently on New Vegas, we are going to make Carl Bulek the governor of Luna Base. What can go wrong? So we can't actually build city districts. What would we want to make this into? You get some special buildings off of it as well, looks like. You can just not grow anything here. Just discover a planetary feature. You can specialize. That's really fucking cool. But I guess, no, there is pop growth. Oh my God. Jess Gab is, uh, are, are migrating in mass to Luna base. Oh my gosh, that's funny. What kind of station do we want? Hmm. We can have a lot of pops on here. What do you guys think? What 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 would you make Luna Basin do? I have some ideas. I'm just kind of thinking. This this is a very important colony for us because it's on Luna. So maybe like in more industrial. I mean, it'd be a great place with its low gravity, right? Uh, to to be like a good shipping lane or manufacturing center for distribution, something like that. Hmm. Military station could make sense too to protect Seoul, but. If they're in Seoul, we're probably fucked already. Research. Dirty research. A trade post. I, that, I guess trade would probably be industrial then, right? Or maybe civil? Well, civil. Commercial and bureaucratic. Yeah, civil would be like a trade hub. No, bureaucratic center would be like the running of the empire. Which we kind of already do on Earth, so that would make sense. Commercial awards, though, would... So we only get these types of districts. So let's look at that. Energy gives us reactor blocks. Military gives us barracks and fortified bunker districts. Prisons. Start hunting heretics. Not quite. We could build bio laboratories and testing sites for a research station. We could build foundries and manufacturing complexes for an industrial station. We could build bureaucratic centers, commercial wards for trade, or storage yards with civil. I'll do, I'll do a poll for this. This is kind of an interesting one, actually. What you guys decide. I'm going to be too indecisive on this. They're all pretty cool. Yeah, we're not going to do prison on here. We'll do prison like like in one of the other stations we make in, uh, in Seoul. 
No, we wouldn't do prison so close. Alright, so maybe civil. Civil. Uh, energy would make sense being next to Earth. Do research as well. Uh, industrial. And industrial. We'll just keep it with those four. They all make the most sense. All right, pull those up. You guys can decide. This is basically what we're turning our big mega base we're currently building on Luna to provide more jobs and more options and more support for Earth and outlying systems in the Empire. We should put a prison on Callisto. Putting prisons on uh, Hades actually might be the good idea. Does Hades have a moon? That'd be the perfect place for it. it does. Molson World. Now that's a place for a prison, folks, if I've ever seen one. Can we build a habitat there? All right, we found our prison. <laughs> yeah, we found our prison. Um, Hades' moon is a just a giant molten world, so we're going to build our prison there. I mean, think of a better place for a high security prison next to the marine trading grounds for the UNE on a world covered in lava. That, that, that it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't. Unless it's like a planet orbiting, I guess, a black hole or something. That's perfect. Morris, I think you said the name you wanted to. Eden. Okay. Oh, that's for a Gaia world, which this isn't. All right. Then I guess I get to name this planet because it's not a Gaia world. I'm gonna follow Chronic. Basically putting a prison on Mustafar. You read my mind. Absolutely. Again. I can't think of, of a better place for a prison. Besides, like, an Australia world. Which is basically what Hades is, so, you know, close enough. Alright, we have a lot of influence again. We'll take that system and I'm gonna move south again, too. Maybe you don't do that. I'm gonna try and cut them off here. We need more systems. We'll send the Adriatic to Hades then, to build the prison world. Since, since we've got a lot of crime, we clearly do need it, so... Well, I think we'll do that next, actually, with our alloys, since we've made our cruiser. Our army's back on Hades. That cruiser still not done. Nope. Hades, AK Australia too. Yeah, literally. We're sending all the, all the, all the militarists, I guess. Though not the criminals. They're gonna be on Mustafar 2.0. Yeah, okay. Special project complete. Our study into connections between patterns observed in interstellar space and Cabrithian swirls of light have unearthed surprising results. It seems that the rules by which the Cabrithians make their light patterns, that's the those who remember the dark, uh, are unbeknownst to them apparently, the same as those by which the flows of hyperlane space drift over time, just on a vastly different scale. It follows that through studying the Cabrithians, we'll be able to better predict the flows of hyperlane space, significantly boosting our potential sensor range. Whoa. That's pretty cool. That's a really good bonus. Permanent physics research bonus and permanent ship hyperlane detection range. What's the hole looking like here? Pretty close. Either civil or industrial from the looks of things. I also use the same Lithoid phenotype for my Sentinels, my single player games. For which ones? If you want an actual named Nyland. Does that sound familiar? Hmm. 
Sounds good to me. Works for a planet name. Island. Again, that's the planet, by the way, where due to a runaway greenhouse of uh, gas effects, there was a species there that killed itself. So there's a bunch of like sunken alien cities all over the planet. Kind of sad, but construction. Complete. It will be rehabbed once more. A legit just new land in Danish. Fair. All right, civil. Oh, we got it. The universal translator. Prototyping of the so-called universal translator has finished in success. Although the results fall short of the boldest promises of our researchers of a device capable of instantly translating even unknown languages is a massive improvement over existing translation systems. Already there are promises of vast boons as barriers to communication, the Arctrix, High Sovereignty, and other alien acquaintances are lifted. That's a big moment. We have a universal translator. Envoy improved relations bonus, monthly society research as well. That's really good. We're getting closer to Star Trek. We just have to stop interfering in uh, free FTL species politics and we'll, we'll be getting close. All right, we will turn it into a civil station. Bureaucratic sin uh, centers give bureaucrat jobs, housing. Storage yards give logistic worker jobs, which give trade value and resource storage capacity. That's cool. And housing. And then obviously commercial wards give clerk jobs, which are, they generate a lot of trade, which is nice. Uh, amenities and housing. Is that a percentage bonus though? Storage yards don't produce trade value. They produce percentage bonuses of trade generation. Is that for the planet or the system? I wonder. It could be really useful. We're going to make like a wet Amazon warehouse for Earth right now is what this is going to be. I'm kind of curious. We're going to build one of these first. Ooh, it, it costs alloys, not minerals. That sucks. A lot. That's understandable. Another reason we need to get our alloy production up. Speaking of which, we're going to build an alloy foundry on Luna Base as well. And that'll be our third building on New Vegas as well. We'll build an alloy refinery there. We should be about to get alloy forges too, which will help a lot. Six months. Remember one time I made a country that RPYs had to use all the fossil fuel techs added to the alpha mod? Basically space gas guzzlers. Oh man. It's the Americans in space. Were you human or were you just uh, some of our alien civilization? Super good shortages again. God damn it. Oh, we're out. Our resource management here is a little questionable. Construction. I'm going to sell all minor artifacts too. Special project complete. After many weeks of study, our expert linguists have unearthed the meaning behind the documents found on Ethereumon 5. The documents were philosophical ponderings by a famous scholar only referred to as Talisa the Teller of Tales. Our teachings have provided us with much insight into how to better gain political results via applying different states of mind and using large-scale questions as a focus for reform. Nice! We found a, an alien poli -sci book. Master's Teachings Philosophical Mindset Edict. Research to Society Bonus and Leader Pool Size. Oh, that's really good. But it costs unity, which we're barely making to begin with. We need more unity. Risa Torres reports that the artificial construction located on AO-128-2 is not a structure at all, but rather a colossal robot from a bygone era. Did we find mechas? This aging mechanical behemoth lies disabled in the mountains, slowly being corroded by the volatile acids that rain on the planet. It has notable weapon capabilities and appears to be built as an unmanned spaceship. Oh, let's go. If we want to make use of it, we will have to act swiftly before corrosive environment destroys the warship. Situation yeah, let's let's get that baby. Where you at? 
We gotta send a construction ship. Thankfully, we have some nearby. How many days? 60. What's up, Grover? How you doing? What is up, my man? We are using our edicts fund. We probably should. True. I mean, we're already doing two of them, but I guess we can do more. They only last for five years each. We can do one more. I'm going to do energy initiatives and deal with our energy deficit right now. That new cruiser, I think, is probably hitting it pretty hard. Are they working? I don't see any changes. Anomaly detected. Our scan shows strange properties in the planet's soil that warrant further investigation. Oh, I see. It's got to wait for the tick. All right. We got another 40 or so energy off of that. Yeah, they used the full Kai points. Just dig giant robots. One of my exes actually was really into mechas. She collected, um, I don't even know what they're called, but there's like, the, they're these model sets that you can build like these, like, you know, mecha kind of like, uh, oh, it's figurines out the right word. Like they go on the pedestal. They were really big too. I remember this one she was working on when we broke up pretty vividly from that day. Um, it was huge. It was giant. That was fucking mega. Yeah, Gundams, Gunda. You, you had to build them. I think the paint was already on them. So you didn't do the painting like 40K, but you had to put them together with glue and stuff. They were pretty cool. Research complete. Alrighty, Alley Forges, nice. You know we got it. Robotic workers. I have crits. Um, probably fleet doctrine, fleet support. We'll go for that. Bust up our naval capacity now in over thirty, so we can actually field a pretty good fleet. Solomon is still alive yet? He was. He was not that old. Bionicle. Seventy-eight years old. I'm gonna flip another coin and see if he runs again in the next election. We'll see. Make Solomon into a cyber body. Yeah, they are super fun to do and definitely not my addiction. There you go. You understand. Nah, they were they were cool. If they weren't so fucking expensive, I would have probably gotten into them too. But Jesus, she paid so much for him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, WEC 3 has actually been properly terraformed now. And we are going to keep intentionally tidally locked, so we will get the advantages from it. We just had to terraform it twice, unfortunately. So, it is how it will now. We fixed what we fucked up there. Yeah, we got to we gotta make this into a research planet, honestly. I think that's the plan here. Someone named this planet. What was it? Didn't someone name this planet? It was yesterday, actually. Fuck if I remember. And Chris sent me a DM about this. New Alexandria. Someone redeemed that yesterday. New Alexandria. There we are. Took a while, but we're finally there. How many of those birds do we have in our in the UNE now? It says that we don't have any, but we do. 67 pops, and they are 4% of 67, which would, I think, be two? Yeah, two or three of those bird pops. Nice. I'm a liberal arts major. Close enough. 
More food, more consumer goods. Under a number of thousands. And then, did we get the agricultural district done? We did. It's done a lot of workers. They're all specialists. Hmm. This is why we need some actually like machine pops here. Bio grunts, what could go along? I mean, we gotta become the covenant, right? That's the plan. Who's the second species down? No idea. I think this is showing like. No, it's not actually. We've had a lot of species we just haven't seen. They must be like uh, pre FDL species in some of our like. Some of the other. Empires, I guess, maybe? But there's zero of them. That's weird. No idea. AO128-2A is the home of massive worms living deep inside the planet's soil. Oh, wait, we, we, guys, we got Dune. I'd play the really loud, aggressive Dune music, but I'm gonna make copyright strike. While the passage of these worms can be disrupted to life on the surface, the tunnels they leave behind provide easy access to the planet's mineral deposits. You know what? Fuck it, I'm playing it anyway. We gotta, we gotta play the wubba 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 sound. Complete. Where is it? Gotta play it. We found, we found the worms. There it is. Take David Lynch Dune movie is better. It is a very good movie too. I like the most recent one a lot though. 80s too. The super, the super UNE Marines, we gotta send there to go fight space worms. That's how you get really good Marines. This the one. It is. Okay, cool. Enormous circular bands mark HE8313 surface, clearly visible from orbit. The planet resembles an enormous eyeball hanging in space. Sun blinking gaze fixed on the local sun. Let's go look at that. Oh god, this is right next to Sol. The investigators went into the ruins with an uneasiness. And they found that the civilization seemed to start to decline after some sudden religious worship. Oh no. The original elaborate building was suddenly randomly filled with some kind of tentacle-like head image with paint. Which seems to be the new god they worship. If you're worshipping something with a lot of tentacles, you, you probably want to like do some self-reflection. I think that's a good rule. However, such a primitive and rough religious culture does not seem to be an orthodox god. Although everyone is very scared, they continue to move forward under the leadership of Andrea Longfield. More fucking Lovecraftian shit we're finding here. Jesus, what is this universe? I'll go for unyielding, actually. That's good. Go for. I oh, don't know. It just hadn't updated. Let's see. The Animus Asimov crew have made some astonishing discoveries on GN 564 3. The abandoned settlements, first seen from orbit, were once inhabited by a society of reptiles that still populate the planet, but have since lost all capacity for sapient thought. In investigating how these creatures devolved from a tool making agrarian society into mere beasts, as male Robani made an unexpected find. The burial remains of the settlement dwelling reptiles possess a spinal cranial organ not observed among their now bestial counterparts. Testing has revealed these organs to be another species of oh god. I know this event, I think. Folks, we may have to shoot Robani in the head, I'm I'm afraid. A sort of neural symbiote that connects to the host brainstem via. What is this universe? God damn it! With the host brainstem via external attachment to the spine. These symbiotes can still be found in hot springs on the planet's surface. Seems the union between the two species triggered the temporary uplifting of the reptiles. 
What later interrupted the symbiose, however, remains unknown. Is Mel Rabani request permission? No, 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 no. Request permission to study these remarkable neurosymbiotes. We are putting out a UNE planetary ban on that planet, and you are getting the fuck out of there. Where's that planet? All right, folks, we got to blast this if we ever get there again. Gemstones? Oh, God, you know that some stupid fucking pirates will show up there. It's right next to the pre-FTL species, too. We're going to we're going to we're going to lock that system. No one's going in there. Not happening. Nope. There are friends. Hamu, you shut your mouth, Walrus. No, they're not. That's that's how we that's how we get game over, man. Game over. Real fucked up. You don't fuck with brain slugs. We're leaving that place alone. As soon as we can orbitally bombardment, I'm going to. HE 831 is entirely locked to its sun. One side of the planet has perpetual daylight, the other perpetual night. Because of this, the planet's ecosphere is divided into very distinct bands depending on how much sunlight they receive from HE 831. Hmm. This universe is so fucked up. My only, like, consolidating happiness here is that we met these guys. They make this all a little bit better. That's about it. Otherwise, we're just surrounded by all the fucking the bad vibes. It's not good. They did cut us off there, so they're going to go that way, which is, which is fine. System probe complete. All good. Next, we're going to find purifiers. I'm calling it right now. Okay. We're, we're good on that now. It did fit the vibe there. Who says they aren't already among us? Complete. Why do you hurt me, Loris? Why do you hurt me? I don't want to think about that. One of the scientists working at the observation post orbiting KE-751-4 has been reported missing. He was taken as part of a covert mission to collect pants samples and the planet's surface, but did not return to the shuttle with the rest of his team. We have been conducting a limited search show as not to alert the pre-FTLs, but so far without success. Keep looking. Hmm. Hopefully he didn't get kidnapped. Them off and take that system. Let's put them off and take that system. Oh, wait, that's that's habitable actually. They gotta follow. Many men, men. <laughs> Carl Billy is having a field day on social media. You know he'd be ranting about those brain worms forever. On one hand, horrors may be endless. On the other hand, bird friend. Yeah, they, it almost balances. They're really nice. We like them. Unless they're full of brain slugs. Then we will have to destroy every one of them. Which would be a tragedy. Thank you for the gifted subs, Andromeda. Much appreciated. Thank you for the five gifted. Appreciate that, brother. Oh, missing in action. Where'd Hawking go? Hmm, that's really strange. Hmm, we'll do that. Okay, so we'll cut them off there, and then if we take this system, we'll have all the ones we went over here. Then we got a, a pretty good chunk of space. Not as much as I'd like, but I'm greedy in Stellaris. Do we need assembly? All right, what's, what's, what's the vote for in the assembly? We're not going to go look at the brain slugs. I'm overruling that. You're getting your points back. No, 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 no. I'll refund you right now. Overruled. Overruled. We're not going that route. We're not getting slugged.
You think you're being funny? But you're gonna destroy the United Nations of Earth with that with that kind of thinking. And I'm not here for it. I will not participate in the genocide of the human species in the modern galactic era. It's not happening. After spending an extended time studying the remarkable features of the Planet Blower science team on board the Magellan, they are ready to report their findings. Science Officer Adiyami has reported the science team has made several additional discoveries studying this unique planet. This newfound knowledge greatly expands our understanding of the universe. Oh yeah. Ships cost less alloys? Is that permanent? Oh my god, it's permanent. Crash Strike Fighter. It was so advanced and we learned so much from it, we permanently have dropped our ship alloy cost by 5%. That is nice. They will make US smarter, Germany for future technological technological advancements. I'm gonna build a Colossus just for that world. We'll get it. We'll get a. We'll get a militarist president, and we'll show him the file when he asks for you know the shit that people don't know about. You know, every every president asks for that file, whether or not it's the modern U.S. or this futuristic UNE, and he'll get the brain slug uh, file. And when he does, we'll, we'll build a colossus just to fucking take out that planet. If he's a smart man. Our colony ships have landed. All right, we got another colony. Beautiful. As the exoskeletons and automatic robots have changed our way of work, this kind of autonomous robot, able to overcome any possible environment and with a flexible programming, will give us more time to employ and less menial tasks and will revolutionize our society. With this new advancement, we have designed new installations for our fast assembly already available for construction. Hmm. Customize our robots. We inter uh, intercend extra Municato squad or nuke the planet out of existence with the brain slugs. Yeah, we're gonna do an exterminatus on that planet. I hope. I hope we get smart enough rulers for that. Hmm. 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 You seem friendly. I'm gonna go with the generic one though. I think it fits what they're supposed to be the best. Future models may be different, but the first ones, I think that works the best. We got an inside technology from our studying of the pre-FTL sentient species. Let's go for better straight craft, I think. Nope, Durasteel armor. We got to pick that up. That's a big one. What did we research? Hmm. Hydroponic farming. And see shelter in your brain. Maybe we shouldn't make our robots too humanoid. Might give them thoughts. I doubt it. Earth's a shipyard. It's gonna be our main shipyard, so I'll upgrade those. We'll build a fleet academy there as well. We're gonna dismantle the crew quarters. And we're gonna replace it with a transit hub as well. Just to move out to our colonies a little bit easier. That's a really good building to have. Or module? Space station? Very good to have generally. All right, Selene Montalupo. Gray, you here? Let's see if she's here. I think so. Otherwise, I'll decide for her. She is not. All right. Um, hmm. Architectural interest. Really good one to have, generally. All right. First governor of Nyland. We actually are going to need another official. I think we're all out. Yep.
I'm already over the limit though. No fucking unity. Such little unity, though. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine. We'll go Bartolomeu Vesconcelos. Seems solid. Xenopha. Technician. He's very eager. No sectoral support. We're gonna need to make another sector for them, aren't we? Oh yeah, it's way the fuck out there. Make a new sector. We have the ship going to Weck. Oh, we have QW711 is colonizable by one of our species. We have Twaxadar? You know what it is? Oh, that's funny. The, the, the Twaxadar, the hierarchy has a migration pact with the, uh, oh, what's their name? The Gavazul, and the Gavazul have a migration pact with us. So they migrated to their planets, and then from there they migrated to us. That's what happened. So I guess we have some of them. That's hilarious. Despite them hating us. Oh, man. Yeah, political refugees seeking a better life. Yeah, it probably would be what it is, wouldn't it? Would our government do something like that, though? Because we'd be fought like... Founding a colony that will become huge, both politically, economically, population-wise, and, you know, a political factor in the UNE with a race that is hostile to us. And we've never formed a colony with another species before. We're not xenophobic or anything, but it is a very big change. Full time. So I'm going to propose it as basically, uh, there were refugees that came to us. I'm not going to say they double migrated. I'm just going to say that basically a bunch of huge ships asking for political asylum basically left the Twaxadar worlds and given their hostile, uh, they were stopped at the border, probably on Lanil or something like that, and requested asylum, which we did grant them. And now there is currently a proposal in the parliament of the UNE. Basically, given that they don't naturally work very well on, on any of our planets, they'd be pretty miserable there, right? They'd, they'd have a bad time, but there is a planet in our worlds that would be able to accommodate them, which is QW711-2. And so there's now a proposal on the floor of the parliament as to whether or not to grant them that world and allow them to colonize it. Obviously, it's full citizens of the UNE. I'll do a poll on that. That's an interesting one. We are egalitarians, every species should have equal rights. Oh, I agree, but we've got a lot of militarists too. And I think you could even be an egalitarian and xenophile and not perhaps want them to have their own world. You know, there'd be some people arguing about the politics of it and stuff, so. Either way, y'all decide. Ooh, yes. We can start upgrading our alloy jobs too. Tell moles. They are refugees, yeah. Read those. Hmm. I'll build 
Gene Codex on Nylons. That's good. Militarist doesn't necessarily mean xenophobic. I agree, but if they're a militarist and our biggest military potential rival that we are hostile to is that species, they'd probably argue that there could be some security concerns there, right? Which might even be completely warranted. I mean, if we accepted hundreds of thousands of refugees from them, I think it'd be in the news, right? That it could well be that there were some spies in with them and they could actually be right. So it could be seen as a security threat or uh, 101 reasons why they might be opposed to it. I'm not saying all of them would. Some of them might be. But regardless, I think we probably wouldn't do it. But again, I'll put it up to a poll just because it is a bit of a tougher one. Lineal Station, that's our hard border with the Twaxadar, so I'm going to upgrade that. Build. One more torpedo battery, one gun battery. And... Vacation Shammer. Next to our civilization opportunity, I'll make evolved brains. There's a couple of events kind of similar that I've seen in Stellaris games over time. They're pretty sketchy. It will be a monument to alien collaboration, a sign of a bright tomorrow. Oh, it, it would be. It'd be a big step for the UNE on the path that they're kind of headed towards here. Construction complete. Actually made it to the stream. What's up, Spicy? How are you doing? What would the tourist attractions of a mud world be? Let's look. I gravity. That's an attraction, right? Who, who wouldn't want to constantly feel like they're they're just stuck on the ground and dying? Shitty minerals. That's cool. They have really nice auroras. They've got a lot of great hot springs, which you'd have to crawl out of because of the gravity. They've got some nice tundra. They've got beautiful fungal forests that you could hike through. I mean, crawl through, given the gravity. Yeah, humans wouldn't go there for tourism very much, I don't think. Yeah, we are going to do it. Very well. We will colonize it. After a vote, the UNE has decided that the hundreds of thousands of refugees from the Twax Idar will be granted a world that will support them. Oh, what should we name it? Hold on. I got an idea. It's going to be esoteric. Thanks, Troy. That's a good one. Yeah, actually, I like that more. Go Thanks, Troy. Got some shit you'd see in a in a sci-fi game, and you'd be like, "Yeah, it's that's about right. That fits." I've been streaming for six hours. This is why I hate Stellaris and love it at the same time. When I play Stellaris, dude, time just disappears. Oh, Ismail Rabani died as a result of an uncurable disease. You know where he went? Does anyone remember the last time we saw our dear dead scientist? I'm blowing up that ship. I'm go we're going to institute, we're, we're, we'll, we'll pull the scientists off of it first and the personnel. They're all going to go detailed body scans and we're destroying that vessel. I'm not, I'm not going to take a chance there. We're not, we're not dealing with that. We'll do it humanely. They'll all be brought back. They can return to normal life after they've been properly scanned, but I'm not taking chances with that ship. He had one of those tumor, uh, brain, brain slugs, I think. Wiggling brain tumors. That's terrifying. Any more alloys? Complete. 
I need to build some robot assembly plants too somewhere. How many slots for it? Maybe if he studied the brain slugs, he would have survived. Yeah, that could be, but I, I, I'm complete. It's a it's a tragedy to lose Rabani, but it's one I I'm willing to make here. And I think the UNE would be just relieved to not be dealing with. Curiosity is good and fine, but we've realized at this point that there's a lot of very dangerous things out there. I think we'd probably be starting to become a little bit more wary. I wonder if the Athena Montalup is becoming like the jaded president yet. I wonder if she's just taking like cigarette breaks every couple hours in between reading reports from these worlds. I'd be. Jesus Christ. If I was in her position right now, I, I'd, I'd be relapsing so hard into smoking. Hmm. This is, you know, linguistics. It's literally just one. Wow. Okay, I should have done that a while ago. She is resilient. Mm, I think she is not. No, she's a politician too. And she's a perfectionist. No, she's doing something. Either she's drinking a lot or she's smoking a lot. Either one. I would imagine. Or she's just tough. Could be. Construction complete. I think as being a fellow scientist, uh, Wynn should send one of their vessels into the wormhole. We need the tech for it first, but I agree. And we got to clear those uh, mining droids. And there's a lot. That's 11,000 fleet size. God damn it. Got to get a, God damn it. a bit of a closer eye on things here. We have proven, proven beyond any doubt that the galaxy is filled with life. Apart from the dominant species of nations, there are many others who traverse the stars. God damn it. Deal with that crisis in a moment. From time to time, exceptional individuals may arise to shake the foundations of galactic power. If we can harness their ambition, these renowned leaders may be willing to join our cause. That's Paragons, ladies and gentlemen. Warship restored. Okay, it's not a crisis. Well, I think it is actually. The engineer crew manning the NMS Amazon are pleased to report that the mysterious warship found on the AO. Oh god, that's the fucking automated dreadnought, isn't it? That's what we turned on. I bet you anything. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, its corroded components have been repaired and replaced where needed, including its discharged power core. As the hulking warship was powered back on and regained operating status, it swiftly became evident that the machine possessed a notable degree of artificial intelligence and we could communicate with it. Booting systems, activating bio-interactive interfaces. Warning diagnostics have not been run for 1,761,125 days. Would you like to run them now? Hmm. I'm uh I'm a little a little nervous about this. Some something's weird. Who made you? Maybe we shouldn't start about asking about their parents, but I'm gonna go for it. Makers. Who were they? Makers. Okay. Are you makers? Hmm. No, I don't I don't think that'll end well. We found you alone on a planet. Hardware management systems have identified oh god, several uh, uh, foreign devices. Please confirm origin. We repaired you. New entities performed restorative operations, provided hardware replacements. Ergo, new entities are makers. I don't think we want to be the makers. Maybe this is good we get a ship out of it. But I don't think this ends well. If you want to look at it, at it that way. Oh, never mind. Oh, the phone. No, 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 no. Okay. I thought, given our recent history with the galaxy, I thought we were about to unleash some, you know, cybernetic cosmic horror. And we kind of did. S875.1 Warform. This is our first paragon of the game. An ancient combat computer ready to serve our empire after having spent centuries in a toxic graveyard. 
Unit S875.1 was isolated from command units. Unit S875.1 was unable to escape hazardous planetary environment. Reserve generators failed. I face gradual molecular dissolution due to hostile surface solvents. Yet I persist. New entities perform reparations. I will serve new entities. And Ethan Admiral, let's fucking go. Corrosive survivor. We can make him a counselor? Oh, fuck. He's immortal. Oh my God. What the fuck did we just find? It's an immortal Aragon. Empire effects is counselor. Daily armor region, armor hardening, sensor range, and ship hyperlane detection range. Skirmisher, as a counselor, ship weapon damage bonus, sublight travel bonus. Synth. Ship fire rate 10%, ship hardening 10%. God damn. Scout, sublight speed. Time spent missing from action reduction. What level is he? Oh, consciousness. How did he last so long trapped down there? Automatic repair functions, replacing components as they corroded. Estimated time until resources depleted. 12 days! Oh, wow. What timing. Finally, something's going right for us after our bird friends. It's been a while. Very well, but we're watching you. He's, he seems like a nice guy. Fuck yeah. Hold on. What's going on? The fuck are they fighting? Oh, so it was a bug. We're good. L, yeah. He's bound to a ship though, so I decay how he can be a counselor. Can you not remove him from it? Let's let's see if we can theoretically. Let's like make him defense minister. No, we can make him a defense minister if we want. Yeah. I guess he just stays on his ship, but as long as we keep it somewhere and he's not dead, he stays. Yeah, he's a level five uh, leader and we can put him on our council. That's a little broken. 1,578 years old. That's fucking cool, man. I give him upgrades too. Yeah, he, he's in the system now. We gave, we gave him access to the hollow net and uh, for good or bad, you know, hopefully he doesn't go Ultron on us. We got a lot of we got a lot of weird political forms and a lot of really wacky pornography. But if he overlooks that, this is going to be a great relationship. I wonder how it, how he would feel about like our our robots that we're starting to build though that have obviously no rights, but they're not sentient. That'll be interesting. I wonder if there are events for that. Oh, ecological adaptation. That'd be really nice. I'm doing that next. Ecological ad adaptation. That means we can actually convert most of the planets that we have in our systems. Really expensive though. We're for him for president? Would he have rights? Is he intelligent? What are our laws on that actually? Oh boy. All right. We're already getting hit with those philosophical questions early on. Robotic workers are allowed. We don't allow slavery, but would he have, like, citizen rights? Switch to that. I didn't see that. That's way better. Um, hmm. Holding is not legal, no. It is banned in the UNE Charter. Yeah, we don't, we don't even, it's not even been a question, right? I'm sure there's 
books and stuff about it. Like, we don't even know if it is sentient. The leader leaders equipped with a large collection of assorted software upgrades. I'm gonna dive stroll and see if he's sending or not. Bear with me. Alright, he's sentient. Out of roleplay, he's sentient. But, as humans, we, we, we wouldn't... I mean, he'd, he'd pass all the tests we would give him and stuff like that, right? time. This is precedent, folks. Remember, we do have a Supreme Court and we've got a legal system at the, at the now inner solar level, right? So this, this will actually not be a parliament issue. This would be a, this would be the UN Supreme Court. So everyone watching and everyone's about to vote on this, you are all members, I guess there's a lot of them, or just brain cells in a couple of those heads. You're, you're all deciding for the, the UNA Supreme Court. This is this sets precedent, right? This means that we would immediately give robots rights in the future, almost certainly. So I kind of will decide this really early. We're getting asked that question before we've had that properly happen. I mean, as soon as we got this guy back, basically, um, it would be clear he's incredibly intelligent, can make some pretty wild connections. His language software is probably not the best, but we would have given him a bunch of tests as soon as we got back for both the military and for science. And again, anything we could throw at him for intelligence and for sentience, he would pass. So it is brought the question, given he is obviously now an incredibly famous individual, right? This is a 1500 year old, super intelligent AI war bot we found in a scrap heap, who's got the ability to eclipse all of our current commanders and admirals in any simulation by light years there would be the question of if he gets citizen rights. So, Supreme Court will decide that. I will give a third option too, just for fun. So, y'all can decide. The real question, does SA even want rights? It's sentient, yes, but it might be fundamentally different. That could well be, but you gotta remember, due to the type of species we are, whether or not he wants them or not, we'd be asking that question, right? We're fanatic, equal, uh, egalitarian or xenophile or we're, we're spiritualist which kind of makes things complicated but whether or not he's asking that question a lot of people in the UNE would be and certainly the leadership of this government would be asking that question so yep kind of an interesting one that's a cool find though very cool in class star studied this very bright star will probably burn out in a few million years, which is very soon in the astronomical scale, as the fusion processes in its core are extremely fast. During the examination of the Kuartan, science officer Laszlo Takas noticed the onboard solar collectors generated 150% the normal amount of energy. It wouldn't be surprising considering the radiation present, but it's interesting that they didn't melt. Yeah, we'll take the energy. We need that more right now. And we will begin to chart the unknown. We'll have to activate that. We can expand the council. Let's go for that. Oh, yeah. Spiritualist factions shaking in their boots. I'll show you the layout, though, on those um, in terms of factions. Suffrage Watch, which, as we know, would be huge advocates for this, are 24 of the population. Full Enfranchise uh, Society, which would be also very four, I'm sure, 27. Alliance of Sacred Traditions, which are the really religious folks. Their party is only seven, very small. And then the Crimson Warrior Lodge, which would also might support it they'd probably be split because like he's so useful to us you know authoritarian and militarist doesn't mean they're necessarily against synthetic and robotic rights so a lot of society would probably be for it but 
It does have a lot of future implications if we do. A lot, I'm curious. Yeah, overwhelmingly yes. Alrighty. Well. In that case, we're going to give him of engineers for How long until the election? I wanted to get to the next election before we end today. Two years? Okay. I'll stop pausing all the time. We'll get to the uh, Athena's re-election. We'll decide that, and I'm going to call it for today. A bit over six hours here. Substance abuse increases on New Vegas. Following the, in the wake of the rising crime on New Vegas, drug abuse among the population has increased significantly in recent times. The use of illegal narcotics has spread well beyond the moon's criminal underworld and now affects all walks of life. Fuck. Well, Fritz Fickelmont's kind of failing here. All right, so in a overwhelming Supreme Court case, the UNA Supreme Court would rule that uh, this this particular unit and would, would have full citizen rights and any obviously intelligent species or entity would. So in the future, when we start, if we start to deal with the question of robotic rights, we already have precedent set on that. That's cool. Interesting. Early than I expected. Even with the precinct houses, huh? That's unfortunate. Hmm. Maybe one day he'll win an election. He's immortal. What do you, I don't I don't know if he'd want to run though. He seems pretty focused on war. But if we're in like a wartime like government and we have an election, if we're at war with a bunch of you know other groups, that's when maybe maybe he would he would run just to you know win the fucking war and just leave after. All right, Adiyami can specialize. I'm going to give her. As head of research statistician. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Established factions and fledgling movements alike have taken an unusually keen interest in our new colony of Nyland. From the moment we announced settlement of this modest planet, nearly every political voice in the UNE has something to say about it. I mean, we did spend, you know, Probably the yearly GDP, at least, on making this planet habitable, so that checks out. Our analysts don't suspect that anything truly radical is taking root on Nyland, but they advise from caution. It's clear our various political entities intend to campaign vigorously on this burgeoning world. Ethics shift chance. Political frontier. Unity gained. And political discourse on Nyland happening. Hmm. Interesting. I was distracted by the by our new uh, leader, so getting all our shifts to doing what they're supposed to. What the fuck are they? Oh, missing an action. I wonder how we'll find other species, considering we might be blocked by other cities. We got a wormhole. Pink, we got a wormhole. That's, that's how we're going to get out of here. That's, kind of, that's how we're going to blow the popsicle stand. Problem is we got to kill 11,000 fleet power mining droids to do it. Speaking of our fleet, I haven't looked at it in a while. I don't think we're going to send him out with his ship at all on anything. I think we just keep him over Earth. He's basically like super intelligent, actually useful bubbles. That's what we found here. So we got to protect that boy. He is an absolute. I want to say national treasure, but that doesn't fit. We are a nation. National treasure.
Keep industrializing our systems. Keep going north as well. On another wormhole. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another. We got a way out, it seems. He's basically a whole fleet. His fleet power is not that strong, but him in charge of a navy would be wild. Yeah, it's 2,000 stars in the galaxy, by the way, folks. It's uh, it's two times bigger than the largest map you can get in regular Stellaris, so it's going to be a big galaxy. Alrighty. We'll upgrade the fleet again, too. No, you're not going to go through a dangerous system. Absolutely. Oh, man, we almost fucked Research up there. Complete. No, 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 no. Why is it even going through there? Apparently, I need to turn the system off limits. Here's Nabu. You're a gun good, aren't you? We do have a pretty good chunk of space, yeah. What do we have Starlink maps with those who system know the problem. dark? Yeah, we already did. That's how we met the Mari Shul. Those, those things. Already do multi-dimensional studies. We'll be moving a little fast here. Don't mind if I do. We upgrade those science buildings? No. Okay, so that will be the third. Someone uh, becomes a government head, they can't be any other leader, right? So I decay about robot friends would have become a president. No, um, IMC, when you become the president in, in what I've seen this game so far, you can be reappointed to other positions, right? So, for example, after losing the election and no longer being president, Solomon Torres was made the governor of Terra Nova and appointed as a uh, minister of state. So yeah, you can you can do other things with him. Big brain theory. Fuck yeah. Next planet you are naming. What are you naming it? We don't have another one planned at present. Let's see if we can actually do any more. I don't think so. Next one we terraform and take though. But they can't be in two rolls at once. That's what I'm trying to say. We'll get, we're going to see in the next election if he can even run, so we'll find out. It could be the case that he just can't. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that would work too, actually. Let's get this song. Too, too dramatic for the moment. Oh, they took the system, I see. We're improving our relations with them slowly. System probe complete. I'm going to find Sandworld and uh, name it I Hate Sand. Truly the most original name I've heard for our planet. One of the people used to watch me on Twitch all the time back in the day. That was his name. I Hate Sand. I haven't seen him in a while, actually. In forever. God damn it, YouTube! I'm not paying for premium. I'm going to use my ad blocker. Fuck you. Play the goddamn video. Keep sand. That just sounds like a very toxic place to live. And we have found some toxic worlds, so that might fit, actually. How long is the election one year to go? We're almost there. Let's start to work on some of our research projects. I think I'm almost tapped out here on explorable space, actually. Yeah, only north now. And I think we're about to hit the end of the road there with Amari Shoal. Yeah. We can rush that choke point. We might be able to get around them a bit more. Probably not. 
Our political scientists have been observing Nyland with keen interest. However, despite feverish campaigning and a lot of recent fuss in the media, they forecast a fairly typical outcome for the colony's political future. Our researchers note that no news amounts to good news here, despite that some fringe elements of our society may claim there are as yet no signs that Nyland is being modeled into a hotbed of autocracy. Democracy remains a founding principle there for now. Fucking fantastic. No, let's not... Let's not fuck with that. Scientist uh, Cecilia Brito has passed away at the age of 87. While in service to our empire, the people clamor for a memorial service to honor the leader's contribution to the UNE. She was never made in our politics, but she's been like exploring since day one. And she was, she explored a lot of planets, a lot of sites. Just one of the many unsung heroes of our first generation of explorers. Yeah, we'll give her one out home. I think that's reasonable. Cecilia Brito is laid to rest in a private ceremony with her closest family members and colleagues. The contribution to the uni was an important one. But now it's time for an exorbitant expenditure. Fair. People didn't like that. Okay. Well, yeah, the public wanted a, a funeral properly. I'd love to see a self-learning AI somehow integrated into Stellaris. Oh, man. Self-learning AI integrated into games in period, but especially Paradox games would be so cool. It'd be awesome. What's up, Isaac? Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, man, I, yeah, at the recent, um, like, corporate stream they did for, like, Paradox Interactive where they talked about their business model and stuff, one of the audience actually asked about what they wanted to do or had plans to do for AI. They were really vague about it, but they made it clear that the company itself, like, is working on potentially integrating some of the new AI uh, innovations into their games in the future. So they're working on something. Who knows? If, if it makes their badass AI... I say badass. Really bad AI any better, I'm all for it. That'd be really cool. Especially like language, right? Like integrating ChatGPT ChatGPT like language simulation for speaking with characters and CK3, species and Stellaris. Man, that's when shit gets wild. Very fun. I think we're a little ways away from that though. We have been rivaled by the realm of Marish Marshall. The Eldritch whore beings in the north. I think we might as well rival them back. Playing with fire here, but there's nothing to really be done. We're going to have a border with them. We can't really wait for them to come to us. We'll just get stuck. The new Galsif has AI in higher generation. I did see that, Lil. It's really cool. I played a bit of it. They just hadn't upgraded the game enough for me to stay interested from their old ones. It's a good series, but if you played one, you played them all. It's better graphics. Mm, promotion time. He can hire rulers from other empires where we're allied with. That's fucking cool. He's a pretty good scientist. He's better than our candidates. Sure, let's hire him. Oh yeah, beak of cocky. He's a uh, very well-known explorer and scientist from our dear friends in the Empire I keep forgetting the name of, and we'll give him uh, command of the Sojourner. Oh, yeah. Migration treaties, gotcha. She'll marry, she'll W. I bet they're... Can we even, like, put spies in, the, in them? Like, that doesn't make sense, really, does it? Complete. Not really. I mean, if we dress up with enough, like, robes and start floating, maybe we could infiltrate their, their country. We need more anti-gravitation -gra technologies here. Construction complete. And they'd need to be psionic, wouldn't they? System probe complete. Situation log update. I just wasted fucking... Okay, it is activated, I see. I thought it wasn't. I just wasted some, uh... Influence, that's fine. We can claim our Arco Shield Generator. 
Yeah, come and take it, bitch. They still think we're cowards. Why do I, my voice keep cracking tonight? Well, we will put their ass in the fucking grave if they come, though. What fuck is this? What is this art? The fuck did one of these mods add? I don't, I don't like any of this. Is this like a fucking anime of, I don't, I don't want this. This is ruining my immersion. The fuck is this? That's, I didn't add any meme mods. This must've been from one of the event mods or something. Yeah, mods can add some weird shit, man. this alone for now i'm gonna do uh i'll look at this in single player before next weekend and see if this is oh no no i'm deleting that we're not doing that we're not adding anime girls to this timeline ladies and gentlemen paradox mods right there in action no that's immersion ruining none of you saw that it's not can't what the fuck anomaly detected The fuck just happened? This is worse than brain slugs. This is much worse than brain slugs. Strange heterochromatic pupil. So we're going to have to shoot our scientist here. Uh, I think is what's going to have to happen. say unless this turns out to be like some eldritch horror event which is like stolen the culture of earth and will fuck us up i, I don't mind that that's you know but if it's just anime girls and stellaris no unless it's like a paragon or something I don't think it is. Nope. Just an anime girl. Jesus. I'm kind of curious what it comes from, though. They became immortal? Alright. Lore-wise, uh, some sort of robot creature killed our scientist. She, she died there. Ladies and gentlemen, she, she died. In that in that city the, the report that came back to the research center about the events leading up to her death are a little questionable some of the reports from from those there weren't entirely consistent but internal review uh, has decided not to pursue this this matter any further she died on that city ladies and gentlemen anyway moving on many of our star neighbors don't seem to be believers in any religion some even seem to worship their machines and inventions. A group within the clergy have discussed sending missions. Oh no, let's not be space Jesuits. To save the souls of those unfortunate and misguided Xenos. Currently, most of the discussion is centered around the Architrix High Sovereignty. Shall we authorize the mission to go and spread the good word amongst the sovereign people? No. No, we won't. Nope, absolutely not. Oni cover up? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. You, you, sir, are spreading nonsense. We'll give her a state funeral, though. She deserved that. Going north when we can. These artifacts. Oh. I wonder our ship's so weak, though. Little Sir is not going to fall down. 
System probe complete. We're getting trolled by a mod, folks. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> she came back. She came with her big umbrella. Oh, this escaped her own death. There's no doubt she's standing in front of us unscathed now. If this goes the direction of this being like an eldritch demon creature that's going to destroy us, I, I can live with that, but... What the fuck is this? Her condition does not seem to be very good. Good! Shoot her again! <laughs> fuck. There was no cover-up. And she seems to have lost her memory for a long time, but no matter what, it's okay. Can we shoot her again, though? Or did it bug? Shoot her again. Where is, where is she? Into the darkness. I wonder if this... Is this event going to actually be clever or is it going to be Mimi? God damn it. Shoot her again. I'd like to clarify. I do enjoy some anime, folks. I'm not like, you know, one of those people who hates on it. This is just a meme. And I don't want it to ruin immersion. So, she's going to get taken out behind the the UNE city here. And, uh, okay, that, that, that scientist died on that on that city, on that expedition, so. That's what I'm wondering, Anorak. If this is like a Doki Doki thing, I'm, I'm not opposed to that, because that's going to be kind of entertaining. But we keep killing it, so let's see if that comes back to haunt us. It might. That's so funny, though. <laughs> Because the writer's like, yeah, half the players at least are going to just immediately delete this leader. What if... It's about right. So we're going to go with Eldritch Demon here, folks, in terms of lore. That has consumed some of the particularly interesting... Uh, cinematic content coming out of uh, the Japanese Republic. I guess we kind of have to keep her. I'm going to integrate this into lore because it's just fucking funny at this point, honestly. So, we're going to go with basically... <laughs> I'm going to roleplay it! Why not? It's kind of funny. Okay. Here's where we're going to go with what has happened. Well... While, while, while excavating the city, we found a Brachion. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and rename it. That's ridiculous. Um, we basically came across, like, some sort of really ancient technology with, a, with some sort of, like, AI creature, which killed our lead scientist, took her memories, and uh, appeared as whatever the fuck this thing is. Immediately, obviously, horrified what it is. Anime exists on our world, right? It would, probably in some way. Everyone there, all the, all the scientists, all the marines guarding, you know, obviously, the science expedition would be terrified and, and we killed it, right? Shot at it. The first time might have actually been an accident uh, that we shot at it and killed it. And then they tried to cover it up right after. And when it was explained to, uh, to our intelligence, uh, Bureau, what happened, they probably were like, yeah, okay, that's fair. We're going to help you cover it up. Unfortunately, we're going to go with it reappeared literally in like the council chambers of Athena Montalupo. Because it got Eldritch Horrors the vibe here, right? And, and asked why we killed it, which Montalupo probably wouldn't have even known anything about. After which the military and Oni our intelligence services obviously said, well, we'll take care of this and uh, immediately went and killed this creature again, and it's appeared again, so... Man. Will we, will we try and kill it again? Probably. At this point, it's becoming like just a cover-up, right? They gotta cover their own asses, so let's, let's shoot it again. This is gonna come back and haunt us politically, I think is the way I'll take this. Given especially our recent Supreme Court decision on uh, synthetic life. Nice. Let's again. Maybe it's from Kazako's framework and bond menu. It might be. It <laughs> made Jesus. Fuck. Come on. Age 17. I fucking hate mods, man. 
I take it all back. We're removing them all and going back to vanilla. We have an economy. Our economy is apparently entirely built on uh, selling minor artifacts. Maybe a third time's the charm. That was the third time, right? Keep recovering up this dark god of anime. We haven't we met enough eldritch creatures from the void already? Do we really need another one? I'd argue no. We don't need that at all. We're, we've got a lot of those already we've met. Or they be Okay. So we're we're stuck. Hmm. A rogue eldritch AI horror. What are what are what are what are its stats at least? Really good. Really, really good. Immortal. Academic entertainer. It looks like it kind of subsumed like the character it replaced, which is terrifying. Yeah, because it has her trait still. Oh god, is she locked in there somewhere? a two who character I think we just need to ignore this because I guess framework is a really good mod though so kind of wanted it infinite Stellaris let me see which one that was Yeah, it added some really good stuff for performance and things like that, but I guess it included some sub mods. According to Reddit. It must have been immersive beautiful Stellaris, because I don't I don't have that one. I don't have infinite Stellaris. It's one of Kasako's mods then, so which fits the fact that it's anime. Whoever made it, I think they're Japanese, so checks out. We're getting trolled by a modder here, folks. That's what this is. How can I with the? All right, last time, and then we just ignore it. That's kind of funny, though. I will say, but in a roleplay campaign, god damn it. We're gonna lock them in the, yeah, okay. So it's back. We're gonna role play that this basically just gets locked. I'm gonna go into the save files and try and delete it too. I can see if I can do that. Otherwise we're gonna lock it in area 51 and just, and leave it there. It just, it breaks immersion. That's what I don't like more than anything else. Do not allow Easter egg relics to spawn when starting a game. It will always spawn near your home world. God damn it. It's overpowered and immersion breaking. Yeah, I didn't read that shit. I'll go into the game files for next week and delete it, though. We'll do it that way. Fuck. Why isn't it automatically off, though? Console command? Yeah, I'll try that. See if it works. It, it is kind of funny. Get, get a wee bit trolled here. Solomon Torres retired? Oh shit, he's not dead. But Solomon Torres just retired. That's a big moment too. Next president. After, oh man, almost two decades of governorship of Terra Nova, it's now a 14 pop planet, which is the pinnacle non-Earth colony and world for humanity. In the end, I think he did make up for what he did or didn't really even do. Kind of, kind of a sad individual, sad president, Solomon Torres. But he has retired finally. He's gonna retire to his vineyard on Terra Nova and, and just drink wine all day. He's, he's decided to focus on his podcasting, compiling a history of the family. Yeah, it checks out. It means we need a new governor. Need a new governor. Um, I'm gonna leave the position open until the election though, I think.
That's two months away, folks. Oh man, I almost missed it there. Okay. Uh, we got Athena Montalupo obviously running for re-election. Re <laughs> Including that. Athena Montalupo. Montalupo obviously will be running for re-election. Would be running for the election. Ah, uh, does Teresa Torres run for president? Let me flip a coin on that. You're still young. He does? Okay. Given her father's recent retirement from politics and no major, obviously, Torres member currently uh, in the political field, obviously a lot of, I'm sure, corporate heads and things like that, but there's no Torres really in politics anymore. Her father's kind of tried to groom her for politics in some ways, and she's taken to it to a fair degree. She'd be running, I think, primarily on like an anti-corruption platform, which would kind of be ironic given how she currently got her position, but that character does care a lot about it. So she'd be all about anti-corruption. I'll throw her on the ballot here. You're doing a write-in vote for Kagasa. Hell yeah. I don't think Fritz would run, given that he uh, he's failed to run a colony at this point. Can the Warframe run? Ladies and gentlemen, the Warframe can become president. That's wild. I won't even throw him on the ballot. He has such a low chance of winning, so... And Yami would run too. It's basically just all going to be scientists. I'll throw her on there too. She's very political. She's head of research. Would she be loyal to the current administration? Resilience, champion of the people. No, I don't think so. What might be game breaking? What happened? It converts. Oh, did we get a game over bug? That's really annoying. If I go into the game files, I, I wonder if I can get rid of it. Like just manually delete the leader. It's fucking annoying. If I get game over from this, I'm going to be pretty pissed. Not going to lie. We do have an event before. See if I have a save before this. It's really fucking annoying. We might have an auto save before. Otherwise, we'd have to go back quite a ways, I think. Yeah, that's ridiculous. The oldest auto save. I don't think that's far enough back. Let's see. There's got to be a way to delete, like, the event chain in, like, the save files, though. There must be. Because there's got to be tracked in there somewhere. That's an alternative we could figure out. But if I have a save before this event, I'm just going to go back and not look into it, basically. We'll leave it alone permanently. Yeah, save it would probably work. Let's see if this works first. Actual modder trolling. This may take a minute. The saves can actually take quite a while to load here. Oh, I don't want to. We're not Premiere Pro. One second. Was this before? Or after? We're good. We're good. All right, I'm gonna go to the latest save we can before this happens. It's just about to, actually. Folks, we found a time machine. We're going back. That's two years lost, but fuck it. I'm just going to abandon this. We're never touching the ruins of Estrella, folks. We're, we're, we're jumping back in time a wee bit. We have the war form, though, right? I, I don't want to give up that. It's so... Or just put the planet permanently off limits here. 
Hit official or commander. Oh no, is this before the Warframe? I don't want to give up the Warframe. Fuck that. Alright, we'll try the next one. You're researching him though? Yeah, but that means we can do a later save too and I don't have to go back as far, which is kind of nice. So I'll jump forward to auto saves and see if that does it. Yep, we can still get him, but... I'll find the latest save where we haven't unleashed the Eldritch Horror. Let this be a lesson to people. Brain slugs over anime girls any day. Fuck. That's not as immersion breaking, at least. That's the... difference. Alright, back to elections, though. I will I will throw that poll up. And I think we may end here. Because it is seven hours and I'm fucking tired. Teresa Torres and Athena Montelupo. I'll give you two options. I think I don't think anyone will pull close to them. We'll do a short five minute poll for the next president. 2252, uh, which won't happen for a little bit, but it'll be the same people. So I think Montalupo, the current president, a research visionary, and Teresa Torres, also a very capable scientist, member of the Torres family, and running on probably economic reform as an official kind of focused, uh, dealing with a consumer good crisis and anti corruption. So those are your options. Let's try the planet. Yeah, not a bad idea. Oh, that, this save is good too. I think this was the one though. the food and energy situation, I think an economic reformer would be popular. I think so too, which is why I think Teresa Torres would, would do pretty well here. This is either right before or right after. Maybe the game like automatically does a save before this event. That'd be nice. Okay. One before. Been peeing Easter egg for an upcoming video. I mean the VOD. I think I think I just hard edit the last 15 minutes of, of this of this video when I'm making the real ones. I think that's what happens here. Maybe I'll throw in like a little something in the video about this. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. I, I will just delete the plot and I think we'll an edit. Do it that way. Just for safety. Because that is a game ruining bug, right? For a roleplay campaign, at least. So. That was some alternative universe that never came to be. No. No. The Elder Gods intervened to prevent this timeline. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're so back. command bear with me we'll end on a fun note here where is one this is our command chill is angered by her presence um is there not You 
could destroy a whole system, but you can't destroy a planet, apparently. A Warform predicted the future. Effect, remove a uh, planet. Thank you very much, Pink. Oh, what's the cool tip? Hmm. Debug tool tip. Love the right planet. I don't know, Shattered might come back. Anyway. Planet. Anime almost destroyed the Earth, but we Steingate it. Effect remove. Yes. Where in that uh, do I put the ID for the planet, though? I would imagine I have to do that, right? 1230. For those commands you guys are giving me. Self removed the timeline. Oh, you clicked the planet and then type it. Thank you very much. Anyway, I'm just gonna delete it. I'm not gonna shatter it. Well, let's, we'll be careful here. Correct. Move. Right. Teresa Torres has won the election. That was a close one. Eight to five. Teresa Torres will be the next president come 2252 next week. Replacing Athena Montalupo. Athena would still be, I think, very popular, and she'd probably be immediately offered a place in the new government, but a lot of people would be tired of just such a research focus, which has done a lot for us, and once more of a, a return to economic prosperity, which we did have under Solomon, and she promised to deal with. All right, that didn't work, I don't think. Executing effect script. You know what? We'll end here. I'll, I'll figure this out over the next week. The planet will be glassed, I promised you. So, come next week. This cursed-ass timeline will never come to be. So we'll end here. Good place to end. We've got the election for 52 for next week. We've come a long way today, folks. We know a lot more about the galaxy. A lot more about the galaxy. We've met good aliens. We've met ambivalent aliens. We've met hostile aliens. We've met whatever the fuck that is. I think that quite got covered with the other ones. And we've expanded quite a bit too. We've more than doubled in size. We have colonized new worlds. And humanity is much further along than it was before. With that, let's go see if there's anyone to raid and we'll end for today. Actually, let's see if there's any Solar streamers. We should do tend to like small Solar streamers. They can be really chill. Slar streamers. If anything looks good. Hmm. Not really. All right, we're gonna go raid Grover. He's doing some Among Us, which is very different, but pretty chill stream. Wanna watch some Among Us? Hang out, watch a bit more stuff. You're welcome to. If not, you're ending for the day. Can we greet them with don't open the ruins? Oh, man. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and hope you have a good rest of your weekend and have a good Sunday. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow. I am going to do some Millennium Dawn in the afternoon. I will be a long stream, probably like three hours or something. That's at uh, 3 p.m. EST. So I'll stream a little bit tomorrow. Continue the India campaign if you want to watch that. If not, this will continue next Saturday at 2 p.m. EST. Check out the wiki, check out the Discord if you're interested. Uh, VOD will be up probably tomorrow, if not Monday. And the edited Star videos will not be out for quite a while, so be warned. That being said, I'll catch you all later. Hope you enjoyed.